The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. You're welcome to look elsewhere, but the best female chess players are at the Cairns Cup in St. Louis. With the leader on a bye, contenders saw a shiny opportunity to gain ground, but were met with ferocious opposition. Smooth sailing for Alexandra Kostenyuk erupted into disaster as she blew a clear lead from the opening, cratering her place in the standings. Bella Kotanesvili awakened from her extended rest date to continue her fiery rampage, destroying Elizabeth Pates on her way to the top. Zatonsky's out front, but if Bella stays on course, there's no telling how far she'll go. Day eight of exciting chess, coming up next. It's a gorgeous day here in San Luis. I'm standing in front of the world's largest chess piece in front of the World Chess Hall of Fame, and I cannot wait for round eight to start. Let's go to the studio and get the action started. Welcome to San Luis, the home of chess in America, and the third edition of the Karen's Cup, one of the richest women's tournaments in chess. We come to you live from the San Luis Chess Club. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm International Master Nazi Paikidze and I'm here with Grandmaster Yasu Sarawan. Nasi, as always, a pleasure to be with you. The number of decisive games continues to impress. Yesterday, again, 75%. <laughs> I mean, what is going on? Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show. Thank you for sharing your day with us. Decisive games galore, and it continues to be that way. But so far, it's been the Anna Zatonsky show. Will it continue? Well, let's take a look at the standings and find out. Let's take a look. We have in the clear first tournament leader Anna Zatonsky with four and a half points out of six. In the clear second, following closely, Bella Hotanashvili with four points out of six. And as you see, Elizabeth Pates has played seven games, and so has Ansaya also played seven games. They're going to be getting a bye. Why are they getting a bye? Because our defending champion, Canero, withdrew from the tournament due to illness. So each round, a player is getting a bye, and it impacts the standings, as you see. And uh, tell us about the format, uh, Nancy. Right, we have a nine-player round-robin tournament with no draw offers. And the time control is 90 minutes for first 40 moves, 30 minutes rest of the game, and 30-second increment for move one. And the schedule's getting more narrow. <laughs> we have two days left. The players will play round eight today and the final round tomorrow. However, if players are tied at the end of the tournament, we'll have a playoff day on Tuesday, June 13th. If necessary, it might be necessary. Very fortunate to have in studio Almera, bonjour Almera, and tell us about the possibilities of who can win the event. Bonjour, Saint Louis. Uh, yes, sir. Our, Nazi, our tournament leader, Anna Zatonsky, had such an impressive tournament so far. She didn't lose a single game. So let's play our favorite game, What If? If Anna Zatonsky wins today and Bela Khotinashvili loses and Irina Crash draws, Anna Zatonsky can win the tournament on the spot. She can clinch the victory today. So let's have a look at our key pairing today. Anna Zatonsky is playing against Jansai Abdomalik. Anna Zatonsky is a tough opponent to beat, especially with the white pieces, but please have a look at their head-to-head -head score. They played only two games, one classical and one rapid game, and Anna lost both of them. So, I think that the stakes are so high now that Anna will play even more cautiously with white pieces and I think she might be happy with the draw, especially that it will bring her even closer to the GM norm. What do you think, 
guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anna does need a 50% out of the last two games, two draws, one win today, clinches the GM norm. But uh, do the honors, lay the table for our audience, tell, us, tell them what they can expect in terms of the penultimate round pairings. Let's take a look at today's pairings. We have Alexander Kostinyuk playing Bela Khotanashvili. Harika Jurnavali playing Nana Zagnidze. Gunei Mamadzada against Irina Krush. And our tournament leader, Anna Zatonsky, will be facing Jean Saya Abdimalik. Absolutely, and there's the tournament by Elizabeth Pates for round eight. Uh, they've been fighting hard and uh, fighting for lots and lots of money, the prize fund for this 2023 Cairns Cup. Yes, there's a total of $180,000 in prizes. And the first place winner is going to win $45,000, second place $35,000, third $25,000. And a very nice payday for everybody all the way to the 10th and final uh, prize of $6,000. And we saw there in the uh, Hall of Fame where they're playing right across the street from us here at the St. Louis Chess Club. The rounds eight is coming up. Uh, empty tables at the moment. <laughs> I guess the players are getting wanded. And all eyes on Anna Zatonsky. What a... Did you see this coming? She came in as the lowest rated player in the field. I don't think anyone saw it coming. She was definitely the underdog coming into the tournament. Exactly. But at the same time, we know how strong Anna is. Her peak rating was 2537. So of course she's capable of beating any of these players. Right. And she's showing that She's in great form in this tournament. No question about it. Uh, as, as you say, undefeated performance. And Anna has, the problem I have seen in her game in the last few years is her inconsistency. <laughs> Capable of playing really, really good chess on any given day, she's also given away lots of points. But this tournament, she's put it all together and she's having, well, I want to say a career performance, Amira. Yes, and I really think that Anna's style fits super tournaments more because her repertoire uh, is classical and very solid. So when she needs to take a lot of risks, risks and beat maybe a lower rated opponent, then it can backfire. But here, as an underdog of the tournament at the beginning of the event, she psychologically feels uh, quite free, I think. So she, she just can play a good game every day. Absolutely, and also the bell of the ball. Uh, mm -hmm. As Abella comes in on a win streak four in a row, she's going up against former world champion Alexander Kostinyuk. I don't know exactly how these two players match up, but this lady, uh, Bella, is the one putting the pressure on Anna Zatonsky. Anna saying to... Uh, uh, Alexander, please, <laughs> please stop, stop, her. <laughs> stop her and in the head-to-head. -head. They've had 11 games played and Alexander has five wins, two losses and four draws. So. Alexandra playing white today and uh, again Anna is saying, well somebody please stop mm -hmm. Bella. Four on a, on a win streak, a four win win streak and there's Alexandra. Well, Alexandra is a very tough opponent for anyone but I think that the tournament dynamics favors Bella slightly because we know that Alexandra uh, is playing uh, uncompromising chess she, so she will try to win with white and Bella just won four games in a row. Right. Well, for me, I, if I'm on a streak, I like to push it. I like, let's go. I mean, so, how, when else am I going to win five in a row? You know, let's do if, it now. If you were in Anna's situation, would you be playing for a win today since, since she has the white pieces? Yeah, that's the tough one. It's not like I would be playing for a win as much as I'm playing for an advantage. I just want to come out of the opening with an edge and to feel myself. Am I feeling good? Uh, do I want to press my advantage? But yes, when I'm white, I'm of the opinion that I should be playing for an advantage. If I come to the game thinking, win or, win or I'll die, <laughs> you know, that's not the attitude I want. That usually happens in the last round if you right. absolutely need a win. Absolutely. That's but indeed. Anna 
uh, only needs 50% out of this last two games. Right. It's been a tumultuous tournament for our eight-time U.S. champion, Arena Crush. She started really well with two wins out of the first three games. Then she had two losses, came back yesterday with a win, and still in contention if her opponents, Anna and Bella, were to both lose, that would open up a possibility for her today. Because Irina is playing Anna in the last round. What a matchup that is. Mm -hmm. Somebody, <clears throat> a Hollywood scriptwriter, uh, you know, had written that into the contract that it would have to be a last round exciting game. And we have a, a new lady with the bat. And actually, I'm so happy if we will keep the intrigue in this tournament. Mm -hmm. I really want to see Irina versus Anna tomorrow. <laughs> So this is a chess player, Anna, from uh, Webster Groves, Webster University. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing the honors. And we, and we are underway, everybody. This is the penultimate round, what I like to call the championship rounds, because it's in these rounds that even if you're having a terrible tournament, like a really bad tournament, if you can put together two wins at the very end of the tournament, you kind of walk away with good memories, yes, right? Yes, as they say, all's well that ends well. Exactly. And for Zensaya, she's just had a very bad event. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But if she can play the role of spoiler today... And it's worth mentioning, today is actually her last game of the tournament because tomorrow he ha she has a bye. Exactly. And so also, it's all her bust. Yes, what I wanted to mention is that they had such different trajectories in this tournament. Anna is leading the event, and Jansaya, no one, no one really expected that she's on the last place. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I kind of felt that uh, she would come in uh, as, uh, as kind of a pre-tournament underdog favorite. But they're uh, what uh, Almira showed yep. us earlier in the show. Head to head, Anna actually doesn't have an advantage. She has uh, lost two games against Jansaya. One was at the first Karen's Cup in 2019, another was the Rapid Championship. From and last year? From last year. Uh, but today is a very different situation. Exactly. But it, you know, you, you still remember those losses. That's the point. So it's not like she's snake bitten or anything like that, but she doesn't want to do anything that could spoil a great result. And again, um, two draws, clinches a grandmaster result, as does a victory by Anna today. Knight c3, I'm expecting Anna to play the queen c2, classical Nimzo Indian, something yeah, she said um, in her repertoire. Against me, I think she's always played e3. Also e3, yep. Oh no, that, that, that's wrong. She played e3 once. <laughs> <laughs> queen c2 rest of the time. Yes. Right, queen c2, uh, a variation I've always uh, favored. Uh, Gary Kasparov picked up uh, the classical Queen C2 and just infused it with a lot of uh, new ideas. And it's sort of like these age old openings mm -hmm. are good friends that you can come back to. Queen C2, just to um, prevent the doubling of the pawns on the queen side, play A2, A3, grab the two bishops, and uh, Hope it brings you success in the later middle games. Let's just, uh, Let's just take so a look. There's just so much theory exactly. in, in this position. Uh, let's go around the horn. And uh, Almera, I see you have another game. Uh, looks like an open Rui uh, in front of you. Exactly, because <clears throat> this one is also of a crucial importance for our standings today. Alexandra Kostyniuk uh, is playing with the white pieces. That's an open Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I was just waiting for here, this one of the critical positions, so which line uh, will Alexander choose? So knight bd2, c3 was another possibility. Uh, a lot of games have been played in this line and Fabiano Caruana has won well, a few years ago against Shakhryar Mamidyarov, Vladimir Kramnik, Sergei Kavyakin. So, but this, is, this position is highly theoretical. Uh, there are still a lot of possibilities, so we need to wait for a few moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. knight c5. I, <clears throat> I remember uh, Vishy Anand uh, versus Gary Kasparov, where Gary prepared a rook sacrifice. Uh, like you say, very, very heavy uh, th theoretical uh, play in that position. So that's. Let's take a look at Gunai and Irina's opening. Yes, yeah, so Irina 
when she was up against Alexandra, she wanted to play her Rouser. Rouser. Uh, I always, it's, it's funny, Rouser I've always associated with Bishop G5. And I always associated this uh, as the classical Sicilian. You know, you, the four mm -hmm. knights are out on, on the board. But the Rouser I always associated when White uh, initiated the Rouser with Bishop G5. Classical Sicilian, but with Bishop C4. Bobby Fisher favorite, just uh, pre preparing to put the bishop back on the B3 square so that if you should ever cast a long, you got an extra guy over mm -hmm. there. E7, E6, bishop E3, A7, A6, queen E2, and uh, white is preparing uh, to cast a long. And I'm going to say that for Arena, she really enjoys these um, Sicilian positions. They offer great counterattacking uh, play. and it really suits her style. Yeah, and well, it's also like she's having a really nice tournament too. Mm -hmm. With black, you might think, okay, I'll play it a little defensively minded. No, 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 no. Uh, she's saying, let's play. And uh, all results possible, three results possible. Queen C7. So if you have this position, are you castling long or are you castling definitely short? Definitely long. Definitely <laughs> long. But aren't you. There's a time actually. So I'm a D4 player, but I start to play E4 as well. Yeah. But especially played e4 against players who played c5. Uh -huh. Just so I could cast a long <laughs> and, <laughs> and get on these the double uh, edge positions. Yeah. So castles long, invites bishop e7 and castles short, and then everybody's favorite, mm -hmm. you know, you play for attack on the king side with g4, I'll play for an attack on the queen side with b5 and let the chips fall where they may. Actually a little surprise already, instead of long castle, gune 2 on c6. In that's this specific, move. yeah, that's a that's a, a strange move in this specific position because knight takes c six. You know, if you wanted to play knight takes mm -hmm. c six, you might have done that a move ago, just to deny the option. Uh, of the option. Yeah, uh, just so I, no, I, I'm I mean, ready like, to get play b takes c six right normally, right. but queen takes c six. I do pick up a tempo so. At least I, I, I would consider the move. Uh, this seems like a rare guest uh, in this position, uh, Almera. Knight takes c6. Has that become topical? Well, I still have uh, two games in this position, but one of them uh, was played recently by a uh, young uh, Serbian Grandmaster, Vilimir Ivic. So after knight c6, um, let me check like what was in the game. No, it was in the game b takes c6 was played because queen c6 seems a bit artificial here to me so g4 a very interesting move uh, bishop b7 can be played but black uh, played h5 in this game so wow. what is white's idea is to play g5 uh, you can play knight g4 here or knight d7 uh, black chose knight g4 in this game as you can see the um, the evaluation of the computer is going up all the time. So here I think what is important is not to give this bishop. So you will have to make this move bishop d2. And I just ask myself a question, what will happen if I will play queen b6? I will just check it a little bit so I do not allow you to castle, but simply f4. Okay, mm -hmm. with the, yes. A devastating initiative. So um, black played in this game knight e5 then, then bishop b3, and f4 follows. It's coming, yeah. Yes, it's coming. So even if you play e5 here with the idea of playing uh, bishop b6, f4 and white's position is um, much, much better here. Exactly. Well, the move h5 is certainly a provocative move. Uh, sorry, you said knight takes c6, queen takes c6 is a little artificial. Yes. Uh, share, share with our viewers why you felt that to be the case, because to my mind, queen takes c6 is kind of viable. I want to 
put the pressure on the E4 pawn right away. Yes, I was looking at it from the Paulson uh, perspective. Of course, this is uh, a different opening, so let's try. Because you want to bring this pawn and to play d5, wow. actually. And then I realized when we were analyzing the position that uh, you almost never have the possibility of playing d5 <laughs> in this right. position. And that might be actually the huge problem. So what happens after queen c6? Right. In the game, we had bishop d3. Then um, one of those e7. bishop d7 or bishop b7. So this is already a novelty. Let's say, what happens? What should we do? Ca castle long here. Okay, castle mm -hmm. short. Castle short, and maybe g4. Right. As in the game, we can try g4. Okay, I have a few games now by transposition. So right. f4, bishop g5. But what if g4? Then mm -hmm. simply b5. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love these positions because, you know, it's uh, everybody's on a tightrope. You know, you can you can fall off with just a any single move. Yeah. So if H four here, then after B four, Black is already better. Right. Yes, because your knight has to go to B one and yeah, then passive, I guess, passively it's, placed. It's a very passive posture indeed. So yeah. maybe. This is a very interesting continuation, yes, sir. Well, you may stay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Bishop d3 was a little bit of a surprise for me. I, mm -hmm. I kind of expected you, even though you didn't like it, to play f3. Ah, f3. Uh, just a, okay, f3, bishop e7, okay. bishop b3, castles, castles, long. But I wanted to check something. Please. Can you actually take this pawn, for example, if I play bishop b3? Can you take the pawn on e4? Well, I would ask that question. <laughs> Bishop a4. B5. B5, knight b5. Uh, I got to play Bishop d7. Yes, Bishop d7, I... so knight c3 here. It's ah, a... knight takes c3, Bishop Bishop c6, c6. c6, yes. C6. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was not even a threat in that position. Yes, ah. it's a lovely variation, but... Um, that's something that you have to consider as well. So maybe bishop b3 is possible and then long castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's go to the game of Alexandra mm -hmm. and... Uh, we haven't sorry. checked one game. Oh, pardon me. Harika against Nana. All right. We're still very early in the opening. We have and a Catalan. Yeah, a Catalan Slav, right? Because it's like g3 yes. takes, open Catalan, but then with the move c7, mm -hmm. c6, uh, uh, intimating rather forcefully, I might play the move b5 and uh, retain the pawn on c4, uh, a4, and well, uh, this we're still just a stopped. theoretical line. Bishop b4 is uh, the most common move, I, I believe. Right. Black can also play c5 in this position. Having having provoked yes. c6, uh, move c5. Yeah. And black is playing as if it's Queen's Gambit accepted. Exactly. And sometimes the move A4 is actually, mm -hmm. you know, misplaced right. because you you do like uh, these ideas of knight E5 and queen A4 check. I wanted to go to Alexandra. Let's just uh, jump in. Again, this was the open uh, Rui. Uh, we left it just at these, this, this part, knight B2, D2, bishop E7. Uh, again, the theory... So, so deep, bishop c5, tons and tons of games. c3, castles, bishop c2, c5, uh, pardon me, f5, knight b3. This is, I, I've been seeing this, theory. oh yeah, and I've been seeing this uh, variation getting a workout, uh, lots and lots of games from this I moment. I think the main move here is f3. Yeah, exactly. Knight g5, and then I think a4. It's the most common move. Exactly. And, they, and, <laughs> and if we check players' time, they also, of course, know this opening. Bella has hour 32, Alexandra, hour 30. <laughs> exactly. Um, Almira, I wanted to ask, is the open Rui uh, a variation that uh, Bella plays often? In other words, this is in her repertoire? Because these positions are very awkward to play, no? Yes, and they rely mostly on your, uh, well, positional understanding because mm -hmm. it's almost like a ba conceptual battle. 
Exactly. So Black claims that, uh, well, the C5 pawn is, well, can be easy, easily stopped. Of course, the queen is not the best blockade, yes, so she I think she this needs last to move, put bishop f4, is pretty new. Bishop f4, that is mm -hmm. definitely off the beaten track. And she played it really fast, so she has this prepared. She had, well, that was why I was really asking the question about Bella. In other words, is Alexandra, you know, like saying, oh, I know my opponent is going mm -hmm. to play this defense, like your Karo Khan, for mm -hmm. example. So this move, bishop f4, very uncommon move. Tell me about this one. Yes, it's a very rare move. Yes, what I wanted to tell you is, of course, sure. that if you manage to put the knight on e6, of course, this will be an ideal position uh, for black. But for the moment, uh, the knight is going to f7 in this position. So let's have a look. Um, last games played in 2022, mm -hmm. but I don't have the top players here. Let me check just one second. This is not the top line of the computer, so uh -huh. a, quite a clever preparation by Alexandra, I think. So uh, what can you suggest here? Queen c6. Queen, Queen c6. c6. I want to, I want to put the knight on e6. As mm -hmm. you said, that's the ideal square. So. Vacate it. Oh, now like, uh, well, I'm dazzled because now the computer suggests, because this is one of the main ideas in this position. So you take on g5, you take on g5, and you play f4. But now that you've played queen c6, the computer takes on g5. So what is the best square? This should be seven. seven. Mm -hmm. It's a natural square. And then maybe queen f3. The, the thing is that um, you always have this very dangerous plan in this position. G4. White always wants to play g4. So how should black proceed here? Maybe rook a d8, a right. very human move for me. Let's say <laughs> rook d1, we improve our rook. And so let's say after rook d1, uh, we are in uncharted waters here. Well, I think they it's just strange. It's like the queen is on c6. Now I want to go back to e6. e6 exactly. It's misplaced. <laughs> it's misplaced on e6. I go, yeah. I'll go back with the queen. So that's maybe funny. that's why the computer actually suggests here, as I said, that you have no time to put your knight on um, e6. e6. So maybe you should go knight f7. Okay. You should not allow this trade. And, well, you're, you're not really going to take on e5 because then the position is going to be completely open. Uh, but what to do here? Rook e1? No? Okay. It seems very natural to me. Sure. And, okay, another interesting move. I, w I would play rook d8, d8 here, yeah. but knight d8. It's wow. a very interesting maneuver. So he actually brings the knight to c6 here. <laughs> or, it, I mean, I know it's a lot of tempi, but maybe he now wants to play queen c6 and knight e6. That's the ideal mm -hmm. blockading square for the knight, but just not to allow the bishop g5, what you showed out there. Yes, let's, uh, let's see how should white continue, because the computer always hesitates here. Of course, he gives a slight advantage uh, for, for white, white almost all the time, but then, they, well, he changes his plan. So should he play b4, a4 at some point? So I think uh, you you adapt to the situation. So right. Now the situation has changed. For example, you played bishop before queen c6, then you take on g5. Then if the knight of on 7 you play a4. If the knight is somewhere else, then you play b4. But I'm a bit puzzled by this idea. Let's say b4, c takes b4, ah, and then bishop, bishop b3. b3. Okay, that's, a, that's an excellent, yes. Right. That's an excellent um, trick. Trick. So after b4, are you forcing black to play c4 here, most probably? And now you can play a4. I'm liking white in this case. I, I, I didn't like the move c4 so much. Mm -hmm. Maybe queen c6 in that exact moment so after b4. b4 yes, let's say queen c6. Queen c6. Again, I, I'm, I have, I'm, I'm a one trick pony. I'm trying to put the pony on the e6. <laughs> And what if I take and then play bishop b3? Okay, let's That's say you a will, check. Yes, you will take with it, of course. A uh, check. <laughs> let's yeah. say bishop c5, yeah. <laughs> king h1. Yeah, as you're reaching for your bishop, you can point out it's check. And knight e6. Knight and e6. then I'm, I hopefully I'm in time to play rook d8 and defend the d pawn. 
Yeah. Uh, should we? No, I don't want to exchange the bishops here. Mm -hmm. Yes, bishop d2. Yes. But on the other hand, are you going to open the position? You're not going to play d4, you're not going to play f4. So your pieces are well are very start. harmoniously yeah. placed as it is. So right. you will have to come up with a more uh, active plan maybe, uh, which is involving the c file. I, I find this to be a fascinating battle mm -hmm. as both players have imbalances that they can proudly point at and say, you know, like, I've got, I've got an edge here, you've got an edge there. White's mm -hmm. pawns are split on the queen side. He's got, she's got the two bishops. Let's just jump to Anna's game once again because uh, let's see what developments have taken place here. When we left it, we saw the move queen c2, castles by Jansaya. A2, A3, bishop takes, queen takes. You see how I did that? I just said Jansaya like it was the most natural thing yes. in the world. And it only took me eight <laughs> rounds to get the courage to try to pronounce the names. A2, A3, bishop. So I've got the two bishops, all very standard stuff, until I see the move C7, C5. Uh, bishop uh, H7, H6, bishop B7. D5. Is even bishop a6. Bishop so even a6. But the move c5 actually takes me back to old days. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like that's, uh, that's in the dusty part of the <laughs> repertoire. Uh, D takes c, probably. Is that? No. Yeah. D takes c. D takes c. And I, for, for me, if I'm in honor shoes, I'm feeling very, very happy because I'm feeling like bishop takes f6. You're not going to want to play g takes f6. You're going to want right. to take the queens off the board, and I'm not going to lose that ending. I, I kind of feel like I, I, I have a bit of an edge, maybe not she that also much. She doesn't need to take on f6 of course right not. away. No, but she it's like one of those things that you kind of say to yourself. Have that option, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm playing for an advantage or a slight advantage with the white pieces, so I think. Most important thing for Anna is to not take big risks. In the right. last two rounds, so right. the position we're just talking about, after bishop f6, white has no risks whatsoever. This one takes, takes. I seem to I'll feel... I'll probably include e3. Okay. And on the next move, maybe... Bishop b7. Um, knight f3. Knight f3. So at, at a certain point, I have to declare myself, right? Am I going to be playing mm -hmm. d5, or am I going to play d6, or knight c6? Um, yeah, well, I mean... D5 Hold on. Is a little risky. The, the, the one thing, no, the one thing, no, 94 in this case, this is just a pawn. Uh, yes. I could just mm -hmm. take this pawn. <coughs> yeah, that's, just, that's a, just a good point. So I don't have to worry about 94. Um, Bail is out of this one, uh, Almera. Mm -hmm. uh, this opening that Zansaya has chosen against. Um, Anna. Anna. Mm -hmm. It feels like Anna's got a very nice position after takes, takes, and we're looking at both e3 and knight f3. What is, uh, what, what's attractive in this position for black? What is black trying to do? Actually, I played the, this position a few times, it, and it might look innocuous, but this is, uh, this is the point. Let's say if you play e3, then black goes d6, and what is it? it doesn't matter really if you play your well bishop d3, let's say knight d7, then we develop the knight on e2, on f3, uh, once again it's the matter of taste. But what black wants to achieve, let's say you can castle, and then actually here, you don't have a very comfortable way of attacking the pawn on d6, and even though, let's say you will play bishop, bishop I will play a5, Bishop c2, you will double your rooks, and even if you play f4, then this move is actually very strong because you are not afraid to give away the d5 square because the knight is never going there. And you can even create an attack uh, well, uh, on the white king. So you have to be very careful because you cannot equalize comfortably here because of the structure in the center. Those pounds are very mobile. All right. So that's like there is no easy way. If Anna would want to make a draw here, there is no easy way to make it here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we, you will have to maneuver your way in this game and pay attention like uh, to every move. Interesting, because I kind of saw it as uh, Black's 
center is a little bit stuck, I want to mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. uh, d6 and e5, but okay, two bishops, we'll keep an eye on that one. I wanted to turn our attention to Irina Krush. Uh, position because she did queen. take with the queen. Yes, yeah, she said, hey, that is actually a very nice tempo. Queen takes c6. You're going to pay attention to e4. Maybe yeah, I, I don't threaten to do it immediately, but at a certain moment you might be forced right. to play f3. Bishop to d3, kind of what we were looking at. Mm -hmm. Bishop e7, castles, and I'm expecting castles and this double-edged uh, variation, g4, b5, g5, knight d7, and away the players would mm -hmm. go. Uh, great stuff. And for Arena's, uh, uh, I think that Arena is going to be happy because basically she's played this her whole career, these types of open Sicilians. She feels very comfortable in them. So. Yes, castles. sir. Yes. I just have a small suggestion Please. in this position because if Irina castles, I think the most precise move in this position would be f4. f4. Because f4 does not allow b5. So let's say if you play b5 in this position, then I strike immediately in the center. I will With play e5. e5. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you, here you're facing, uh, well, a difficult choice because let's say if you take on e5, you define um, the structure. The structure, yeah. yes, knight d5, and maybe knight d5 here. He takes d5 because you cannot take on d5, of course, with the queen because of this terrible bishop mm -hmm. h7. Right. A very um, standard tactical motive here. But then after knight d5, knight d5, e takes d5, these are not really the pawns that you want to have here. So um, the bishop is looking at the black's king. So I think that white pieces are way active here, and now b5 is uh, looking into the void, if I might mm -hmm. say. There is no longer the knight on c3, and what else can you do? Probably I can even play uh, one more prophylactic move, king b1, and then launch, launch an attack, h4, h5, h6, bring my rook. So uh, maybe slightly better for white, but much easier to play for white once again. Intriguing because, again, these are the battles that I love to play. I like your f4 uh, because of what you were saying about b5, but even to go down the whole uh, primrose uh, pathway you have suggested mm -hmm. with knight takes d5, I'm still not convinced that both players aren't going to make efforts at mauling one another's kings because, uh, they're, you know, I agree, h4, h5, h6, let's go. Uh, but these bishops are kind of solid. These bishops are very solid. But I'm looking at b3, and doubtlessly you'll be mm -hmm. playing for g4, g5. White Fun seems stuff. a little bit behind the mm -hmm. g-pawn. Pardon me? White seems a little bit slower. A little bit slower, yeah. With the g4, g5, because in, in that position we just had, yeah, yeah. The, the black pawns were much faster. Maybe on the queen side. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's just remind our viewers what a roller coaster ride Arena has had as we opened our show, telling she was in first place after three rounds. Yeah, she started with two and a half out of three. She was leading the tournament, but then came three difficult rounds. She lost two and drew one. Right. And she came back yesterday with a win, and she's looking to finish well. Yeah. Uh, her, uh, her, her, her Rika yesterday was a good game. Round two became a bye. She actually did, of course, play against Canero uh, when she was in the tournament, and those games will count for rating purposes. It's just that uh, Humpy's event was canceled, if you will. And uh, for two of the players, Nana and Alexandra, they were, let's say, disappointed. <laughs> that their points got taken away. Uh, by the way, uh, the move F, f4, which I think is a really outstanding move, uh, to my mind, when I see the move, I really want mm -hmm. to play b5, and I really want to be able to kick the knight. If b5 does get answered mm -hmm. by e5 and that whole variation we just saw, I understand that you, as a player with the white pieces, want to start a pawn storm. Mm -hmm. One of the best, if not the best, ways of meeting a pawn storm is to get out of the way. If you see that g4 and g5 are going to come with a tempo, 
get your pieces out of the way so they don't right. come with them. 97 is a move I kind of need. It's a good prophylaxis move, something we would have to make anyways. Exactly. It's a move I'd like to make anyways, and maybe on a very, very good day, mm -hmm. I'll sneak my bishop to mm -hmm. f6 and, and use the square. So f4, knight d7. And you also still want to play b5 now. Precisely. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I'm trying to do, is play b5, b4, and keep the pieces on the board and make the suggestion that, hey, I've got a, a nasty attack. Uh, one of the things, uh, I think a lot of people who play the black side of the Sicilian will recognize and be aware of, is you've always got to look out for these yes. uh, little moves mm -hmm. of knight d5. So something like bishop d4, uh, you, you, you want to play b5, and you could see a move like knight d5 suddenly show up on your doorstep, with or without b4, by the way, and it's a little bit of a shock. That, yes. uh, the, these moves are playable. So very often, if you look at the uh, top Grandmaster games and you'll see um, Gary Kasparov especially, he sneaks in that move rookie, rookie. A, you know, like uh, on so many occasions. He has two ideas. Rookie A defends the bishop on e7, but also opens up the f8 square for the bishop in order to defend g7 if necessary. Exactly. So these, uh, these um, open Sicilian positions, they have their own uh, delicate uh, yes. moments, There's I should say. Yes, there's patterns of moves that you see in different types of Sicilians with similar ideas. Exactly. Almira, uh, over to you. And Yes, uh oh, we just, have a. Just, I wanted to finish yes, this, the analysis of this position. You're absolutely right. Knight d7 is a very nice move in this position. Bishop d4 is following uh, one game that they still have in the database. And after rook e8, I think that white has a big advantage after oh, e5. e5. Yes, because if you take then f takes, I open the f file and your rook is no longer on the fade. Nice. So as you can see, is, uh, but computer now, loves it for computer white. Computer loves it. And yeah. Everything is open here. So <laughs> I'm not even sure who is defending the monarch here. <laughs> so we'll have to bring your knight to a fade. But this position is really dangerous. So you have to be careful I see. in your approach. Very good. Uh, thank you for that, by the way. I didn't realize that e5 could really put the kibosh on those attacks. I wanted to say that Anna's a son. That's why we have Almira and Oracle. Exactly, uh, to help us and keep us on our toes. Uh, this looks like a move that I would play, actually. I love these uh, um, provocative moves. I want to put it like this. This move, knight h3, the what idea be... What is it provoking? It's provo well, what I want is I want to win your pawn. And it, prov prov it kind of provokes you to play h6, because I don't think you want to see the knight land on h5. Like, if you, if you played something like very slowly, bishop b7, d6, knight h5, knight d7, you may not like this. Uh, this may not uh, be I what you... I didn't even notice knight h5 idea. <laughs> I thought knight was coming to f4 right. just to deal with the center, maybe against d5, but right. h5 is such a sneaky little idea. Yeah, don't tell anybody about it, right? <laughs> I mean, and of course, if you, uh, again, knight h5, but uh, if an, an, another sneaky idea of putting the knight there is, normally speaking, you defend mm -hmm. the pawn whenever it gets attacked with a move like king g7. No king g7 in, in, in this case, because uh, you'd be forced knight to play h3. A, There's only h3. six games played previously. And yes, sir. Can yes. you get Robert Hubner, Dr. Robert Hubner on the line? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. because this was his invention? Yes, this was his idea. This okay. is such a rare and I think a well forgotten line because mm -hmm. I think that um, after a few years it was considered that black is doing fine here. So, but, uh, so knight h3. And then, well, I have a few recent games here. Uh, should you play h6 immediately here or knight c6? This is quite a dilemma. So let's see what happens after h6. And as you can see, there is not many, day, uh, not many games in the database. So queen f6, of course, because uh, Yasser pointed out that this is not your Deadly. opening <laughs> yes, concept. <laughs> concept. So the knight is going to h5. but. 
queen f6 is a very good move in this position because you are actually happy to exchange the queen, the queens in this position. Why? Because of the pawn on b2. Mm -hmm. So if you don't castle long, this might as well be uh, a very important target. Right, backward so, pawn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so knight f4, and here, like, black simply ignores the threat of knight h5 plays knight c6 or bishop b7, maybe, I don't know, what is the best? Let's try bishop b7. Okay. And I know, Yasser, that you want to know <laughs> what is going on here. But I think the computer um, evaluates this position as, well, slightly better for black or equal because he doesn't know how you're going to develop right. here. Yes. So let's, uh, I don't know, rook d8 because he wants to play d5 then knight f6 king f8 it would be interesting to continue this variation can you castle long here once again this this is not the move which is even proposed by the computer but i think what he uh, states here is king e7 then knight h5 knight g4 where do you want to put your knight, knight yeah h5. i spent a lot of time winning mm -hmm. a double pawn mm -hmm. and, uh, not and here simply knight c6 and well, as you can see the valuation yourself, yeah. the uh, dynamical play uh, gives black sufficient compensation here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do believe, by the way, we, as you were speaking, uh, Jean Saya did play the move h7, h6. It's on the board. And, well, Anna played pretty briskly, I want to say, for her <laughs> standard. <laughs> uh, not bad, not bad at all. H7, H6. And I'm sure H6. she's going to take on F6 as well. Exactly. One thing I wanted to ask you, Almira, mm -hmm. is when I'm looking at the position, this ending, if you will, uh, if I do have a fear, I, I don't know if that's the correct word, but if I'm worried that this pawn on B2 mm -hmm. might become backward after knight C6, A5, and rook B8, mm -hmm. I've, I've got a, a problem child this pawn on b2. A sorrow uh, child. A which child? <laughs> sorrow. No? Sorrowful child. Yeah, oh, the Benoni child. Okay. <laughs> uh, b2, b4, uh, just get rid, of, get rid of my potential weakness. Has that been essayed? But after b4, I will not take, I think, very often uh, black simply leaves the pawn on c5 and okay. a lot of Nimtza structures. So I want to create weaknesses everywhere, a lot of right. islands. So maybe knight c6. Knight and c6. if you play b5. Right, uh, there goes the problem child. It's yes. no longer backward. So knight a5, or maybe not knight a5 here. I think knight a5, yes, is the... Uh, most interesting move. You're also threatening, uh, well, the pawn on c4, of course, but after e3, e3 <laughs> yes, maybe you can play a6 here and challenge wow. this immediately. If, 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 but somehow it feels like we just went from a strategic struggle to a sharp mm -hmm. struggle. Like now things are, you know, de tempo dependent. a7, and a6, a3, a4. You know, if you undermine my pawn, my passer, I'll be worse. But if I yes, keep and it, and I could be better. I mean, I think uh, our queen side pawns are doing great, but we're still so behind in development that that will show itself. Right, but okay, uh, next turn, knight of, th knight of, well, okay, it could become a sharp game after bishop f6 and b4, yes, or a strategic game, please. Yes. One uh, last word about please. these positions, and it's not so much about the uh, variations, it's just in the lines, is that uh, from a personal experience, I know how difficult it is to evaluate those positions. Mm. I really have no clue what the assessment will be on the next move from a mm. Human perspective and right. the computer even confirms it now like we have this uh, incredible quantum analysis but uh, when you're playing the game uh, this is not obvious at all no. mm -hmm. so Anna might as well feel that this is close to equal or she's winning the pawn and she will tell herself I cannot be worse with right. the pawn up and I already traded the Queens but uh, this might be as well uh, it could be an illusion yes mm -hmm. right uh, turning our attention to Alexandra and Bella's game. I think uh, the move Bella chose after bishop f4, perfectly reasonable move in my estimation, is rook on a8 to d8. And in, in a lot of cases, a2, a4 is like sometimes a problem that 
the rooks can get traded, and maybe the F pawn is weak when the rook is uh, suddenly called to duty. Rook F8 takes A. This move I like because it basically intimates, mm -hmm. hey, wait a minute. I'm the one with the extra center pawn, and I want to go D5, D4, and blast open the position. And if I do that, oftentimes uh, the king can be vulnerable on this diagonal. Like, for example, just to uh, illust make a, a very bad illustration, is like, oops, and I'm going to play for yes. D4. So uh, I think a prophylactic move was king, king H1. H1, which was played. And again, it seems to me that uh, Alexandra is in her... Preparation still. Yeah, because she's playing all of these moves, difficult moves, bishop F4, king H1, pretty... Yeah, she still has our tempo. 29 minutes, so... Yeah, I think She's I said. She's had this position before. I think that's safe to say. And as always during these moments, we want to invite you, our audience, to join us, join the discussion, stump our panel with any queries, questions you might have about the players or even the history of chess. How can they do that? How can they join the conversation? Uh, they can reach us using hashtag Karen's Cup on Twitter or uh, across the all social media. Uh, you can uh, join us at the St. Louis Chess Club channels and ask, send us your questions and comments. And our social media manager, Sabina Foisher, will be happy to give us your questions. Sabina's been having a lot of fun. She's been rating us during our breaks and getting us to uh, do video clips uh, for her behind the scenes. And she even uh, uh, got Tom. Our producer. Yes, she's uh, very good at her job. <laughs> no, uh, Tom's making a cameo appearance. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, <laughs> with Cheetos too, by the way. So, uh, Excited yeah, to check see out the final product. I know she's been working mm -hmm. on it so hard. Um, King H1, and let's go again uh, to uh, Irina's game. I was going to say, Nana, Nana we haven't. So. Nana said... These players are playing quite slowly exactly. in the opening. A2, A4, B7, B5. Hey, I, I want to keep the pawn. Nana thought about B5 move for 25 minutes. 25 minutes? Okay, so standard stuff is C6, Bishop, C6. Bishop B4 and, and C5 Bishop. are the two main moves, yes. And... Uh, now I'm curious. What she, what, 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 she was wrestling with this question. Can I keep the pawn? Go yes. ahead, please. Uh, since I play the cattle and I'm used to seeing this, but yeah. now 95 looks pretty good. With or with, with or without trading on B5. Not trading. Now you want Not to keep touching. the tension. Yes. Okay, so 95. 95. In the words of Walter Sean Brown, immediately, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Night. Okay, you're hitting the pawn. Yes. Okay. Um, I will check you. Okay. Pause. I, I was not expecting that. Um, <laughs> I didn't. So Bishop D2, I was right, looking at Knight Queen. C3 then. Knight C3, okay, and Knight D5. Okay. So I have to block the attack that you were setting up with your bishop on G2, as well as your knight hitting C6. So I block the attack potentially, well, I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm threatening to capture twice on C3, but... This was the idea behind bishop before. A takes B. Okay, now you want to take. Uh, <laughs> now you're making me think. Because, I mean, you know I can resist anything <laughs> except temptation. You know, that's my problem, right? Knight takes E3. Okay, okay, you convinced me. I shouldn't take. Then castle. Just castle, okay. I was bluffing. I actually don't know what to talk about. <laughs> well, you bluffed me. Uh, you you bluffed me pretty good. Takes takes. I'm not going to take on c3 and taking on d4, but bishop b7. Are we? It, it doesn't look like we're in theoretical territory. Uh, we're have, on our own. I have bishop a3 ideas just to delay yes. the castle. Yes. Yes. But maybe at some point I should defend that pawn on c3. I might take it one, mm -hmm. one of these days, absolutely. Uh, I feel that this is actually a pretty darn sharp position, and it's something mm -hmm. you don't want to get yourself into without preparation, right? So the fact that Nana took 
25 minutes to play right. B5. Uh, bring us up to date on this uh, dispute that uh, is going on here at Almera. Uh, B5, good or bad? Well, indeed, it's a highly theoretical dispute, but uh, as uh, Nana State showed us, she's willing to go all in in, in her games. So it's a quite well, it's a dubious continuation, I would qualify as it such. So after b5, you can play knight e5. Yeah. Um, one of the top games was played between uh, Anik Shkiri and Alexander Morozevich. Uh, you can even take on b5 first and then play knight e5. Of course, uh, black is not losing because they always have this uh, very important defensive resource, knight right. d5, because otherwise, of course, the rook is... Uh, going to be lost, but then uh, probably knight c3 right. in this position. So bishop b4, um, castle. Funnily enough, this is almost the position we, we yeah. achieved. Yes, so this is uh, something very possible. We play so like the engines. <laughs> what, what happens uh, good. if you the take another good. pawn? But, uh, so after queen c2, I think, uh, well, You've had it all, <laughs> and after yeah. knight d5, uh, maybe bishop a3, you know, so I do not allow you to castle, right. and with a long-term initiative here, I think, so you will have to deal with a lot of problems, but I feel that maybe knight e5 here is more precise. Keeping the tension. Yes, keeping the tension, so knight e5, that's how the games went, so knight d5, and then I even have a game played by... Uh, Vasily Ivanchuk, so Vaitashuk Radislav, but all those games are not very recent. So uh, I think that uh, the computers are much more powerful, of course, right mm -hmm. now. And as you can see, the evaluation is uh, once again uh, giving the advantage to white. And you can play castle here or you can enter the, the line that you've analyzed once again. So um, I think Nana will have to find the continuation after knight e5 here, but uh, knight d5 is probably the only move here. Can you give check first? What do you think? Does it change something? Will you will be I think I was actually giving That's the what check. Yes, you yeah, were giving the for, check first. Yeah. But after knight c3, knight d5... It, it's and, a, yes. it was the kind of a trans it's the, position. It's yeah. the repetition of the repetition. So I think <laughs> you, you, you don't have to play a bishop d2 here. No. Yes, no. I think so. We'll have to wait a little bit. But actually, I had one uh, very important moment sure. in the game between Alexandra Kostyniuk and Bela Hutanashvili. While Bela is still thinking, I finally understood, you know, I had an illumination because I was trying to understand uh, White's idea, of course. So why White is waiting, actually? Why Alexandra is making all these moves, like bishop before king h1? Actually, she wants your queen to leave the e6 square. Why is it important? First of all, I mentioned the g4 idea, but also... Um, Let's see, I will make a move which will not be king h1 and I will make something like a4. Okay. So what would black do in this position? And now you can actually play queen b6 because after bishop g5, your standard plan, then I actually want to play c4, king h1. And as you can see now, even if you will play here f4, bishop f7, after queen f3, I will have this breakthrough d4. Right. So... I think it's important to understand what you're, you're trying to anticipate. So here, after bishop f4, Alexander waits for queen c6 because you, can, you cannot play uh, uh, here queen b6 because your pawn is hanging on d5. So I will take a swiss check. So rook d8 is a very natural move here. So king h1. Once again, I'm waiting for your queen to make a move. And of course, you want to put your knight on... Uh, e6, but after queen c6 here, I think that now you can execute your plan. f4, bishop e7, and g4. Wow, so it was no, 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 not here. No, 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 wait a second. Ah, it was after queen b6, sorry, not queen c6. <laughs> yes, because now d4, of course, is a check. It's check. Yes, yeah. it was queen b6 right. here. Yes, this is I analyzed. So uh, here you can play g4. And now because the king is on h1, as opposed to being yes, on true. g1, you're, you're, you're happier to being on light squares, and g4 looks like a nice way of opening up your bishop. Oh. 
And oh, well, thank you for that. And uh, once again, as we came up to the penultimate round, quick check in on our standings and our favorite game of What If. If Anna Zatoski were to win her game and Bella were to lose, and if Irina doesn't win her game, then Anna wins the tournament today. And that's that simple. And clinches the Grandmaster Norm and the $45,000 and the Karen's <laughs> Cup title. What else? <laughs> All our hearts. <laughs> and our hearts. There you have it. And just a reminder, Elizabeth Petz, even though she is currently in the third place, uh, she's taking a bye today. So, so she can't get, gain any mm -hmm. points. And our last round, Sensaya. Shinsaya will be taking a bye. And, uh, well, Shinsaya is playing a, for, uh, arguably the role of a spoiler today. She's up against Anna with the black pieces. And after h7, h6, there's been the trade, and Anna seems to just be thinking about whether she wants to play b4. Or if she wants sharp, to go after the pawn with e3, knight e3, castles, go after the pawn with knight f4. Uh, we'll keep an uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And by the way, Irina has played your move ninety seven. I wanted to ask what did uh, happen in the game. Oops, I'm on the wrong game. Sorry. Knight. Well, first of all, we saw uh, f four from f four. Uh, very move. yes, not the g four mm -hmm. b five. So the whole idea behind f four is b five is going to be met by e five. So knight to d seven. And this is where we had that nice we little trick. We were looking trick. at bishop d4. Yes, and the idea was, funnily enough, b5, e5. No, I think you wanted knight d5 here. Yeah, but uh, w the, 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 the line where Almero was saying... That was after rook e8. Rook e8, yeah. e5. White is winning here. White, the, the, the engines were going mm -hmm. nuts. They're going, look, 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 look. Uh, White's uh, got a really, really big advantage, so... Uh, tricky so if Kuleni little move plays orders. bishop d4, yeah. um, so rook e8 is not a good move. Black is still supposed to play b5 and allow knight d5, and I think the simple response to that is just bishop d8. Okay, yeah, I guess I was waiting for b4. I don't know what I should be doing. So something silly, let's say mm -hmm. g4, b4, then I was going to jump. Right, right. something of, of this nature. Well, we're getting to that point where it's time to check in with our good friends at Q Boutique and ask them, what's our daily special for today? And <laughs> the answer is we have uh, men's and women's polos. You've uh, seen the ladies in uh, their polo uh, shirts. This is the official polo of the 2023 Cairns Cup Chess Tournament, crafted for 100% polyester featuring the Cairns Cup logo on the left breast and the St. Louis Chess Club logo on the back of the collar. Stay comfortable and stylish while you make your next move. Available in men's and women's style, exclusively available at qbtstlouis.com. And we're going to see you on the other side of our commercial break. See you soon. Chess in St. Louis is back with nine major tournaments throughout the year. Seasonal classic events are back. The Summer Chess Classic, August 2nd, followed up with the St. Louis Norm Invitational, and the Winter Chess Classic wraps up the year in December. September brings back everyone's favorite, Chess Night on Lights, where some of the world's best don't even know what's coming and compete for a $150,000 prize fund. 30 players across three fields come together in St. Louis for the U.S. Juniors, Girls, and Senior Championships starting July 15th. In partnership with U.S. Chess, the best in the U.S. fight to be the nation's best and a $400,000 prize fund in October as the U.S. and U.S. Women's Championships takes place in the chess capital of America. A year full of action-packed chess is just getting started. All broadcasts are available on our St. Louis Chess Club YouTube and Twitch.tv channels. Welcome, girls. You drew today. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel? Uh, jean I will start with you. You had a tough start. Yeah, so you feel it's a bit better, more it's, motivated. It's good to... not to lose, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I feel, of course, I feel better. Um, no, I think it's also important when you lose the game just to make some draw 
and you know yeah, just to feel a bit cold bleeding, yeah bit true um so what about you elizabeth did you did you play the game in any way differently knowing that josiah started with three losses did you think that okay i have some chances today against her or were you playing more cautiously knowing that maybe no well actually today i thought like i should test her like how good is her theory knowledge I see. so i was choosing actually a line where like she has to be very accurate so i was actually like checking a little bit in the database and i saw finally speaking a game between arena crush and uh, vashali from the olympiad and you know when i uh, saw the game in the database i remember that i was even standing in front of arena's board at this moment when I saw this position and then I was thinking like, okay, if she knows it, then maybe like I should have some emergency escape. And uh, knight g5 is a normal move, but instead of knight g5, bishop g5, this is like what I briefly checked today. And I saw like the engine gave like, okay, about equal, but it's not like that. Okay, if I bring my bishop to e7, I should be kind of safe. So that's why I liked actually the move bishop g5 more than knight g5 because from the harmony of peace, it was a little bit like more safe, let's say. And then, yes, I mean, like, like I think she was surprised by Bishop G5, but uh, well, probably the position is still too too easy in a way because after Queen A6, I can never castle. Mm -hmm. And then it was clear that at some point, if I want to win material, she will, you know, have some escaping. <laughs> so, would you like to comment on that? Were you? Were you prepared? Were you surprised by Elizabeth? Yeah, I mean, okay, I also saw the game, but I didn't know Bishop G5 was. But I th after I saw Queen A6 and that she couldn't cast, I was like, okay, it's fine. Let's okay. do it. <laughs> yeah. Are you two also friends in real life? Like, uh, you know each other well, of course, you play a lot of tournaments too. Are you friends too? Or may I ask that question? Yeah, we're friends. Yes, You're of friends. course, we're yeah. friends. Uh, the, there's a follow-up question to that. That's why I, I asked that question first. Uh, how tough is it to play against a friend when you're playing such important uh, tournaments? It's really tough. I mean, for me, it's very tough. I like. I always try to play, you know, like some, not not like not to push, just to be like normal game. <laughs> normal game. <laughs> without with, without really trying, you know. <laughs> no, but you know the thing is like when you play a friend, for example, like in the first round I played against Harika, and she's a good friend of mine. I mean, like we are in contact, we are like sometimes helping each other. And like, and she beat me in a way like after five and a half hours because of one single move and I even saw the correct move in this game. And then I bet the wrong move and I lost this game, you know, when you lose a game and that despite the fact that this is your friend or not, you know, like in this moment, you think like, ah, you know, like, you know, you're like, you, you have some kind of like angry feelings with your op opponent, obviously. But then, okay, it's it's part of like our profession. We have to separate friendship and professionalism. And even like losing to Erika, I mean, like uh, it's not like I mean better to lose to a friend than to lose to someone you don't like, in, in my opinion, you know. <laughs> you so, so I thought like, okay, I mean, it's Erika. I mean, like she's my friend. I mean, she even brought me something. I asked her like to bring something here, which I couldn't get in Germany. And it was very important for me to get and I could rely on her and she brought me this thing here. I so see. why I should be now angry with uh, with her? Because I made a silly, silly move and I lost the game because of that. So I can actually like, we can separate it. Also in the World Cup, I, I lost to Anna Mutsushuk and she's one yeah, of my closest friends. But okay, and it's, it's a World Cup. I mean, it's, it's a World Cup, right? it's KO, yeah. Okay, and there it's, you, you just, you just playing. Yes, and but you not get like a point there. It's nice to, to. I mean, it's not nice, but at least you know that your friend is. Uh, yes, at least you. Make a point, not yes, someone, yeah. yeah. You prefer to lose to a friend than to uh, to lose to someone you don't like. At least for me. The game. You gotta, especially at this tournament, there's no draw draw offers allowed, so you kind of. But was it the same like in 2019? I, I think so. They had the, the rule was the same. Really was it was so tough. Yeah. Oh. I used to have because <laughs> you wanna ask rules. just you know like. I think, like, actually, because of this rule, like, probably Nana lost yesterday in a way because the ending was objectively a draw. And maybe they yeah. would not have played on, and maybe even in your game at some yeah. point there would have been a draw offer when the position became when unclear. I, when I got a pawn, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I could have just. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, so I mean, like, I think actually it changes some results uh, in a way, especially in unclear positions. They play it till the end, even though objectively it's a draw. It may change because of the energy level. Okay. 
for example, of a yeah, Also, like we're checking sometimes, for example, if there is some, some complicated position and your opponent has less of time and you know that it's dangerous, sometimes you can just ask for a draw. And you know, because they have less time, they can just agree and you're safe. Yes, <laughs> and I mean, like your opponent loses time because he's thinking about that, yeah. like whether to take the draw or not. And sometimes actually like it's a kind of psycho psychological impact. So it's very nice, especially you play someone I weaker agree. and you're a little bit in trouble. And you just like want to force her now to decision whether to play on or not. Right. Then it's a perfect moment to yeah. ask for a draw. Yeah, especially if they are like really close to that for the move. Yeah. I, I love doing that. Yeah. yeah but, but, but. All right. Let me t give you a question outside of the chess uh, area for a little bit. And that question is, if you weren't a chess player, what profession would you choose to have? Which one of you would like to answer that first? You go first. Oh. <laughs> well, I know the answer. I would be an opera singer. Opera singer. Yes, actually, Elizabeth, I've oh. watched a lot of your... Uh, Yes, in the past, I, I, again, I had this hobby at some point, but then uh, nowadays, uh, actually, I wanted to go into yodeling. Into what? Yodeling. You know okay. what is yodeling? No. Like, yodeling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of yodeling, you know? <laughs> and I even found a teacher, but then, like, you know, I, I, get, I got the lesson with her, and I wanted to continue, and I said to her, like, okay, now I'm busy, but maybe next month. And then she stopped teaching because she had some personal issues. Oh, okay. So my yeah. dream of becoming a yodeler actually disappeared in this moment. And I was a little yeah. bit upset because I saw, like, okay, next to opera singing, yodeling would be a nice technique to learn. Interesting. Yeah. So in order to make jean less uncomfortable, I will say what I would like to be, which would be probably an actress. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I think I'll be the, the still a uh, sportsman, but I don't know which, which sport. Probably boxing. Boxing or boxing. swimming. Yeah. So I was boxing doing boxing counts. for. I love a lot of yeah. your your intense looks. I feel like you would you would do great with that too. Yes, you can switch into chess boxing. It's popular nowadays. So who's gonna be my opponent then? <laughs> well, not me yeah. because I'm not your weight class, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of that. I think I saw some videos. I think it was uh, Andrea Botas is actually quite good. Yes. Yeah, Botas against Dina. Dina. Dina but I mean, yes. like Dina was the more defensive one, and Botas was like a. Yeah. She was like really she like was, she all was so in. active. Yes. I, I mean, I saw the video. Oh, actually, Andrea also did another oh. boxing with someone else. Uh, mm. It wasn't a chess player. It wasn't a chess player. It was someone. Who so maybe I would pick her. No, I but actually, she would. Her. Okay, yeah. the thing is, like chess wise, of course, you're like stronger than her. But from the technical point of view, like what I really liked about her when I saw this boxing match is like that she was fearless. While I had the impression that Dina was trying to hide as much as she could because like Andrea had this kind of impression like, I don't care, I will just sit, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I will go all in. So I mean, I really like... Um, well, okay, I mean, that's like her only chance to win, no? Because she's... Uh, Chess-wise, she yeah. was like, uh, yeah, I yeah. I mean, Dina is stronger. Yeah, Dina is stronger chess wise. This is true. I have one more question, and I'm going to switch it to what I asked you, so this way you will not be prepared. The question is uh, Do you have a preference in which chess pieces you are playing with? For example, you know, these way, these days, these BGP board pieces. Yeah. But, like, do you have a specific preference? Are you familiar with the different ones that there are? You know, there's the Fisher. One. I think I like this one the more than we have in the venue now. The one there, okay. I was yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> it's like a Staunton, no? Like yeah, the, the, the Staunton is a yeah. tournament uh, one usually. They use a Staunton or Staunton or whatever. Staunton, yeah, yeah. They use this one. These are the yeah. regular ones. But now in but the. Now in, it's... You play with heavier pieces, they are more heavy. Sure I checked the weight. Can... Okay. Yeah. They're not good for Blitz, but for like classical chess, they're perfect. But for Blitz, I would even say they might be too heavy. Interesting. Okay. Because I checked the weight, because I was okay. feeling like when I was adjusting the pieces, like now in the chess club, that the pieces are, I mean, the, the, the horsey looks like very nice. I it see. has a very specific look. I mean, you see, like I really study these pieces, but... I can see, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad my question didn't just go on to like one But hour. as I said, I for Blitz, it might be too heavy. I see. A bit. And at home, when you prepare, do you care about what you're using or you're just using the engines these days? Uh, I have yeah, a chess board with me. No, I don't have a board. You don't have a board? No. Oh my god, okay. No, I, why do you need a board? Because I'm not your age anymore, so my memory is not that good. So like sometimes... So you're repeating like yeah, that? Yeah, I'm repeating the lines. 
No it's way. Eight I mean, it's, it's just eight. taking so much time. Just no, so but I mean, like the thing is, like when you look at the screen. <laughs> the age? And, what is no, your age? Screen? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, like when you repeat on the screen, it's not the same as if you repeat on the board. And sometimes I have the feeling that I would forget it. So, for example, like today, I checked like on the board everything. Mm. Because I would not remember, like, uh, no, on the, I mean, it depends how difficult. You check on the computer all the lines and you want me to see on the board. No, but much. sometimes, especially <laughs> like when you have to learn a lot and when you have to look like for the side moves and it's like, and you cannot like apply to logics because sometimes you have positions like there's no logical thing at all. So, I mean, in order to, to, to memorize it, you have to get some kind of, you no, know, and, and help in a I way. I just say to myself, like, it will never happen on the board. So well, and then I'm free. <laughs> so we have all generation. I'm with Elizabeth on this. New yes. generation, just I'm the conservative this. one, you know. Okay. I, I do carry a chessboard with me, but I didn't do it in your age. But no. since, like, I'm 35, I saw, like, it's I better. I think I was carrying a board when I was, like, 10, 8, maybe. Yeah. All right, girls, thank you so much for all your time. I wish you good luck for the next one. Thank you. Thanks thank you. Bye. Welcome back, everyone. Let's take a look at our standings after round seven. We have Anna Zatonsky leading the tournament with four and a half points. Following closely in the second place, Bella Hotenashvili with four points. And sharing third, Elizabeth Petz and Irina Crush with three and a half. Elizabeth enjoying a by day today. What a what an interview I wanted to say. You get two chess players together and they get themselves very excited as we take a look at the penultimate round pairings taking place right now. Kostinyuk is playing Hotanashvili, John Avali is playing Zagnize, Mamad Zada is playing Crush, and our tournament leader Zatowski is facing Abdul Malik. Uh, great great positions, uh, really good fighting chess. And I just wanted to jump to Almera because she was making this very nice points about what was going on in Alexander's, uh, uh, Alexandra's position with bishop f4 and king h1. Over to you, Almera. Uh, thank you, Yasser. And Bella has just made the move. But before, I, I wanted to finish my thought because I showed you a lot of these variations. So, uh, to resume, if uh, black plays queen b6 here, so our idea is to take, play f4, bishop b7, and g4. And of course, why this is so strong? Because here you can take with the queen on g4. So if you play queen c6 here, that was the line that I haven't had a chance to show you after f, uh, sorry, it was here, queen c6, then you take, of course you can no longer play g4 here because of d4, uh, but then white plays queen f3, mm -hmm. and you cannot play d4 here because uh, your, well, your pawn is pinned. So Bella made another move that I didn't even consider here. She played queen c8. But of course, now that you know all the ideas in this position and one why Alexander was trying to lure her opponent to play this move queen b6 is that Bella needs to uh, keep an eye on this g4 square. So mm -hmm. let's say if we want to play according to the standards here and we will make this move g4 here but now black can take. And if you play f5, because you can no longer take on g4, okay, we are going for our standard breakthrough in the center, d4. Right. So this is a very sharp game if Alexandra will take on g5. So what should you do here, I think, uh, after bishop, uh, queen c8, so bishop g5, bishop g5, f4, once again, it's a standard idea, but after um, bishop e7, Maybe you can try bishop, queen e2 with the idea of rook d1, which seems for me quite natural here. What do you think, Yasser and Nazir? Yeah. I, I like your g4. I think that is incredibly challenging after, after uh, bishop e7. g4 takes mm -hmm. f5. And, uh, well, if I could play queen takes g4, I'm a happy camper, mm -hmm. right? Yes, but and, now... The whole idea of this move is actually to play d3 mm -hmm. and to shut your yeah, bishop I down. Right. I disagree. I think white needs to prepare it a little bit. It's Queen e2, rook d1 seems more natural to me, and then prepare g4. 
It's, it's my natural aggression, you see. It gets in the way uh, all the time. Queen takes g4, d3, bishop d1. Mm -hmm. I guess you would play c4, and you're saying to me, my, my great attack oh, on the king side maybe. is not going to... Uh, Achieve much? Actually, c4 it might be a bit premature because rook g1 that is was a very question. strong continuation, right. of course. Maybe you should prepare uh, um, c4 and also parry the rook g1 threat. Right. So, what can you do here? Can you play queen d7? A lot of strange moves in this <laughs> position, yes, because you right. should protect something. So, and especially after rook g1, queen d5 check. So. So, Why is so, that the end of the road? Rook g1, queen d5 check, bishop f3? Queen takes e5. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yes. Defending the pawn, yeah. And rook e1, just simply queen, queen f6. Queen f6, yes, I think that after rook e1, queen f6, and you have a very was, healthy rook e6. Pawn on I was so, yeah, exactly. I was so excited. Rook e6, <laughs> queen f7. Rook e6 and queen f7. Wow. Okay. Let, thank you for that, Almira. Uh, really, uh, well, you, you, you managed to throw us in the deep end of the pool. We really got uh, pulled in there. Let's take a look at our tournament leaders game, Anna Zatansky, for a second. Because when we left it, Anna actually had some really compelling choices. I think the first line you kind of look at mm -hmm. is like, what happens if I try to get rid of my backward pawn, b4? What happens if I try to castle? Castles looks pretty attractive, you know, maybe I'll post right. my rook up on d8. I suppose black would try to bring her king into the center with rook d8. -ing. And it, it, there's always something to be suggested for uh, development, development with e3 bishop. And finally, in the move that Anna chose, knight f4, in Anna's mind, she could be thinking of g4 and knight uh, to h5 as mm -hmm. a way of uh, grabbing a pawn. Knight to c6 on the board and from... She's been thinking here for a long time, Anna. Rook b8 is on uh, Black's agenda, yes. She's probably considering knight h5. Knight h5, right. And in this case, you know, I'm a pawn grabber. <laughs> I like to keep my pawns, too. So yes. I will probably play here. I was surprised in the variations that Almira was showing us, where Black just sacrifices the pawn and they have enough compensation. Right, something like rook d8, knight takes, king f8. And as the computer mm -hmm. was showing, the dynamic play of king e7, you, you, well, let, let's be fair, we have invested a great deal of time sure. in capturing a double pawn but after all. But we're also all. in the end game, so I'm not that worried about being so behind in development. Right. There is a consideration, though, Nasi, that I have for Anna's fans, and that is, okay, if you let me play move rook d8, if you let me play rook b8, now we'll come with the tempo. Don't forget, I have bishop a6 mm -hmm. and knight uh, a5. We've been talking about a targeted pawn on the f6 square. Well, let's talk about rook b8, bishop a6, and knight, and Anna could start to get worried about her pawn. Definitely. I think that's coming either way, whether I go knight h5 or not. I think that's Black's plan. Right. How should uh, Anna prepare for it? Well, again, I, I, for, for me, I, I think you're <laughs> going to have to play e3 one day. I mean, there's going to come a time that you don't want to face knight d4, and you don't want to face knight d4 and rook d8. So something like e3 to get things started seems right. Are you right. planning to castle short or long? I'm, you're not sure. I'm not sure, but I guess <coughs> long. Me. I guess long. So if we're castle and long, maybe we should start with long castle because okay. who knows, maybe instead of e3 we will play g4 and develop the bishop the other side. The other side. Okay, mm -hmm. so castle's long. And I think that the moves rook b8 and rook d8 are necessary. In my mind, if I'm playing the black pieces, I would love my king mm -hmm. actually to be on e7. That That's safe, it's in a pocket, but it also protects the d6 square, the f6 mm -hmm. pawn, so rook d8, yes. And you're suggesting g4? Yeah, I, white has to, this is a critical moment, how do we finish our development? Right, right. Since your king's going to e7, it feels yes. like the king side's going to be a little bit abandoned, especially pawn on h6, so maybe white should play on the king side with, okay. with g4. 
And uh, well, not a, not the biggest of surprises mm -hmm. for ourselves, but Anna is burning her clock as she's considering her options here. And again, I do see that Black is playing Rook D8, King F8, King E7, and Anna needs to coordinate whether or not she's going to be playing for the king side, like mm -hmm. you suggested, with G4. And finally, once again, from the current position, I'm, uh, you know, if I was going to play B4, I would have wanted to, to have done it a, a, a turn ago, but I might even consider this move, knight to D3, because once again, I'm a little bit fearful of, get, mm -hmm. of ending up in a situation where I have the backward pawn and, and you have easy play. Both b2 and c4 pawns are quite weak. Yeah, and uh, I, well, okay, Anna to, is in a key moment. Let's just leave it there. Let's jump uh, to uh, Arena Crush's game for a moment because we did see, by the way, knight d7. And g4. And g4. No, bishop d4, just immediately g4. g4. And there's something about this move that maybe um, I was expecting Arena to see B5 from Me Arena. too. I thought B5 was definitely on her agenda. There's something she didn't like about the queen on C6. Exactly. And maybe it E5? It might have been E5 related. Mm -hmm. Like she saw some variation. And basically she's saying to, to White, okay, you can go ahead and play your G5, but eventually I'm going to get there with my play mm -hmm. too. I'm going to play b5 and b4. I see this as a very, very double-edged position. And White can go g5 right away or okay. even go h4 here. Yeah. And we can predict black's next move is b5 and <laughs> exactly. it's a race. Uh, uh, who, who checkmates first. Exactly. Who gets there first with the mostest? Uh, definitely uh, a nice one to keep our eye on. Let's jump to the game of Harika and Nana for a We're moment. We're following kind of following our analysis. Exactly, when we left it, 95. Harika did play 95. Knight c3, bishop b4, and no captures on uh, c3. It just happened. You can, oh, there's one more move. Oh, sorry. It takes b5 and bishop Take, c3. Bishop takes c3, and I'm anticipating b2 takes c3, and probably, well, let's pause. You know, Harika's thinking here. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's the e4 option, maybe. E4 option didn't cross my mind. I was thinking, you, 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 if you play E takes D5, are you, aren't you helping me in some way? Let's say I just go back. Isn't this, oh, you could this play knight C4. Or still knight C4. That's a cute one. Yes. Okay, that bishop on G2 lying in ambush. So E4 is an option. Mm -hmm. Oh my, are we in theoretical water still? I think there are a few games, but it's not a well-known theor theoretical position because it's supposed to be better for white. Okay, uh, Almera, mm -hmm. uh, bail us out and tell us what the, the state of the theory suggests about this position. Well, Mira was contemplating this position. <laughs> <laughs> As you remember, we were analyzing previously the move C takes B5, which right. allowed the move Bishop A3, which was very natural, and uh, deprived Black from castling. So right. Anna, um, no, Nana, she decided to castle first and not to take on B5. So here after, well, I analyzed actually the move E4 and I think it just happened on the board. Mm -hmm. yes. But B previously in the position, uh, in this position, B takes C3, C takes B5 happened. So, and here every, almost everyone played Bishop A3. Okay. So Rook E8, now E4. E4. So let's say what happens after Queen C3, Bishop F3. Uh, queen f3, attacking on f7, and attacking the knight on c3. Right. So, well, you will have to play f6, but this is a very... Probably the only move. Yes, yeah. dubious line, so I don't even want to go there. But now, what I like about this position, I don't know if uh, Harika has prepared this, that here you have this crazy move, g4. And, okay, look at your powerful bishops at your center, uh, and 
the move G G4 is just asking to be played. <laughs> nice. It really reminds me, forcibly reminds me of the games of Boris Galfin, where he would have E4 and G4. In fact, Harika played the move E4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us about the current position. America. So the current position, I have uh, very few games. And uh, well, I would have to trust the computer here, because after E4, I'm not sure that black wants to play knight c7. So this is the I'm second upset. line. But bishop b4 is considered to be the uh, computer's top choice. OK. So and I still have a few games here. But e takes d5, c takes d5. You can take on c4. You better take mm -hmm. that pawn immediately, I would think. Yeah. So yes, of course, you cannot take on c4 because I will take this beautiful rook. But after knight c4, um, you can see that this b5 pawn is one important, is a key element to this position because mm -hmm. it deprives black from the possibility of developing the knight. And also, I threaten to play b6 at some point. So, what should you do here? Should you attack this pawn immediately? Bishop d7. Let's go. That's what sure. I thought. Yes, that's for me. This seems quite natural, and I still uh, don't know what is the the answer to this move because it seems to me that queen a4 is the only move. Okay. Or maybe knight a3, but after knight a3, you can simply take on a3. And, I, and what yes. about b6, just pushing the pawn? Mm -hmm. Let's see, b6. b6. Here, maybe a5, do we lose? Because you threaten to play b7, mm -hmm. b7 of course. b7 would be <laughs> yes. embarrassing, yes. How, should I, how can I show you? <laughs> show right. it, let's say bishop b5 and b7. <laughs> it's a, it's and we're a, not only winning a rook. We might be getting a new queen. <laughs> but after a5, right. supporting the bishop on b4, so you no longer attack it with queen a4, mm -hmm. um, you will have to fight for a dear life, I think. Now the evaluation has changed completely. So maybe queen a4 and with the tempo, attacking the bishop on a4 here. Mm -hmm. And the computer still suggests a5, because you can no longer take on a6. This pawn is pinned. Slightly better for white, bishop b4, maybe. And the knight on b8 is still um, has, well, it doesn't have more prospects for the moment. So we'll have to right. play maybe bishop b8, knight d7, knight b6. Right. Uh, the move bishop d7, besides bishop d7, also possible knight to david to, 7, just mm -hmm. uh, uh, first of all, stopping the b6, mm -hmm. b7, but maybe just on a good day, preparing rook b8 and rook takes b5. Yes, let's say what can we do against this uh, you stop being very bishop simple before. plan. I will play bishop f4. That's a good move, yes. uh, definitely, right. But maybe a5 uh, is a very good move in every position here. Right. So, yes, if you take on a6 on Passant, then you simply exchange this powerful pawn. And after bishop a6, I think black is even better. Right. Yeah, my knight is now pinned. I yes, love so uh, the structure mm -hmm. for black, by the way. Uh, one massive pawn mm -hmm. structure versus some split and scraggly pawns for white. But yeah, a5. So uh, Harika's opening, I want to say, after bishop b4. By the way, bishop b4 on, on the board. The board. Um, What's the, th what's the theory, what's the theoretical uh, statistics tell us about this position? Um, uh, well, I have a very old game, and I think there was a second game somewhere in the correspondence database, but e takes d5 is the, uh, well, is the best move in this position. Sure. So she, she will have to go down this line. Uh, I cannot find... I mean, it's find... a piece, after all. <laughs> yes. So you will have to uh, right. take a piece here. Right. And c takes d5, knight c4. I was wondering what happens after e takes d5, but I think maybe you can simply take this pawn. Can you take On b c6. takes c6? Sure. So yeah. b takes c6 is a very human natural move. But on the other hand, I would be worried if, well, I might lose it <laughs> one day. So. Exactly. Uh, let's jump to the game of arena for a moment. We haven't, uh, and again, I just, for me, I love these games where uh, the, the kings are on opposite flanks because when, you, you know, everybody plays tight. You know, yes. you want to be conservative. You don't want to lose. And so when you castle on the same side, everybody applauds you and says great understanding. When you're on opposite sides, 
well, then the creative uh, flow just goes. G4, Queen's, G5, B5, and let's go. Uh, your take, just re knee-jerk reaction. Would you like to be white or black in these positions? I like this with both. <laughs> okay. Colors, but I think I'd rather be white. Because? Um, because I like immediately F5. Okay. F5. And, and I'm uh, already threatening F6. Exactly. And so you understand that I will meet mm -hmm. uh, F5 with B4. And here I was thinking I have knight A4. If I had to go to B1, then I wouldn't like it as much for white. Okay. It'd be very passive, but right. I can do knight A4. Okay. And uh, you wouldn't be afraid that the knight is somewhat um, off sides a little bit? It is, but I'm using at least one piece to defend my king side, and I'll use the rest of my pieces to attack mm -hmm. Black's king. And Almira, forgetting about the chess engine for, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I was just going to ask you the same question, but I'll answer uh, the mm -hmm. question first. For me, strangely enough, I actually like the black position. And why is okay. that? It has to do with kings. I think you're going to have to play king b1 to tuck your king in one day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to get off the C file. And I've already got my king on G8, you know, and I just feel like that extra tempo could be meaningful. Now, I'm going to ask Irina after the game why she felt mm -hmm. she needed queen C7, C7 yeah. because I would have gotten on with business. Uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you, when you play the move F5, does it concern you that you're giving me this e5 square? e5 square yes and no positionally it concerns me but this is such a sharp position i'm going f6 and right like we said before every tempo here matters too much yeah, yeah exponentially, <laughs> exponentially almost, right so yeah while your knight is pretty i think i might be already winning yeah. oh, you took on f6 i was expecting bishop, bishop d8. to d8 uh asking you uh you yeah, it looks like rook you're G1 check. rook g1 check, king h8, right? I mean, uh, you've got... Queen f2? Queen f2. To me, it feels like white's all already winning. Like it should be just over, over right? Yes. Yeah, and this is uh, exactly First. what we're, we're looking at. All right, but uh, we're going to take a pause in our analysis and bring on a very special guest with Almira. Yes, <laughs> I am joined in the studio by our very special guest, uh, Jana Thomas. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jana, you are the scholastic coordinator um, at the St. Louis Chess Club. Please tell us more about this very special program. Okay, well, our Scholastics program is a great program that allows us to reach out to students in many schools. We're in I'm sure over a hundred schools at this time, adding schools every year, and definitely servicing more than our, what we thought was 80,000 students. We're topping that now. So since the beginning of the program, uh, these are the numbers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite aspect of the, of the program? How does it affect the students? Uh, tell us more. Well, my favorite part of teaching chess is relating it to life. Um, I think it's an important game to learn because it can be used as a tool for achieving goals. So students will first have to be aware, and that takes focus, which we develop, but they have to be aware of their position or situation on the board and in life and then they have to accept that reality and start their trial and error of like building opportunities and removing obstacles on their journey to their goal. And so that is exactly what they're doing on the chessboard. And I've seen them absorb that and then transfer that from the board to life. And that just, that is very rewarding for me. Well, actually, it was a part of this pro program, but in the Soviet Union. So I wanted to ask you, at what age uh, kids start? Um, as soon as they can. Um, most of our youngest students are around four to five. Yeah. We have taught some preschoolers. Most of our classrooms are going to be kindergarten and up. 
-hmm. Okay, and I've heard there are also summer camps where, uh, well, which last I think for one or two weeks, where children uh, can learn for several hours a day. Absolutely, we have so many camps this summer. Uh, summer is extremely popular. Last year was our best year, and we're looking to service at least 50% more students this summer. We have space in all of our camps still available, and thanks to our partners, Ascension Health, we're able to have the summer camps in the Jennings and Ferguson Florissant areas, so we have lots of camps to offer. And if anybody's still interested, they should go to our website and feel free to contact us about registration. Well, tell us a little bit more about this, because I would imagine that it's like Rolling Stones concert, you know, the moment you have the announcement, so every spot is taken. Do you have a few spots left? Absolutely. We have plenty of spots left, because we are trying to have camps as big as 50 to 60 students, right? So we have various levels for students to learn at. It's not just advanced. We have intermediate and beginner students. So all students are welcome. So they should simply go online and fill in the application? Yes, yes. And if they have any questions, make sure to email or call us because we'll get them straightened out. <laughs> yes, so it's important, of course, to have all the information on stlouischessclub.com. Dot org, I dot think. Org. Dot org, yes. yes. And uh, this is a, a wonderful initiative. You know, it brings back a lot of memories from my childhood. So Yay. thank you so much, uh, Jenna. And well, please join uh, this program and the summer camps. Yes, definitely. Come on out. Join us. Thank you, uh, Jenna, for all uh, the work you do. I, really, it is a treat here in the St. Louis, a summertime, because they have so many summer camps. Uh, Verugian was just completed, like literally a day ago, uh, the summer camp there. And you see yeah, actually, all of the kids. A few years ago, I was lucky to teach all girls summer camp. Right. It was wonderful. Yeah, I was here, boy, I think about 10 years ago for. Um, the American Chess Camp. Uh, mm -hmm. Greg Shahadi uh, helped that, and uh, all of the kids. It's just the, it's the kids. It, it, yeah. it, it's their, their faces. They're just so happy <laughs> to see you. Uh, turning our attention back uh, to our uh, tournament for a moment, because I really did not like the move that uh, Zanshaya has just played. In this position, uh, knight c6 was fine. I, I'm not, no, no problems with knight c6. Knight h5, f5 was fine. Castles, okay, I see a pawn. Uh, knight f6 uh, check, knight takes d7. I'm going to defend the pawn, and I'm going to bring my king again. Uh, to, to, to my mind, these were like literally forced moves. Yeah. Like, like you got to play these moves. Uh, Jensaya played the move F6, and I really don't like that move. I mean, I re, uh, I'm repelled by it, uh, in fact. Uh, the first move that comes to my mind, I'm a pawn grubber. I will go rook to G, rook to D3, pardon me. And yes, mm -hmm. I'm very much eyeballing rook g3 check and rook g6 so like that would be a first mm -hmm. another one for me to me would be rook g1 and g4 okay. oh, i have a similar please uh instinct but i want to play g4 right away wow <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Aggress so aggressive you, you I mean, me one. <laughs> who was your coach again <laughs> okay and explain why I, well, I, after f6, but, it feels like Black's king is very vulnerable now because right. it's not going to the center way it was supposed to. Right, where it would hang out happily in the center. And you want g4 so you can open up uh, the Here, ranks? I don't know if I should play h3 right away, or okay. I also want to sneak in bishop g2 because if uh, allowed, uh, I will take on c6 and play rook d6 and just have a fantastic endgame. I like that, and the the thing I especially like about Bishop G two in this position is B7. yeah exactly that the, there's no Bishop B seven Rook takes D seven, and if you do as you say sneak in Bishop C, takes C six and Rook G one that's mm -hmm. that feels like play on one goal, I mean so, Anna, well she's playing well 
Let's remind everybody that she won all of her games with the black pieces, none with the mm -hmm. white pieces. She's having a great result, but she's only been drawing with the white Now she has advantage with the white pieces. When it rains, it pours. It's all going her way. Um, Almira, uh, break the tie. Uh, G4, rook G1, as well as rook D3. Uh, we like Anna's position. How good is it? It's actually quite good. And, and, and John Sai's <coughs> last move, F6, was You're clearly it, yeah. a mistake. But I wanted to explain it. Of course, it uh, seems ridiculous now. But here you want to make a very natural move, rook B8. Right. But here comes the stunner. Rook D7. <laughs> That's the nature of the mistake. I think that Jansaya saw this idea and she was thinking of like, how do I make this work? Right. That's F6, so, but after. She could yes. have played Rook D8, right? To avoid Rook D7 as well. Instead of Rook B8? Rook yes. D8. Yes, Rook D8, but yeah. of course, but she, she didn't, well, she could have played this move before. So right. when I think that she wanted to keep her rook here, mm -hmm. but the computer actually loves your move g4, Nazi, mm -hmm. in every position. So mm -hmm. I think it's actually a very good try, but especially after f6 here, g4. So if take g4, right. you can play bishop g2, but I really like rook g1. <coughs> As especially, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the king is very vulnerable here. So f5 and h3 maybe mm -hmm. here so what uh what can you do here because this is this is a very nice pawn on c8 <laughs> yes right it feels like a disaster actually i mean it looks like maybe king f7 you yeah. have to run and yeah. after take on d4 you you really don't want to take on g4 because after rook g4 um, the rook g7 is coming, so, and if you play rook g8, I just wanted to illustrate a very mm -hmm. simple variation that maybe you can play knight f6, take on d7, and this position is uh, completely lost for I'll them. sign up for that one. Give me the pawn. I'm actually surprised that engine was only showing plus one. Right. I can be more. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to you, Almira, and we're thinking white slightly better, and the engine goes plus three. <laughs> we go to you at the moment that we're thinking plus three, and it only shows plus one because it really feels like, and and maybe it's just the nature of the position. Once we play g4, bishop g2, bishop takes c6, it's so clarified that it's done and dusted that g4, it, it's actually a bigger advantage than, uh, that, than we think. I love g4, I love rook d3, I love... I love uh, White's position. You love too. chess. I love chess. <laughs> I love that. Um, and I love the horsey. <laughs> horsey. <laughs> we switched from a positional endgame to a very sharp dynamic endgame, if exactly. Anna plays g4 especially. Exactly. Well, our and tournament she played leader. played it. I love this Anna. Game. See? I think also, for me, chess is a game of confidence. Seriously, mm -hmm. Anna has suffered in her career, I think, to, to bouts of lack of confidence. And when she, you're having a result and everything's go, going mm -hmm. your way, you feel the move G4 has to be played, and you just do it. And you I'm don't glad that double she, a, yeah. she didn't shy away from it because of her tournament situation. Exactly. Because she uh, is leading the tournament and she doesn't want, want to lose. Want to take risks. Yeah, yeah to take too many risks. But right. position's asking for G4 and she plays what position is yeah. asking for. So. And again, uh, the Soviet annotation, the move G4 fits the requirements of the position, <laughs> meets it the requirements does, yes. of the position. G4 looking very good. And then that puts the pressure on Bella. Let's take a look at her game uh, as she tries to keep pace. Boy, this is these bishops of opposite color middle games, they can actually be quite testing. A takes B5, very crucial moment. And I wanted to ask D3? Can I, uh, a moment ago we were putting the pawn on D3 right. and trying to kill the bishop. Bishop takes, C4. I've got C4. So and I have to go bishop B1? Okay, bishop B1. Uh, I took us. A B Queen B3, Queen B3 check. B3 check. Oh, that's that's a part. Apologies, that was my mouse slip. Queen B3 check. I guess I'll move my king. Queen takes B5, mm -hmm. right? And this pawn is sitting on the doorstep of uh, the position. D2. Well, 
C4, um, hmm. If black can keep these pawns. Oh boy, well it could be, it could be game over actually. That's a big if. But okay, D2, uh, it might be that the pawn just gets blocked. Mm -hmm. Blockaded, I mean, sorry. Um, <laughs> bishops of opposite color position, but double-edged. Very it really, it, it, and uh, Bale is out of this one. Uh, uh, again, the annotation would be dynamic equality or both sides have uh, chances to win. Uh, what's going on, Almira? Well, here I am to your rescue. <laughs> <Once again. laughs> Please. The blunder woman. <laughs> blunder woman. Let, let's have a look. Uh, the computer suggests a takes b5 first because he wants to keep the tension here in the center. Because uh, if you play d3 immediately, well, first bishop b1, I think, featured in your analysis, but uh, the computer even tries bishop a4 here. Of course, it's a very sharp position here. I think that maybe you can play c4, cement this pawn on d3, but I will always have the opportunity to play b3, so maybe I can prepare it in some way. What should I do here? Can I take on a6? What was your idea, Yasser, if, if I take on a6? Um, well, okay, I'm a pawn grabber. I'll take it back. <laughs> Queen a6. I'm and... just hoping that this pawn on d3 is going to bring me glory. Um, hmm. Do I have a useful move with the bishop here? I am not really sure. So can I, can I try b3 here? Something okay. very easy to play. And again, this is like those situations where I go d2, you take a pawn, and I just hope that somehow this pawn on d2 you take, I'll go, I don't know, queen b6, or mm -hmm. just getting, you know, my bishop goes to c5, <laughs> maybe to e3. Is it compensation? Or Well, the computer doubts it because it's plus two, and I think right. that, okay, what actually explains the evaluation according to the computer? Because when he sees a very little number of defensive resources, mm -hmm. uh, then he gives a quite big advantage. So here I think uh, there are very few tactical ideas which you can actually use in this position. And the d1 square is overprotected. So let's right. say queen f3. I see, and mm -hmm. uh, you've always Maybe, yes, right. uh, bishop c5, but then I will put my rook on d1, let's say this rook. Yeah. And I'm not sure you will be able to hold this grip with the bishop on e3. Because exactly. this is a very important maneuver, of course. Even if you play bishop b3, I can play bishop c6 and bishop d5. Right. And in the game, in fact, pardon me, Bella did, uh, did recapture simply on b5. Mm -hmm. She did not essay d3 in those pawn sacrifices. Mm -hmm. She just played a6 takes b5. And as we came on the show, we played a series of what-ifs with one another. We said, what if Anna Zatonsky were to win her game and we really like her position? Right, she has a good chance to win. And exactly. If, if she does win and Bella loses, which would also happen, right. and Irina doesn't win her game, then Anna wins the tournament today. With one round to spare. And who would have saw that coming as uh, the bottom seed, Anna Zatonsky in the tournament, uh, has really been the only player to go undefeated. She's currently at uh, plus three, and look at her line score. A beautiful 50-50. Yes. 50 draw, 50% draws and 50% wins. Yes, and she won every game with the black pieces, and today she's trying to win with the white. And that seventh round uh, is a bye day. That was where uh, she would have played uh, Humpy uh, on round seven, but Humpy withdrew from the tournament due to illness. And wow, what a remarkable achievement that would be. Let's just jump into that and game as we saw. She made my move, is, Bishop G2. And Saya. It's just Bishop G, oh, King, <coughs> Bishop G2, King F7. Okay. I think Almira suggested Rook G1 and H3 instead of Bishop G2. Right. I like bishop g2, and I like very much this follow-up of bishop takes c6. I see that as an important move that just takes away all of the uh, fun play in black's position. Your, and rook d6, right? Rook d6 or h3. I love uh, you know just making sure that there's no mm -hmm. team 
display, you know, like the pawns will be discoordinated. You light rook uh, d6 and just looking to grub back a couple of pawns and... Uh, I'm just putting the rook on d6 to annoy black. <laughs> well, the other reason, the, the reason why you want to do that is maybe there's the desirable idea mm -hmm. of e5 and bishop e6 and no, <laughs> it, stops, it stops being desirable the moment you see rook, rook f6. So I like rook d6. I like Anna's position. It's crazy very, how very, knight very on much. h5, because I always say this, that pieces in the corner are not happy. Right, knight, knight on, on the h5 rim. is an exception. Yeah, and it's not dim in this particular case. Uh, I love rook d6 and h3. And uh, by the way, uh, the... the the uh, uh, Karen's Cup, of course, is uh, named after Dr. Uh, Jeannie Singfield. Uh, her maiden name is Karen. Karen. And as a scientist, uh, Jeannie asked herself, well, you know, yes, there are all of these crazy openings. You've got names for all of the openings. And mm -hmm. statistically, how do the opening moves do? Like, which are the opening moves played most often and which are score? Well, Jeannie, the scientist, came up with the following segment. All right, so we've had uh, Queen's Gambit seems to be the most popular in this tournament. Right, seven yeah, times. It was played seven times and uh, results, two wins for white, one for black, and four draws. Pretty even, I would say. Uh -huh. Sicilian defense, not surprised to see that. Right. Uh, it was played six times. But oh boy, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, black players better shy away from the Sicilian. Statistically, you're not doing well. Not in this tournament. He has four wins for white. Right. And Catalan and Reddy both were played three times. And um, you want to shy away from it when yeah. you're white. Don't play the Catalan. And then we had three other openings that were only played twice. But hey, <laughs> can I can I get a little love for the English opening? Look at that. Two. And win 100 percent. 100 percent. That's all I ask. That, that's all I ask. I'm surprised Ninso Indian was only played twice. <laughs> that's a, it, it is true. Well, we have more uh, as well. But you can see how diverse the openings have been in this tournament. We've had, I, I lost count, a lot of openings. <laughs> right. I mean, there are sometimes like the players get into a Berlin groove and it's mm -hmm. just sort of like you're seeing Berlins or you're seeing uh, Joko pianos, uh, too many of them. And you're right, King's Indian, look at it this. It keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> I thought London we were gonna, system, French, I remember Greenfield. there was a French defense, Black mm -hmm. Winds. Did this latest play almost every opening? <laughs> yes, it, it, it feels like a, whoa. Spanish it, and Queen. This hasn't gambit. been one Karakhan game yet. That's the only one I'm missing. I, I was about to say, I didn't see a King's Gambit, but uh, you're right, there was no Karakhan well, either. Well, King's Gambit is <laughs> less likely to happen. And, and no no Russian defenses, no Petrovs, no, no Berlins. Berlins. Very happy to see that. <laughs> uh, quite a profusion and a different uh, tournament than we, we, we used to, Almera. Lots and lots of uh, openings and defenses. Uh, indeed. Thank you, Jeannie, for right. this interesting idea, very interesting idea. And now that uh, we've been analyzing so many games, I had this idea. How many times was the move H4 played in the opening stage, you know, right. in this tournament? I was thinking, okay, guys, I'm going to make your life more complicated. <laughs> 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 I am looking forward to more scientific analysis and right. statistics about our games. Well, we may have to get our audience to participate in uh, ferreting out uh, that type of information. How it's many times interesting if we did the same statistical analysis in the, let's say, GCT. Right. I'm afraid we, to we, say we, it would be we, like 30% Berlin, 30% Petrov, and right. then scattered a few other openings. Yeah, Joko pianos, yeah. and uh, that's it. Well, again, I just uh, bringing up the game of Anna because I'm more than curious. She, uh, and I understand that move completely. She says, look, your knight is not moving. It's in a pin. Uh, your bishop's not moving because uh, mm -hmm. the pawn on d7 would be hanging. So this no move H, take. yes, exactly. The move H2, H3 is useful for me. So let me play it right away. Big applause. I love this uh, decision. I love the position for white here. Exactly. What is black's next move? Should I accept pawn on H3? 
Well, if you don't, I'm helps. just simply, <laughs> I'm simply going to There's take There's an option so. to play rook g8, maybe. <laughs> okay, fair. I think that that makes uh, a lot of sense. And any captures, there is uh, uh, the potential tempo of c4. Move, yeah, yeah a, a, a tempo, exactly. In which case, just a second, just a second. It doesn't make sense. And now I'm, I'm. You want to take? <laughs> I'm really finding myself drawn to your rook d6 idea, especially as I've gotten in. I think a useful move, mm -hmm. h3, that, that helps me a lot, I want to say. And um, I don't know if the move rook g8 really helps black a lot. So this looks tough for uh, Zensaya. Um, going to Bella's game, just a moment. Sorry, that wasn't Bella's game. No, gosh darn it. I went, <laughs> I went through the whole list, and I saw the move rook a7 on the board. And I wanted to ask... Are we in, th I, know, I know these open Spanishes go for a long time mm -hmm. in terms of the theory. Where did we deviate Almera from the theory? When, when? I think it started with bishop f4. That was a rare move that Alexandra to made. To begin with, bishop f4 was mm -hmm. rare. But and I don't know what the complete novelty was. Maybe it was queen c8 because that's off the beaten track. Where did we, where did we get, uh, uh, the novelty. Uh, queen c8, according to the database, is the novelty, novelty because queen b6 was previously played. Right. We know all the plans now and the nuances and the positions. So Bella wanted to avoid uh, this plan with g4. But let's say in the position here, rook a7 is actually the line given by the computer. So it's this move is very strong. So it yields like small advantage to white, but after d takes c3. That's a tempo. It's a tempo, queen f3. Right. <coughs> so queen is 6 here. And well, what we need to understand here is that af af after a lot of trades and exchanges, so white still kept the powerful uh, pass pawn on e5. Right. Here you have two options, to take on a c3 with a pawn or to take on c3 with a with the queen, so maybe with the pawn is a better option. Well, first of all, you do not allow black to play rook d4. But and then I was asking myself, how should you proceed here? Should you play b4 here? Probably you shouldn't because the computer says queen bishop to <laughs> that b3 you're, is yes, coming. almost winning. No, I actually wanted to play c4, <coughs> oh, but sorry. then it's not enough because I will probably never get back this pawn. I gotcha. wanted to create a pass pawn, but here. After b5, he says that I'm no, never getting it back. A uh, question for you, Elmir. After rook a7, uh, d takes c, queen f3, can black just play rook d7 and exchange that great rook on the seventh rank instead of queen e6? Ah, instead of, yes, instead of queen e6. Just rook By e7. the way, I just mm -hmm. want to say uh, before we, we stun our viewers with the move rook a6, I don't know why rook a6 is on the screen. Alexandra did not blunder her <laughs> rook, everybody. Don't, don't panic, don't panic. The so, rook is actually on a7. Nazi, after rook d7, you have bishop f5 losing on the spot. <gasps> oh, rook okay. yeah, yeah. so a It's a wonderful nice. idea. That's mm -hmm. why I think that queen e6 is the only move to protect the bishop. And of course, after rook a5, you have queen, rook a8, nice and you're tactic. losing your queen. By the way, I find that type of a tactic so easy to overlook because in my mind's eye, sometimes I look at the pawn on f5 mm -hmm. and I say, I've got it defended. Yes. I, I, I've got it, in fact, so well defended, it doesn't even occur to, to me it. that it could possibly be on pre. So rook d7 uh, it looks like one of those moves that you can play. <laughs> Yeah. And that's a, a, a real shock. So once again, we're looking at takes on c3, queen f3, queen e6, uh, a recapture. And I agree, you have um, a fine, great, uh, a protected pass pawn on e5. But I also have a candidate pawn. And bishops of opposite colors, is it too much to say that the position should be drawn or... It should be closer to equality than anything else. I would, I would have thought it would be equalish or equal um, after rook to d two in the position. 
uh, that uh, Almira was showing us. Do you think that, w w would you be optimistic as well? Not at all. I, I, I wouldn't be, so I was just curious if you would uh, as well. And if you had taken with the queen, queen takes c3, as Almira suggests, uh, the, the square is a future outpost for the rook. I think this is a little bit embarrassing, by the way. Oops. <laughs> The desirable yeah. C4 has a drawback. Uh, Anna Zatonsky, uh, again, it's been the Anna Zatonsky show, and after H3, well, Jensaya just didn't have a, a, an alternative to rook mm -hmm. G8. It's almost like exactly at this moment, uh, white has a free move, too, because if it was black's turn, I don't think there is a better move than a5, for example. Or maybe right? rook b8, something like that. Well, yeah, a5 was kind of, uh, you, nice. you know, trying to play for rook a6. So it's sort of like white has a free free move in hand. What do you think about the move rook d6? Looks good. It's a free move, yeah. right? Uh, again, asking black what she would do. And has a lot of options here. It feels like a... But I wouldn't be surprised if She's there's some... Thing well, very, very consequential, like something that could really uh, like cement a very uh, significant edge. And maybe uh, Almira has an answer. Uh, what does the oracle uh, tell us? The oracle actually tells us that after rook d6, uh, black is no longer losing this game because wow. as you can see that it comes to zeros after rook b8. So we need to understand uh, the Why? reason, uh, yes, behind this evaluation, because bishop c6 is his top, li top line. Natural so follow-up. Natural follow-up. So we, I think that you cannot allow black to play knight d4 or knight e5. So of course you need to take on c6, d takes c6. And the thing is, in this line, I suspect that he considered that the knight on h5 is too far away from this pawn, so black can actually uh, finish the development and play e5. So let's say if you play knight g3 here, right. then maybe, well, for the moment I didn't even say queen f5, so maybe king e7. Okay. Where sh can you take here? No, because you have this bishop b7. It's Problem, a, right. Yes, it's a very important tactical motif in this position. So let's say you will play rook d3 or rook d2. But then maybe I can take on h3, rook h3, and this becomes unclear. So rook g6, knight e4. Oh, but here you have e5, and black is much better. So you whoa, see whoa, how whoa. careful you should be? <laughs> so um, it's uh, rook d6 is n not, not precise. Yes, not the way. So I think maybe you should try. What I liked about Anna's move that you should open the h file as well. So let's say rook g4. Here you can take with the tempo. Can you take rook c4 here? That's a check. Yes, it's a check. Let's say king b1, but then d takes. Ah, and now you can play, I think, rook g1 followed by ooh, rook ooh. g7. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, this position. So you don't have time for this pawn grab. Then d <laughs> takes c6. Mm -hmm. And maybe, no, should you bring, no, you have no time for this as well. What can you make here? b3. b3. Oh, yes, b3 is the only move in this position to claim the advantage and to keep the advantage, actually. So you see, it's, uh, it's not that easy. If in one move you can lose your advantage, then uh, the position requires uh, a lot of calculation and precision. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you who are joining us late, uh, just to remind you of our current standings. Anna Zatoski is in the clear lead uh, with four and a half points out of six. Closely following is Bella Hotanashvili with four points out of six. And uh, shared in third place, Elizabeth Petz and Irina Crush. Alexander Kostinuk uh, there at 50%. Uh, uh, and it's all about tomorrow and the championship round. The pairings are going to be crew. <laughs> and there it is, uh, the pairing for the event. Right, the two Americans will face each other in the final round. Irina Crush against Anna Zatowski. And uh, I think that would be the, the well, most likely game. be deciding of the, of the title. Well, Bella and Harika too. Absolutely. That could still be uh, a game to decide the, the title. And uh, we're going to just take a short break and we'll see you on the other side of the break.
the World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. Hello everyone, I'm here with International Master Anna Zatonski. Anna just won a beautiful game today. Congratulations, Anna. Yeah, thank How you. How do you feel? I feel wonderful. I still cannot believe that I won this game. I was very tired, very tired, working so hard during this game. It was very like, almost like all my game. I won very long game. And you had the black pieces too. Black so pieces, that's and I won all my, all my games with black pieces. This is and something... I think only because my opponents like, they're trying to prove that white has advantage and uh, but uh, end game knowledge is important isn't it it is but i don't know like i already said in an interview i have i had feeling that i should not win uh, this opponent game so easily i think the i think the rook end game i think it was the rook end yeah. game I, 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 actually that's okay i was uh, not happy when uh, my opponent exchanged knights but on the other hand I was happy too because I will not blunder anything. So, because this game, this is just such a pleasure to play. So yeah. you can play like with so many random moves. You can play like 100 moves and you will still much better. Of course. You so. have the beautiful tactical idea with Rook G2. For those of you who haven't seen your game, they should definitely check it out. It's, uh, it's the just one in I guess. Case, I also calculated my uh, oldest pawn end, end game after Rook D4. So it was also just in case I calculated. Yeah, <laughs> of course. How uh, I, I noticed that you're managing your time pretty good. You spent uh -huh. a lot uh, of time uh, you thinking, started... thinking on, on one move for 15 minutes. So this is but it is a critical <laughs> moment. I think it's good time management. I, I was think... just afraid to go home and listen what my husband will tell me about it. Yeah, I think critical moments are important in a okay, game. Okay, but and not 15 start... minutes. I don't know. I just was I was uh, so like shaky and afraid to play move b5. I know there is a move in such type of position, partial recognition. I knew I played many different lines in Catalan for both um, colors. And I knew, knew there is a move B5. It's not like, uh, yeah, but still it was very scary to play a move like that. I understand. Well, yesterday you had a rest day. Can you tell us what you've done in the rest day? I met you yesterday, so I know, but okay, maybe so the I can tell us. Uh, I can tell you we were here on expedition. It was very nice, very instructive about uh, a little bit uh, to know about history. I yes. went to zoo, but Beautiful. not to see animals. Uh, I tried to buy a toy, uh, a slot. For... <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't have it here. Okay, but, uh, okay, but, but my, my, day, son right? love, my son uh, loves penguins, so I mm -hmm. bought a t-shirt for him and something else with penguins. Oh, that's yes. nice. I, I always... Did you tell him already or...? Yes, yes, I okay. sent him a picture. Like during the game, I was uh, like so okay, nervous and excited. And when uh, my opponent was also thinking for 30 minutes, I was thinking about my son, about like his pictures, what he was doing today, trying to calm down. Yeah, I see. <laughs> during That's the nice. game, and then I was like start smiling, and arbiter was like, "What happened? Why, why is she smiling?" Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Well, it, it's nice. It's nice to know you're thinking about your family. Of no, course, no, no. I, I was like trying. To, it, it helped calm me to down. calm down, to not to think, because my opponent had so many different. Uh, yes, and after thinking for 50 minutes, she was uh, thinking for. She played 40 also, also quite some like time. she played a couple like quick moves and then she starts thinking like really really for a so long time. we should uh, get rid of this myth about chess players focusing for the entire game only on chess sometimes no, this there was are exception this was exception this was for me it was the way to a little bit come down during the game yeah <laughs> okay that sounds good tomorrow you have a day off as well do you have any plans for tomorrow something that prepare like yes you? only like preparation and i like sorry i, I didn't answer a couple emails uh, and oh, okay. uh, people who i'm so sorry i will answer tomorrow <laughs> but you know what I they try. say you have an important I hope, tournament I hope so. they will forgive me like some uh, future students maybe okay <laughs> okay i'm sure they'll forgive you yes yes so focus on the, the tournament preparation and uh, like i'm playing jansaya abdumalik and she's very so 
very young active player and uh, I, I want to like you take uh, prepare tomorrow and against Irina in last round as well. Of course, that is very important. It's a good tournament. You're doing great. Um, I know I had a talk with you at the beginning of the tournament. I won't mention it for now, but hopefully at the end of it, we can we can bring it back up. I have one more question for you, Anna, before um, I let you go. Could you please tell us what is your favorite game of yours that you played? Um, one with the best memories or... Uh, my uh, probably my best uh, game I consider uh, this is Vatava Zatonsky, I think 2003, and I always show this game uh, to my students, and I think you can find it on U YouTube somewhere. It was it was a lecture in Gibraltar? I was analyzing this game, and uh, I like this game. It was uh, because it was kind of combination of uh, tactics and strategy both, and I had this windmill. You don't usually have with milk. Usually, it's like part and recognition right. the idea, but in your games, it's very rare. So I was very happy to like sacrifice queen, and it was no check. Very simple, but very elegant. And so far, even if it was 20 years ago, I consider this my favorite chess game. Wow, beautiful. Okay, be sure to check it out. Anna, thank you so much for stopping by to talk to us. I wish you good luck. Thank Have you. a good rest and good luck in the last round. Thank you. Thank you so much. Meet me at the Muni, the Muni in Forest Park. The Muni's premiere season bursting with comedies, romance, and magic begins June 12th with the Muni premiere of Beautiful, the Carol King musical. The epic summer continues with Disney's Beauty and the Beast, Chess, West Side Story, Little Shop of Horrors, Rent, and Sister Act. Single tickets are now on sale at muni.org. The Muni in Forest Park. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States, boasts the world-class St. Louis Chess Club and the World Chess Hall of Fame. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online for chess merchandise, autograph collectibles, chess campus souvenirs, and much, much more. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. And all purchases go right to benefiting new exhibitions and programs at the World Chess Hall of Fame, dedicated to exploring chess and its immense impact on art and culture. Located on the first floor of the World Chess Hall of Fame, enjoy a shopping experience like no other and become everyone's favorite gift giver. If you can shop in store, make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. In 2019, the Missouri Bicentennial Commission, along with Governor Mike Parson, approved the building of a life-size chessboard to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the state of Missouri. Dr. Jeannie Sinkfield, a lifelong patron of scouting and Great Rivers Council Board member, proposed that the project be built as an Eagle Scout project. Jeannie invited 16-year-old Andrew Dowden of Troop 6 Jefferson City to take on this incredibly important project. My name is Andrew Dowden, and I belong to Troop 6 in Jefferson City, Missouri. So my troop, um, we were down camping down at the Sink Fields, and Jeannie came down and asked, you know, is anyone close to getting their eagle or needing a project? Uh, she had this idea of the Eagle Scout Project chessboard, and she wanted somebody to kind of work with her to see what we could come up with. At the time, I kind of had a project in line, but when she brought up this idea, obviously I, I wanted to choose it because it was a lot better idea than what I had started. Prior to this project, uh, I did not really know anything about chess. Once I got into this project, I downloaded an app on my phone and started playing chess, and I took the uh, chess merit badge down at Scout Camp. This was a bicentennial chess board for the historical Society of Missouri. There were a lot of people that helped me with this project because whenever I got the pictures from the historical society to engrave onto the granite, I wasn't very familiar with the technology needed to engrave on there, so I needed some assistance with that and learning how to do it. And after all that, I'm pretty sure I know how to do it now. So to engrave those edge pieces, I went down to the Lake of the Ozarks Scout Reservation and we used the epilogue laser, me and Thomas Yang did. 
I wasn't really expecting it to end out this big, but as we, me and Jeannie were working, um, it just got, kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger, which I didn't have a problem with. I thought, you know, I can take on a little bit more and a little bit more, and um, it ended out to be a really, really cool project. So we had a ribbon cutting of the chessboard, and there were a whole bunch of people there, including the governor, um, the St. Louis Chess Club, the World Chess Hall of Fame, the State Historical Society, which all helped out during this entire project. Um, Jeannie was there. I had to give a little speech that I didn't really know I had to do, but that kind of has taught me a little bit about speaking too, so I think that has helped me too. This project, um, it's made me real proud that everyone is enjoying it. Like I, every time I go down there, somebody's playing um, and then they're taking care of it, which really makes me proud because me sinking all that time and everyone else that's helped me sinking in all that time, I like to see people use it, but I also like to see people appreciate it. Welcome back everyone, let's take a look at our standings after round 7. We have Anna Zachowski leading the tournament with 4.5 out of 6 and closely following Bella Hotanashvili just a half a point behind. Elizabeth Pates, uh, having played 7 games, gets her by remembering, re reminding everybody that Humpy Canero, our defending champion top seed, withdrew for uh, purposes of an illness and that's why we have uh, the games played column. Mm -hmm. Uh, tomorrow, Zensaya will have the bye, and uh, that will be the end of the tournament. And let's go uh, around uh, the chess arena, and we'll start with Anna Zatonsky game, because we really liked Anna's position. She played a move that we kind of frowned upon as we were on our break. We're looking at this position, and it's sort of like if it was Black's move, what would Black do? Anna has an opportunity. She wants to take on g4. Rook takes g4, and she wants to play bishop takes c6, as well as rook takes h6. So we thought, why not start with the move knight g3? If you play a5 in order to play rook a6, well, then we get everything we want. Mm -hmm. We can take, 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 and we see what we're doing suddenly. It becomes very, very visible. Um, and knight can also come into e4, attacking c5, going a, to d6. Exactly. On a good day, we get to do all of that as well. She actually chose in the position knight f4, and we kind of feel that throws away, uh, well, not completely, but a significant part of her advantage. We, lo we still like Anna's game. Let's go to the game between Alexandra and Bella. The, the, this is uh, right out of the opening, this uh, open Spanish. And I have seen the players uh, play these positions quite often as black. These bishops of opposite color positions were expecting the move queen f3, hitting the, uh, the pawn on c3. The bishop on e7 is under attack. Uh, queen e6 is our expected move of defense. And there is this, oh, this is an evil, evil cheapo. Um, Rook d7 walks into this beautiful tactic, a stunner. Actually, uh, white would win, but after queen e6, we think the position's fairly balanced. Continuing our journey around the horn, the game of Harika, this very strange Catalan, where white's really, the pawn white's pawn structure has mm -hmm. really been compromised, but she also has an initiative and active pieces. But I tell you, I like this last move by uh, Nana. Rook a7. Prepping rook b7, right? Also just freeing him, uh, herself from the pin. Right. So she can finally take on c4. Uh -huh. Immediate threat. Of course, uh, that uh, rook is in ambush to it's the It's important for Oops. Harika to not forget that knight now is hanging, because <laughs> it's been there for a while. True that. And black could not take it, but now all of a sudden they can. Exactly. And after this move, rook a7, what do you think? My, my knee jerk I reaction is black's doing okay. Good. Yes, I think so. I have to move the knight, maybe knight e5 back. Okay. It's. Rook yeah, b7, it looks give, equal. give me the pawn. Because I, I don't feel like my bishops are doing as well as they should be. Oh, wait a minute. You, I, sorry, no, knight c6. Excuse me. The, the funny part is I forgot that after knight c6, mm -hmm. I can't play. I wanted to play queen b8. 
thinking that you would have to take here and I was going to end up taking here. But I forgot that the bishop is actually still uh, hitting b8. Maybe not rook b7, maybe queen e8 here. Yeah, okay, thank you. Queen e8. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on this one. And finally, our fourth and final game, uh, uh, Arena Crush, um, as we saw in our standings, needs, well, a win. Yes. <laughs> let's, uh, let, let's make it simple. If she could win today and tomorrow she plays Anna, I mean, the first place could go to Arena Crush. For the championship match. Exactly. So when we left it, uh, a, a game full of vim and vigor, g4, g5, uh, b7, b5 on the board, a2, a3. Um, Black was having difficulties meeting b4. Right. The knight was going to have to go either to a4 and b1. Uh, a3 makes sense. Bishop b7. Oh, I thought it was okay to allow b4, but... Really? Yeah. And put the knight on a4. Okay, I kind of saw it as a target myself. I like a3, and I like this position very much. Who's getting there first with their attack? I mean, you mentioned that if you were on uh, the white side, you liked f6 and f5 and f6. Why did she not play f5 in that case? Maybe she doesn't like knight e5, so she... I, I, I don't I'm, know. I'm, not I'm sure. so happy I got in the question first. <laughs> uh, we're gonna ask the oracle that maybe, maybe just simply rolling with the punches, something like this. Almira, why didn't Gune play f5? Uh, so let's see, f5. Uh, black will play knight d5. Yeah, mm -hmm. f6. And f6 is a very Let's... important follow-up in this position, of course. But bishop f8, you know, protecting everything for mm -hmm. the moment. And uh, as you can see, once again, a very Three complex zero. position. Yes, yeah. uh, a lot of possibilities for both sides in this position. Uh, traditionally, you would continue with the move h4 here. Yeah. So you need to open a few lines. Right. Maybe rook a, b8. Of course, this is also very logical. Traditional. <laughs> Traditional, so h5. The thing is, like, it looks uh, f very scary here. Of course, the, the pawns are already so close to your king, but the computer doesn't have any emotions. So b4, it continues. Rook b4. Right. Yes, and as you can see, nothing has changed. So still so freezing. Under the sun, it's wow. still freezing. Can we try a move like g6 here? We want to open a few files, but here, after hd6, he even takes on g6. So when he thinks that everything is fine, so uh, maybe take on g7, but bishop g7, and black is no already problem. winning. Yes, yeah, because no problem. No problem. So you, ha you have to be uh, more careful, and bishop d4 is actually a very nice move. Okay, and bishop d4, I, I wanted to say, uh, oftentimes it, prov uh, it provokes e5, the move e5. e6, e5, because if you capture on f4 takes e5, uh, knight takes e5, and I don't know, that knight on e5, you're going to be provoked, maybe to trade your bishop. Uh, e5 think... is on the board, mm -hmm. uh, Almira. Yeah, I actually think that after e5, and f takes e5, black can take d also takes d e5. Uh, and after bishop e3, <coughs> let's say, I'm so sorry, here after bishop e3, uh, continue with the immediate b4. But maybe um, Gunai, after bishop d4, she provoked the move e5, wants to play bishop e3 back. So now you have to take on f4, otherwise I would continue with f5 and right. uh, the square e5 is no longer available for the knight, so e takes f4. Bishop takes f4, and now you have this very nice outpost on d5. So this was a small concession. You lost a few tempies, but on the other hand, you got this wonderful square. But let's have a look why the computer doesn't suggest knight e5 here after the um, the capture on e5. Because I, I can see now that the it's evaluation very is skyrocketing. Yes. Yeah. So uh, maybe because of this knight d5 and all the lines, and the bishop protecting the uh, the pawn on b2, so you can simply con continue with the move h4. So let's try the same line as uh, before. Maybe knight d5 here immediately. So then if you take bishop d5, it takes d5. 
B4. Maybe, um, can we play A4 here? What do you think? Yeah, trying yeah, to keep uh, the position closed. By the way, as you've been discussing the possibilities, Bishop D4, E3 was played uh, oh, by already. Ganae. Mm -hmm. uh, so inviting the line that you just showed, E5 takes F4, Bishop takes F4, and probably, once again, Knight E5. Uh, it seems to me that White's bishop on F4 is not as well placed as it was on, on the D4. So I'm pretty sure she didn't like takes with the pawn. Yes. That was probably what dissuaded her from... But when you played the move bishop E3, it, it was funny because I'm not sure I recognize F5 as a big positional th threat. So in other words, if I play rook B8, Mm -hmm. And you play the move b5, and I play b4. Now, to take. yeah, uh, knight d5, I think, is uh, wrongly timed. Why is this so uh, horrible? How are you going to react? Are you going to play bishop f8? I am. That's the plan? You're right. I'll do it as well, before. Well, there might be uh, something immediate like g6. G6? It all needs calculating. It might not work. But like f6 and then. Oh, f6 and then including g6. Wow. Well, if I have that a to g8 diagonal where I can quickly play bishop c4, uh -huh. yeah, there are ideas I get like it. this. Maybe f6 immediately, Nazi, without, uh, the, sorry, g6 immediately. G6 immediately, yes. that, okay. Yeah, that looks Without like f6? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very G6 sharp. immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this I kind of, uh, yeah. Because while you have attack on b2, my king can always run if needed, to c1, d2. Right. And I'm cocooned, cocooned. there with the bishop and the knights. Nice. Bishops stealing, and the you're knights. stealing my best lines, by <laughs> the way. Shame on you. A queen b7 takes on f7. Mm -hmm. This type of, uh, uh, again, uh, you're mauling my king, but I'm trying to, uh, to do the same. Hmm. My goodness, uh, this is going to take some serious analysis. I mean, yes, sir. Take yes. on h7. <laughs> take <laughs> on h7. Yes. I, I, King h8. What What about the principles <laughs> of capturing towards the center? Takes on h7. I never would have guessed that. How about I think that? Principles go out the window. Yes, right. Like made coming. But okay, so it's g6. Queen b7. Queen, b7. Queen b7 takes on h7. King h8. I was going to go king rook h8. Rook g7. Take and g7. Rook g7. g7. Yes, it's plus Oh, 12. my goodness. <laughs> and on king g7, do we play h8? No, on king g7, eight? well, you can play king g, queen g4 and then rook g1. Mm -hmm. Just okay. simple chess. Mm -hmm. Very simple. And we have mates on and g7 after, and g8. Right. And rook b2, you play king c1. Right. And like you say, you just get on your sneakers and start running. Mm -hmm. um, super sharp position, and clock is becoming a factor. 24 minutes to 36 minutes. How many moves have been played, uh, Arena? Uh, they've um, played arena. <laughs> 20 moves, so they still have 20 moves to go. And we do have e5, bishop e3 on the board. Takes on f4 and knight e5. And here... I think Kune can take... On e5 and go knight d5. Okay, that was my question. Uh, it's sort of like in the Alexandra game with Bella. It's a bishops of opposite color middle game. Uh, what do you think about this bishops of opposite color middle game? Well, like, let's say I go g6. Typically, just, uh, in throw. opposite color bishop middle games, whoever's attacking has an advantage. And Absolutely. Here, I, white's attack looks a lot more dangerous than black's. This h4, h5 come in. Okay, uh, is it killing though? Let's say I, um, I'm not sure. Uh, how are you going to prosecute the attack? I'm going to recapture with the f pawn, and I'm going to try to put. Oops, excuse me. Put my rook on the seventh and mm -hmm. play for b4. Well, rook take, on the c7. I yeah. take on g, or maybe I should play rook h1, queen h2 before taking. Okay, either way. Uh, so queen g6, rook h1, rook c7, uh, you're welcome to play mm -hmm. queen h2. I'm still, I'm aspiring for b4. 
Before so, I will respond with a4, by the way. Okay. Uh, uh, so queen so h2, maybe, maybe rook h4. Rook, rook f1, rook f6 ideas. There's so many ideas. Rook f1, rook f6. Because if you play bishop g7, now I will play Then h2. queen h2. And I like what you're doing with white here. Uh, but mm, We are welcome to take that. <laughs> just asking. Just, uh, just wanted to let you know. Um, boy. And how do they do in their head-to-head? -head? They've only had one game, and Bonet won that game against Irina. Wow. Uh, <laughs> We need more data, <laughs> obviously. My goodness, only one game uh, between them. Okay, very exciting game. Just want to go to the game of, oops, I think sorry. Um, Almira has some news for us. Almira. Yes, I wanted to draw your attention to the position be between uh, Harry Kadronavali and Nana Jagnidze because I analyzed it before and it just happened. So Nana has a very interesting move here. Queen takes before. I was trying to understand if uh, what would be the consequences of this queen sacrifice. So I will take mm -hmm. the rook uh, on a7, then knight b6, and then a very strong move, rook f a1. So if she sees this line, and especially, uh, sorry, after queen b5, uh, bishop f1. So for example, here, queen a8 is the only move. After queen uh, c6, uh, black is already losing because I will pin the knight here. And there is no way for, like, for you to escape because I will have bishop c7 and I will win the knight. So yes, sir, this is a very interesting queen sacrifice. Of course, it is justified because you will activate your bishops, especially if you will take the pawn on b5. So let's say what happens if you take queen after Queen b5, bishop f1, queen a8. I think you have this very interesting move, bishop d2, threatening bishop b4. And I like white's initiative here. It might not be winning, but uh, it's a very nice position for white. And what if not queen b5 here? That's I still didn't have a chance to understand. Maybe e5, yes, would be more human also. But after d takes e5, <coughs> then queen b5, can we do the same? Ah, there is a very lovely idea, e6. So if you take on e6, then I will play bishop b5, or, or the computer suggests rook b7, even with the same idea. He tries to win the knight. And also rook on a1 to a7, yes. doubling the rooks on the seventh rank. Uh, first of all, I love the move queen takes b4. I think that the queen sacrifice uh, is really uh, suggesting itself. And in a stroke, you uh, gain the seventh rank. Mm -hmm. uh, you put your passer, your, 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 your b pawn passer, into uh, play, bishop to d4 and all kinds of ways of winning material for white. And I like this idea uh, very, very much. Uh, the other reason I would be find myself compelled to play it is if in, because in the current position, uh, if I don't play the sacrifice, but I, have, I allow yeah. knight b6 and queen takes b5, I'm simply, wor I'm simply worse, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, as, as white. So uh, not only is it good, but it might just simply be necessary. forced. Uh, necessary, yes. Uh, the, the one reason I might just be a little bit reluctant, and mm -hmm. that's in the variation you were showing with queen takes b5, mm -hmm. bishop f1, I would just be, you know, thinking about knight c4, b3, you know, I don't know. I'm, I need a move like uh, I Oops, guess G five. I don't know. I need to make a luft. Mm -hmm. So a what? Luft. I don't know what that is. Look, you can luft. You. I need to make air for my king to breathe. So something like a, a back rank. I'm afraid the desirable rook C eight will just provoke mm -hmm. rook C seven. Last rank and, mates. And, yeah, back rank mate. So mm -hmm. I make luft or German for air with the move G five. But yeah. Uh, 
The one thing I don't want to see is connected passers. Mm -hmm. So you are taking on C4, D takes C4. Right. Rook A5, Rook 7, A5. Let's try Oops. to I will try to win this pawn. And your bishops are just going to carve up the position, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I I can very, very well believe that. But I love the move queen takes before. That's a great uh, queen sacrifice by Harika. And uh, as we're getting ready for uh, time trouble, we better sneak in some social media before uh, the time Take trouble arrives. This one is from Sabina. <laughs> okay. This is from our... Uh, Social oh, media manager. Is, uh, yeah, master, if yes. you will. Social media manager. So I think master. this question was asked uh, to the players, and now she's asking us, who influenced your chess careers the most and favorite world champion? Well, uh, clearly, I got caught up in the whole Bobby Fischer uh, boom. So for me, that's an obvious one. Bobby Fischer uh, and just was everything. the most influential and your favorite world champion? Mm, I wouldn't, I don't, you see, I didn't get the chance to really see Bobby Fischer as my favorite world champion because he stopped uh, after winning the world championship. So it was sort of like, I think Gary uh, was uh, the most, mm, I want to say, influential person in the world of chess. Uh, essentially, we used to joke that there were two types of tournaments tournaments that featured Gary Kasparov <laughs> and the tournaments that didn't feature him. And uh, Gary was really something extraordinary uh, in the world of chess. Today, Magnus has a completely outside influence, and I think no less a, a figure than Vladimir Kramnik said about Magnus, that Magnus is chess. Magnus is chess. So, I mean, it's like, wow. I mean, that's very, very mm -hmm. powerful. How about yourself? Jump in. Uh, my favorite world champion, definitely Magnus Carlsen. Not no one counts close. Come on. Uh, but I was going to say, most influential person is Hoi Fan. Oh, yes. okay, I was right. Absolutely. Uh, not only is she, I think, the second highest female rated player of all time, but I was lucky that I grew up with her. We're same age. She, I think she's even one year younger than me. So we played the same tournaments until, you know, she surpassed, uh, surpassed my rating by like 500 points. Uh, but I loved watching her. Um, growing up and I still she doesn't play as much but whenever she does play I love seeing her games wonderful and then Mira same question for you your biggest world champion influencers and what well, have you? I wanted to make a joke that I don't even remember what was the question because I was trying world to champions. analyze yes uh, one of my favorite world <clears throat> champions is Mikhail Tal yep. you know, well he he was such an inspirational figure for me. Well, his games were absolutely amazing, and I already told you that his personality was incredibly creative and original. He had such an original mind. And as for the people who have influenced my chess career, actually, I'm very thankful to all my chess teachers because they shared their chess knowledge and mm -hmm. chess wisdom to me and broadened my horizons. I think this is one of the most important, important things to me as a chess player. Yeah, absolutely. Coach is a really big outsized influence and I really remember... Now, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I really remember these world champions. Uh, I mean, uh, Gary gave a great deal of credit to uh, Nikitin and... He seconds? Yeah. The coaches? His, yeah, his coaches. And uh, unfortunately, the, the, the person who just passed away from the COVID... Um, Yuri Dohoyan. Dohoyan, thank you mm -hmm. so much, yes. Uh, and he, lo he loved them. Um, let's just jump back into the game, uh, games, pardon me, as Arena. She went for that, that line. There was a captures on Eva. This was the bishops of opposite color. She took, took, and, uh, well, I threw out G6 just a kind of flippantly. Uh, maybe I would wait, uh, wait uh, uh, for, to, to, to play the move G6. She did play the move G6. And I think this is where uh, H2, H4 uh, we were looking at. And we're just going to go back to this position because uh, I'm, Var, uh, Varuja and Akobian is saying, don't play the move knight E5. Like, just the, the, there's no re mm -hmm. reason, to re uh, reason to rush because in, in some ways the, the, 
the, the knight could be a useful as a defensive and just so instead just play rook b8 and b4 and get on with your business if you ever get into a situation like this uh, you never know the knight might be uh, the useful one on yeah. on f8 could also be useful in the attack with knight c5 knight a4 exactly exactly so uh, var wasn't pleased by the move knight e5 and the current position um, well uh, gune could uh, I could be the uh, could spoiler be, yeah. here. That would be also her first win in the tournament. That's what I wanted to say. Let's go to the game of Bella, Alexandra and Bella, for a moment, because we did not see, after takes uh, qu queen f3, we saw queen b1. I think that's a good move as well. Hits f5, hits... Um, hits b5, c3, f5. <laughs> that's a lot of dings, yeah. Uh, bishop... H4, whoa, uh, pause, I'm coming to uh, the moment, just a second. Uh, why did she play Bishop H4? That's uh, a confusing move. It, it, for, 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 for me as well, Bishop H4, B3 takes C4, give me the pawn. Well, I mean, Bishop was hanging on E7, and True. She, she didn't want to play Queen E6, uh, because in some lines, after B takes C, it still walks into Bishop B3, is my guess. Right. Queen takes and bishop b3. Uh, Bella was fearful, but it looks strange, right? The bishop on h4, b takes e3. Uh, I'm still facing the potential of g3. Queen mm -hmm. takes b5. Feels like Alexandra is going to be happy with the outcome that's here. It's interesting you said that you're still thinking about g3 because that's a move I would never push here. <laughs> You win a piece, my dear. <laughs> yes, but queen c6, rook d2, I might lose okay. more than a piece. Okay, sometimes yeah. uh, it, it doesn't always go your way, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm just saying uh, it feels like uh, Bella is on the back foot. She's the one who's having to hold her uh, weak pawns. Uh, once again, f5, the desirable queen c6 might cost you f5. Almira, I like uh, White's position. Well, you are absolutely right, yes, sir, because I think that Bishop H4 is a terrible mistake. A terrible I mistake. I didn't okay. find anything wrong with the, this very natural move, Queen E6, because what is White's idea? Let's say I will take B takes C3. Right. Then I act, can activate my Rook. Rook D2, you don't have the time to take the pawn on B5. Right. I think White's idea was maybe to take on f5, but here, after queen f5, let's say, if you take queen f5, you don't have the time to do so, because I can take maybe on the 4 here, and, the, uh, and there is a back ring mate. So Whoops. You, this idea will not work. So you, after queen f5, you will have to take on e7, but then I can simply swap the queens, and then to take on the four or maybe start with h6. I think this, this end game is uh, pretty equal. Yeah. So what else? After rook d2, a very simple move. Once again, bishop e5 doesn't really work. I liked um, a very human idea. Let's say bishop d1 with the idea of putting the bishop on f3. Mm -hmm. But then your bishop is not attacking on f5 anymore. Then I can play rook fd8 and if yeah. you play bishop f3 i can maybe continue with b4 because c4 is no longer available or it is it maybe ah, then you can take on it on e7 yes okay so c4 mm -hmm. ah okay this is a very interesting because i analyzed till this position so maybe i shouldn't rush with b4 here but well, what else can we do? We already activated all our pieces. You've done Bella, very well. Bella actually already played before in the, after bishop h4, bishop c3, uh, pawn takes c3, she played b4 mm -hmm. right away. So, yes, yeah, so this seems to be uh, and White's uh, idea to play c4 here, but maybe maybe I'm not afraid, you know, mm -hmm. bishop d5. So what what can we try here? Let's try uh, rook Almera, d4. J j j just to say that uh, while you've been analyzing, uh, bishop h4, mm -hmm. uh, b2 takes c3, and b5, b4 is on the board. And we're both looking at this, and we're really liking uh, what we're seeing here for Alexandra. We think that uh, 
White's position has kind of harmonized uh, very nicely. And uh, well, the first and thing I'm thinking. Take a look at their time, also, by the way. Bell is down to five minutes. Well, wow. things are. D <laughs> by the way, uh, we came on the show and saying, what could, what if? Mm -hmm. uh, things really seem to be going uh, on his way exactly at this moment as two of our nearest rivals, Bella and Arena, are, are not actually doing so well. not doing very well at all. Anna's doing okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as great as she was, but if Bella were to lose, Arena not to win, Anna wins. She wins Tournament's over. Uh, B4, uh, question, can I take the pawn? I think, yeah, and Alexander already did. So takes, I think Bella's takes. idea is to go C4. Oh, to go C4, I yes. beg your pardon, because if you take, I wanted to go queen takes b4, give up a bishop, but to... Uh, to checkmate? To checkmate along the seventh rank. I didn't yeah. see how how black could defend g7. I it's an awkward... It's a, so c4. And, she'd play and she c4. did play c4. And given the time situation, she's down to four and a half minutes with still 14 moves to go. Right. She wants to have a position where she has some counterplay where she can make obvious moves like rook d2, queen c6, try to attack. Right. Of course, rook it d2. shouldn't be working. White should have a big advantage. But at least the play is easy for black at, at the moment. And with four and a half minutes, that's... That's important. Yeah. Uh, some initiative, some dynamic possibilities, Almira, for, for Bella, or is it just a pawn? Well, as you remember, I was looking for the same idea, in, well, in a different position, sacrifice the pawn on b4 and to play c4, but the computer, you know, it's... it's it doesn't almost, believe it's, us. Yes, <laughs> not, it doesn't believe us, and it's incredibly wild in, in its yeah. assessment of this position. So, right. yes, white is completely winning, and he, it, she, proposes b5 here. The oracle. Yes, yes. the oracle. Uh, rook d2. Right. But for the moment, you don't threaten anything, as long as you will not create the ideas of well, like something like queen b7, queen a8, or queen c6. We shouldn't rush the things and play b6 here. Uh, maybe, uh, what can we do, actually? What would be the human move here? So if we play the c6 immediately, then queen c6, and as you can see, well, uh, too, yes, the biggest uh, part of the advantage disappears. Right. So I just wanted to check that we were uh, evaluating this position correctly. So maybe rook, ah, rook a6 maybe. So with the idea of playing rook c6, let's say if queen b7 here, now rook c6. And I interpose my rook. And That's the a very, very strong the idea. <laughs> I love rook a6, that. Rook a6, rook c6. Not easy to find, but no. very strong. No, especially from the perspective of the mm -hmm. diagonal. You're just closing yes. the h1 diagonal to begin with, and you're keeping f5 uh, uh, under, under guard. I love it. You know, it's funny, because you want to play b5, not necessarily with the idea of rook a6, rook c6. Mm -hmm. You want to play b5 with the idea of b6 <laughs> and b7, and let's get going. But in fact, b6 is the wrong move. Rook a6, rook d2, I... I'm charmed. I, I, I like that very, very much. It's easy, it's easy to miss. Um, besides the move b5, uh, you had also mentioned the idea of maybe uh, transferring the bishop to f3. That makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. too. That's an, it's an easy, uh, easy play, I want to say, because if you anticipate rook d2, you would love to have g2 properly mm -hmm. defended, right? So is bishop d1 uh, throwing away the advantage? I'll be scared of moving the bishop to f3 is that now c pawn has a direct Attention. way to keep going. Yeah, it, it was funny because I was on the, uh, of the mind that... Say rook d2, bishop f3, and then c3. Yeah, I was of the mind that I, w I desperately want to play e6 and e7. Mm -hmm. So, but e6, queen takes e6 is kind of like eh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a rejection, right? But if I, if you, I play bishop d1 and you play c3, then I get check and I have e6 as a, at least I'm there, yeah. right? That's very unpleasant for a black. Right, something to think, uh, and again, the time is huge factor in yes. favor of 
Uh, Alexander has 41 minutes against Bella's four and a half. I'm, I'm trying to remember. Bella's not been getting into time trouble, has not she, really. in this event? No, nope, just this game. Um, I guess after Bishop F4, Alexandra was clearly very well prepared in the opening right. and Bella took her time to make sure would, she yeah. would uh, figure out what to do in the opening. She still ended up with the worst position and she's in time trouble. So And she's a pawn down. Let's just yeah. jump to Anna's position for a moment because <clears throat> When we have left it, we left it at the position after rook g8. We really loved Anna's position after knight g3. After knight f4, we felt that she'd given back uh, a big part of her advantage. g3 takes, takes. Still, we like white's position. And here we pause for a moment and, well, we can't help but play the move knight h5. There's also a rook we, f6. Yeah, but that's the other thing we, we don't do. We want to exchange our fantastic rook. Exactly. We do see that uh, rook takes f6 and knight h5 is a nasty fork. Well, rook takes f6, you, uh, you were almost forced to play this, aren't we? Not necessarily, but I could take oh, on h3 and give up f6 for the h1. Wow. Wow. King e7. King e7. And. Hmm, okay, because rook h5 means I don't have a, a chance of of coordinating uh, any checkmating attacks. But I can just grab... h6, yes. And Bishop this is e6. two results, right? Oh, definitely. Black's pawns are absolutely terrible. Terrible, terrible. Bishop e6. The only thing is bishop versus knight here. Bishop's actually not that bad. I mean, if knight makes it to e4... Give it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Right. Uh, but if we're... Okay, so b3. Knight is trying there to head for e4. There might be just a really quick way for black to improve their pieces. Maybe rook g8. Okay. And uh, you, you stopped me from knight g3, but can I, can I uh, get to e4 in a different rook way? Rook g1 check. Hakasito. <coughs> okay. Uh, King up. to rook. I want you to play rook takes b3. Why? Let's try it, rook b1. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Don't tell her, Elmira. Don't tell her about rook takes b3. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so Anna uh, is enjoying an advantage. Bella in trouble. What about Irina? Uh, uh, because when we left it, uh, we thought h4. Ooh, she got in C3. C3. Is that a good thing for white? I wouldn't think so. C3. Because black uh, can still play B4 after A5, and now it's like white created two problems. Anchors two or two hooks. Yeah, C3 yeah. and C3. Uh, I liked, uh, I think somebody su suggested a, a A4 against my B4. And so C3 looks like an excessively cautious move that may have given Arena some, some hopes here of breaking open on the uh, queen side. Almira, mm -hmm. uh, is, is there some opportunity for Arena? Well, I'm an analyzing a very natural move A5 in this position. Right. Because I think that Irina is almost forced to find something uh, very concrete and dynamic, because okay. otherwise she's going to get mated. And I was asking myself if bishop b5 was possible in this position. Still, uh, black can play bishop a3 here. Right. Of course, the computer uh, gives uh, the evaluation that white is still better, but you cannot take on a3. So this is already a good thing, because you take on b5, queen b5, rook, rook b8. b8. Yes, with some possibilities to uh, throw in a perpetual. So I think that this position is fine for black. Okay. But then what should white play after bishop a3? And the computer suggests king a2. OK. So bishop d6 here. And uh, well, white is still better here. But I think that uh, it favors Irina, that uh, the, op the B file is already open. And she, right. she has more chances uh, for counterplay in this position than with the pawn on B5. Precisely. And uh, that move C3, I kind of like a skip of the heartbeat there. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, thank you for that. And uh, you, you had also Maybe. mentioned B4 and takes on B4 and A5. 
blasting away. <laughs> like, I, I can't do this, right? I can't do this. Mm, seems premature, but after a5, I can no, play b5 didn't. here. Ah, yes. that's, that shuts me down. Okay, but that ends the fun. After a5 here, I wouldn't take on b5. You would not? No, that looks too scary. Would Let's you play say, h5? I have to go h5. Of but course, no. I understand c3 is just I created a, another problem right. that I didn't have before, but. Let's take C takes B and then still go A4 like I have C takes, A takes, A4, right. yeah. So B3, you're, into, you're, you're, you're going for the, to shut me down, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so I, I'll play B, well, wait a minute, just a second, pause. So Queen A5, you're going to play Bishop B5, right? Are you going to do, what's, what are you going to do? I might take on G6 first. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Are you mating me? I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So e5 pawn is hanging, so I should be mating. A5. Here on we go. Board. Here we go. A5 on the board. Um, boy, uh, l l l l let me just pause our analysis. And so a5, h5, right? Yes. B4. C takes. C takes, takes, A4. A4. Okay, so I think I'm going to need B3. Even mm -hmm. though when you play B3 and I get to play Rook C3, uh, we, mo we could both be mutually happy. But, but how I would about B never play B3, so <laughs> <laughs> you might as well play Okay, it. I'll play B3. Uh, um, who's so getting there fastest? Let's take on G6 first. Take on G6 first. I Am I in time to play bishop f8 to g7? If I put my bishop, nah, I don't believe Not it. Not sure. I don't believe and it. And you don't have immediate threats, correct? You no, want to take I don't. on a4 with the queen and checkmate me, but it still takes I do. a couple of moves. Uh, sadly, you're right. It takes a lot of moves. So uh, I, I do have rook c1 option. I don't know if that helps me or helps black. I, yeah, I, rook, I find rook c1 as black to be a disappointing move because it just sort of like it, it puts the kibosh on ideas of uh, queen c2 check, <laughs> you know. Uh, it takes away a lot. Uh, by the way, uh, the nice time is ticking down, and it's a two-to-one time advantage. Well, how many True. moves? <clears throat> but they still have, they have 15 moves to go, and Gunai has 12 minutes against Irina's 25 minutes. Okay, <laughs> it, it feels like it's kind of going, cruising there. And uh, again, Irina, thanks to her victory yesterday over Harika, she's back in the mix, but she needs a win, and tomorrow is all important game against Anna. Okay, we'll keep an eye on this one. Bella, let me just check in on Bella. Okay. Alexandra's still thinking of C4. C4. Uh, Harika's game. She didn't go for the queen sacrifice. Uh-oh. That's not a good sign because we thought that that the bee pawn was going to get captured. No, Nana doesn't have any issues. Not at all. Not at all. It's just uh, she's, uh, well, she's done very well, actually. Uh, and the, 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 for those Nana's of you... I think actually better. Exactly. For those who are joining us late, there was this wonderful moment right here where Harika could have uncorked a queen sacrifice with queen takes b4 and rook takes a7, and the tables would have been firmly uh, in white's favor that these two bishops uh, fall, are, <laughs> are going to escort uh, the uh, b-pawn, I want to say, in a very, very nice way. We love this uh, uh, sacrifice. Back to Anna. What's happening? Oh, they got exactly the position we're that uh, we're, we're in. Um, and Almira, I wanted to ask you about this rook and bishop versus rook and knight ending, because it just really feels like it's a two-result game for Anna. Does the oracle agree? Uh, the oracle agrees, but I think that Anna wants to at least secure a draw, and rook h7 is the move which uh, deprives black of everything. So what can you do here? After rook h7, you can play bishop f7. That's so, self-pinning, you mean, yeah? <laughs> yes, but it's uh, it's because you want to keep an eye on c4 pawn, because okay. the knight cannot jump everywhere, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. and take everything. So knight g3, right. I want to activate my knight. Rook g8 okay. also seems quite natural to me. So. Knight f5. Okay. 
then king d6, king f6, and then knight e3, protecting. Sorry, rook takes f7 check? Now rook takes f7 here, you mean here? Yes. Mm -hmm. King of seven, uh, knight g six. Yes, let's say. Apparently, it's take. still a draw. Mm -hmm. No still way! Draw. You mm -hmm. would have thought these double pawns in this king and pawn endgame would bring you some success. Well, let's no let's way. try. Let's continue. Yes. Would you like to play before here? No, or king I, I, I want to activate my king. Of yes. course, king to e four as fast as possible. Okay, let's say king d three, king e six. Yeah, king mm -hmm. to e four. King e4, even though you have a few extra moves, but you don't have the d5 square. No. I can play king f6 here. And yeah, okay, weird. I, 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 my, my, my first thought was the king and pawn endgame. Should and if win. I go to the queen side, if I had gone king c2 mm -hmm. to b3 to a4 at the start, Let's after see, king yes. takes g8, mm -hmm. I mean. Yes, king g8, king c2. Right. I don't think that black has any other move than king f7. So right. Am I too king slow? King three, yes. King e6. Right. So king f4, king f5. It's a race. <laughs> it's a race. Yes. So king a5 or b4? Yes, yes, king yes. A5. Uh, forward, always. So king e4, king e6. Forwards. King e3, king e7, yes, king e2. So we get this position. And, uh, well, as you draw. can see, yes, I have a table base. It says that <laughs> this is a draw. So, uh, well, draw. a4 is king d3, and then the pawn By the way, king. from the starting position, mm -hmm. rook h7 check was played mm -hmm. by Anna, and uh, Jansaya immediately played king to d6, and we have knight g3 on the mm -hmm. board. Threatening in checkmate in one. With That's a big threat, by the way. <laughs> checkmate in one is a very uh, serious threat. But then so. you can take on c4. Yeah, I was about to say, I thought that Anna's idea after rook h7 check was to play b2, b3, mm -hmm. and then threaten the checkmate. Maybe uh, she has something after bishop takes c4. Okay, well, let's have a look. In the game, she has played knight g3, mm -hmm. and let's have a look, see, at bishop takes c4, because doubtlessly she has in her mind Maybe she a follow-up. Maybe she can secure a draw, bishop c4, knight e4, king d5, Knight c3, king d6, knight e4. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can go king d4, I would get, I would lose my bishop. Yeah. Rook okay. h4. Your rook h4. It's, it's not that you would get checkmated, <laughs> but you'd lose your bishop, and that would be disturbing. Yes, I get that. All right. Um, but I would have thought that this was a position that Anna's playing for a win. King d6. Why didn't she play b3, Amara? Mm -hmm. b3 was uh, a better move, of course, so king d6, b3. Yeah. And but that's why I, d I don't like king d6, even though that bishop f7 was self-pinning, but right. I still think that's the best move in the position, because you need to activate your rook somehow. But now, because the bishop is not in f7, you can take the a7 pawn. So as you can see, uh, White is still a bit better here, but your knight is on h5, so he tries. I'm shocked that white one. is only a bit better. Yes. I would have thought uh, it was more than this. So, wow, okay. Verasing, surprise for me. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, so b3, so you're saying b3, mm -hmm. king, uh, pardon me, rook, rook to g8, I mean, my desirable knight f6 mate. Is it really surprising after seeing that pawn ending isn't winning? <laughs> That yeah, well, that's shock. also a shock, a right? Shock. So I'm threatening mate in one. So I'm assuming you go rook g1 check. I'm going here. So you get out of the mate, but uh, I'm winning. Wow. Mm. There's I, not no win here. I'm just so uh, flummoxed. I I would have I would have thought that this was winning. Knight e8 check. Knight g7 check. Give me the bishop. Give me the pawn. No. I'm sure both of the players calculated this, evaluate as why it is much better. Right. Uh, yeah, so you have this a very uh, beautiful move after knight of, rook g8, knight f6. Rook g8, oh, sorry, rook yes. to, uh, uh, b3, oh, oops, sorry, b3, yes. rook g8, knight f6. Yes. I missed a beautiful move for black. Bishop f5, because of course you have to defend 
the mate. Uh, yes, in a tactical way here. And defend the rook mm -hmm. also in a tactical way. And so if you take on a7, then I activate my rook uh, via h8. Rook wow. h8. Wow. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Let's catch up with the players, however, because they went in a completely different direction. I'm just going to refresh my board. We did see knight to g3, threatening mate in one. Bishop takes c4, knight e4 check on the board. Here we were looking at king d5, mm -hmm. right? And everybody seemed to be very happy about the knight dropping back to c3. This, this position after king d6, Almera, back over to you, is mm -hmm. this... I. I still like White's position somehow, even though she's not material ahead. Um, no, it's perfectly equal right now. Perfectly yes, equal. Yes, and the, even the computer suggests knight e4 and knight c3. You can try and play on with a rook h6. Uh huh. Rook h6, uh, then bishop b6. Makes sense. King right. c2. Okay. You know, it, you're not immediately winning anything, but I think maybe in a long run you will win the c5 pound back right but as you can see anna uh, is going for the repetition and i think uh, that if you take into consideration that how much is at stake uh, this is uh, like mathematically uh, the best decision mm -hmm. but of course the draw doesn't clinch but it does <laughs> Help the Grandmaster Norm. Uh, she gets so closer. much to play for though tomorrow. She'll only need another draw. That's right. Uh, but she'll have black against Arena. Speaking of which. But uh, I think good news for Anna, Bella seems to be going down. Let's take a look see. Uh, when we left it, we saw the position of the C4. B5 on the board, rook to D2, rook to D1. So C3. Alessandra did not find rook A6, rook C6 idea, which was, like we said, very difficult to find. Well, uh, yeah, she you were, she 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 was thinking like rook d one. If uh, you give up the c file, pardon me, if you give up the d file, I'll play rook to mm -hmm. d seven. So c three. Sorry, you were about to say c three. And here, I think White can just play b six now because queen c six is no longer a threat. Exactly. I can always exchange the rooks. That, and that's marvelous, right? That's great news for. Alexandra, that uh, I'm going to include one more check, Queen A2, just to weaken your uh, last rank completely. Uh, I'm sorry. Not uh, here. After Queen C6, Queen oh, A2 check. Queen I'm not A2 taking check. On D2 yet. Okay, so uh, an extra delicate touch, and now, now we take. I take. And, and why did we here? want our Queen on A2? Because Are of you, last rank mates. And Anna is repeating, and she's looking at her score sheet wondering if she should claim or not. Uh, knight is, um, sorry, uh, uh, and continue the line, if you will, uh, Nasi. Uh, B7? B7 now. Gosh, this pawn mm -hmm. on my doorstep, this pawn on the doorstep. Rook A8, and it seems like, well. Now here, we're getting. White is losing after Queen E4. Queen E, whoa. <laughs> Queen E4. Oh, that, oh, that's an easy move to miss. I mean, my goodness, Queen E4. But actually, uh, <laughs> Nazi had a very uh, nice idea, but Queen A2 is a mistake. Queen B3 is mm, more Queen precise B3, with the same idea because you need to keep the Queen on B3, actually. So it protects the D1 square. Yes, everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the queen to b3 check and the same same idea is no longer available queen e4 with the threat of queen e1 mate, mate is met mm -hmm. by bishop takes e4 and x-ray at the d1 square whoa uh, and by the way bella went down to two minutes Yes, and she on still has C3. 12 moves to make with two minutes super double edge position but does that mean that white is actually winning then? Yes. Uh, with the move queen b3, not the yes. move queen a2. If you don't see queen e4, that's your cold shower uh, situation. Uh, check in on Arena's game very quickly, because we do have some moves in this game too. After a5, 
H5, B4. They are following our it Takes, analysis. takes. A4, trying to keep the game closed on the queen side. Not B3 yet. And the clock times? Um, Irina has 19 minutes, and Gune has 8 minutes. For those of you who uh, don't know, the, the producers put it in three-point type so that, you know, uh, premature blindness. <laughs> 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 That's why I need the youths to help me out on this one. What did you say, pardon me, about the uh, time? Gune has eight minutes, eight and minutes. Uh, Irina, 18, 19 minutes. Okay. Uh, B3, 18, there you, 18, now yeah. I can see. Eight minutes to 18. We're expecting something like B3, and, uh, well... Probably the, the computer likes white, but I'm just saying uh, I see three results mm -hmm. from a human perspective. Uh, it's very easy to blunder these positions away as white. I and mean, miss ideas from both sides, really. Uh, bingo. Got that for sure. Uh, back to Anna, because we He's were told a, re a repetition might be in store here as the two players. Have they made time control? No, they're 10 moves away. Ten moves away. Yeah, so Excuse me. she might accept the draw before time control, or if she decides to play on. Mm -hmm. But she's down the pawn here, so. Right. That I don't see it. why she would risk and continue to play. Well, I mean, again, if she was thinking that that the pawn structure is so bad from Black's point of view that it's <laughs> that she's favored. Uh, a moment ago, again, if you. If you're joining us a little bit late right here, I'm just very perplexed by the decision to give away the, the C4 pawn. I, I would have really liked to have seen Anna play the position on mm -hmm. after B2, B3. Yeah, uh, but her, I, um, her goal is to just end this secure, game and draw. Secure and the case, Grandmaster Norm and try to win the tournament with the draw in the last round game. Well, she see, we'll see if she's successful. Amira, over to you. What has caught your eye in this penultimate? Huh? Wait, she was she, reaching for her rook. rook? She Can wants she to play rook? rook h4. That's oh. what she's thinking about. Rook h4 so she can... She defends her knight after the move rook h4. She's oh. reaching for her rook. So she's going to play on, and no time, though. But wow. she has less than five minutes. Her advantage has disappeared. And to play but she doesn't off. know that. She of doesn't course. know that. She thinks that her advantage is still there. She's playing rook h4, and she's saying, uh, I stand better. Well, this is a little bit risky. Can black just move the bishop? Well... Uh, first of all, three, let's say. you have to move the bishop because <laughs> well, knight c3 also... check and rook takes on the agenda. Maybe Anna thinks that black had to move the king, like king e6. In that case, she would take the pawn with the check. Exactly. And that would be great. King going to have to come back and then uh, sure, back and can I've play won. on this position. Yeah, I've, I've won the pawn and life is good. But the question is bishop b3, right? Yes. You have to move the bishop. I don't think she's taking any real risk here, right? She's just going to go check and back. I repeat that way. Yeah, I mean, she's not taking wait, risks. King. She's just making you, making black, pardon me, find... Oh, wait, king e6 after knight c3? Okay, uh, king e6 after knight c3. Let me hit, let you hit, let me hit you with the old... But you said Ooh. you were going to play knight e4. <laughs> <laughs> ha, casito. Well, I was going to take the pawn. I'm trying mm -hmm. to win the... You know me. I'm trying to win the pawn. That's all. That's all I ask is uh, get, bishop a6. That's a different move. Same uh, idea. It, just does that justify uh, Anna's decision to play for a win? I think it does. So how would you, you if you don't repeat now, how do you play for a win? Well, I play knight c3 check. Take like king d6. Right. Okay. So uh, let me let me ask you what you want to do. Develop my rook. Okay, good. I'm glad you answered because I oh, had sneaky. a very sneaky idea of taking advantage of the... Oops, excuse me. That wasn't what I intended. Uh, taking advantage of the bishop's position on a6. I didn't like bishop a6. Mm -hmm. it, it, bishop b3 felt so natural. Bishop a6, excuse me, bishop a6, knight c3 check on the board. And... Again, um, 
not that Rook mm -hmm. A4 was any, any great shakes, just a kind of a cheapo or so a feature of the position. After Sorry. King D6, King C2, yeah. maybe I have to drop back King C7. Right. And here I'll hit you with a different check, and I'll come after this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. King to d6. Well, uh, is Anna justified in uh, pursuing? Uh, obviously, she thinks she's better, and she wants to try to prove it, uh, Almira. Well, I think that black is not risking anything in this position after bishop a6. Yes, you have uh, like a tiny, tiny advantage, but uh, with a very little material on the board, uh, I think that uh, it's very close to the draw. But I really don't understand Jean Sai's decision to play bishop a6 because indeed bishop b3 was uh, the best move in the position, sure. but she spent maybe a few seconds on making this move. Right. Mm -hmm. But hold on, I, I, sorry, uh, l let me, l let me uh, phrase it differently. I'm in Anna's shoes, I think I'm winning. Okay. Is she justified in that perspective? Because clearly she, she declined a repetition. Well, I don't think she thinks she's winning. I believe she thinks she has no chance to lose this. So why not test the opponent? Maybe she'll get a chance to win this. Precisely. Mm -hmm. And then she's justified in playing on. So for example, uh, in this exact position, give me a move for Sensaya. If you play king c7, well then she's going to play rook e6 and make a pretty decent claim that she's better. <coughs> so you're going to go king d7, king correct? D7 on the board. And, that's, and let's say I go king d2. So my idea is to go king e3, go happily mm -hmm. marching up the board. You're going to go rook b8, sure. right? Rook yeah, b8. rook b8. And then I'll go knight a4 to defend the pawn on b2. That bishop on a6 is just awful. It starts to make a strange impression, doesn't it? Uh, and uh, knight a4, knight... Well, we'll keep an eye on this one because, uh, again, if Anna could win this game, I mean... She could easily clinch. Let's check in on the arena. And, whoa, uh, we've got some moves. Takes, takes. Queen this is six. That's queen a strange move. Queen d6. Walk. All right. Why did we put our queen on d6? First, she put, moved from c6 to c7, which we also didn't the get. Good question. Yeah, no, but queen, queen d6. d6. Um, <coughs> the idea is behind that? Is that a bit that? too slow? Um, I would be tempted to plant my bishop over here, mm -hmm. maybe... Uh, I like bishop b5. You like bishop b5? Yeah. Uh, taking the h or f file under control, queen f3, rook f1, queen f3, rook h1. I do think we should include h takes g6 because okay. it's not like I'm, I'm planning to push h6. No, almost never. Right. So, and by yeah, the way... Opening uh, up either the diagonal or the file can only be beneficial. The moment you suggest that she's... <laughs> usually it's a commentator's curse, right? Where we, we say, you'll never... You never play h takes g6 in these positions. You they always keep attention. Yeah. make that move. Exactly. Okay, I was thinking that Arena was always planning to recapture with her f bomb. So let's imagine f7 takes mm -hmm. g6 just for the uh, sake of discussion. How I have do a lot we do? of options here. So bishop b5 still looks good. Right. Again, the idea of just kind of shutting down the queen side, protecting the king, as we kind of measure up black's king. Twelve minutes for arena. I feel like I might have something more concrete as well. Can I go after e5 pawn because you can't defend it right now? So rook. So if I go rook g to e1, I was giving up g5. If I go rook d to e1, I'm giving up d5. But uh, yeah, I'm. But I also feel that if I give up the d5 pawn, I'm so vulnerable. Like I start to worry mm -hmm. that maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, if you're worried about grabbing a pawn, <laughs> yeah, something. Uh, yeah, something uh, is, that, is seriously wrong. I get it. I get it. Uh, double edge precision, uh, Almira. What has caught your eye as uh, round eight, the penultimate round? Uh, lots of things happening. Yes, and I think that Alexandra 
is about to win. About to win? Yes. Uh, oh. Because, uh, well, it's plus five right now. And since uh, she avoided all the mating threats here in this position, uh, she can maybe take on d2. Okay. Because now you don't have your queen e4 here. So let's right. check if this is possible. Take on d2. Right. Queen b3 you know, as we wanted to play here. And actually what I like about this position is that here you don't have to force things, of course, with b7 because that's why Bella played queen c5 because I will take the, the rook on a7. But you can make this move. Queen, queen a3. a3. Yes, because you oh. force you force the exchange. Oh my. Of queens, yes. And then this position is uh, well, rather winning, let's say. After Bishop f2? Oh, bishop f2, you want to protect Or his. bishop e7, I, yeah, something. Okay, let's say after bishop f2, I can probably play b7 here, because oh, you no. can no longer <laughs> take f8, f8 <laughs> like 7 yes, because let's say uh, queen There's some seven. geometry going on but there. Alexandra is very good at spotting the, nice. <laughs> yes, these tricks. So. Okay, so bishop e7 in that case, yes, bishop f2. Yes, let's try queen a3. Yeah, bishop uh, yes, e7. Yes, bishop e7, so maybe now... That was my idea. Well, trade, I will trade, trade queens and should I protect? Can I protect? Do I want uh, maybe rook a6 and b7 here? Yeah, well, I, for sure. Uh, after rook d7, yes. yeah, after rook d7, bishop takes, it's, it's two result game anyway. Yeah. So let's say rook d8 here, mm -hmm. but you will always have this bishop d1. And right. The, and, well, well you B7 cannot leave the 8th rank, of yeah. course, of uh, maybe rook b8, but b7 and rook e8. So exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alexandra is doing wonderfully well. The times, I know that Bella's in trouble on the clock. How, how bad is it? Alexandra, is, remember before she, she had 44 minutes? Well, right. now she's down to 14. So she's Still, been burning time. Still plenty of time compared to her opponent's clock. But Two and a half minutes. Because uh, these are the critical moments. If she finds the next couple of moves, the game will be over. Exactly. Uh, it still feels to me like it's one of those positions that it's so easy to error. I mean, you know, because the pawn is on C3, there's back rank problems mm -hmm. for both sides. And, yeah, it, it, it's really nice for us to sit in the comfort of our studio here at the St. Louis Chess Club. We don't and feel the time pressure. And the tension <laughs> that they do. But, you know, you're, you're sitting there looking at these back rank mates for both players. And it's, it's very easy to get nervous. I mean, uh, a desirable move like rook c7, mm -hmm. for example, this seems to be very attractive. Would it, uh, queen f2. And queen f2. Black and might be winning. Just like that, yeah. if there's a turnaround, uh, and it's so simple, it happens so quickly that queen f2, queen e1, and you go, I'm losing. So, yeah. It, it, <laughs> and you don't want to take on d2 because... You don't <laughs> want to take on d2 and yeah. get the pawn any closer. So uh, it's, it's not such an easy task. But once you see this move, queen b3 check, King overtakes and queen a3. I think that's really the key, is getting rid of the queens. Mm -hmm. If she notices that rook on f8 is hanging and she has this idea, then she'll definitely convert this, yes. Exactly. You don't have time to take advantage of the back. I mean, even here, it's like one of those things <laughs> that you absolutely have to notice that you're not lost. You don't resign the game. Queen g1. Your opponent will be. <laughs> Your opponent has to resign the game. Uh, All right, Amira. Yes, yeah, so just one uh, last thought. Of course, you were completely right, because rook c7 is a very natural move. Right. Uh, I wanted to continue the variation instead of rook d2. Yep. After queen c5, rook c7. After um, queen f2, <coughs> white rook is not one. losing, but uh, the evaluation changes already. But let's say... Rook what g1. Is, Oh, uh, yeah. sorry. No, let's see what yes. happens because I found a very lovely draw here because you can still play queen g1 here, queen a1. You would think that Panic. you are winning, but you have this move g3. <laughs> <Panic>. <laughs> yes, a very lovely tactic. So after bishop d8, let's say rook c6, d1 queen, bishop d1, and then queen a4 and with a draw. 
any good grandmaster would see it right away. <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> nice. That's a very, very pretty variation. But so you can't play wow. Rook C7. I think that Alexandra might as well find this variation uh, out of necessity because Queen B3 with the idea of playing Queen A3 or Queen Not A2. Obvious. Yes, and then Queen A3 is absolutely necessary here after Queen C5. And also, once again, Queen C5 for just, uh, you know, just to really uh, go down this rabbit hole. Rook C7, Queen F2, Rook G1. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming Rook takes C2, right? Queen yes, Rook B3 C2. check, mm -hmm. King H8. Yeah, there we mm -hmm. have it. Rook no, C7. she played Rook D7. Oh, pardon me. Rook... Oh boy, rook d7. I, I was I was about to I was about to suggest queen f7 in this crazy line that uh, we're on, but I want to stop myself and look at the move Alexandra played. Rook d7. And do you know how Bella can draw here? What? No, of course not. <laughs> I don't know even know what's going on. Rook takes g2. Be serious. <laughs> Get out of here. Rook takes g2. Are you kidding me? What a shot. Credit goes to Var, who whispered that in my ear. Oh, really? <laughs> queen f2 check and queen... No, you can't take on g2. You're losing. That's just mate. Sorry. Are you sure? Excuse me. Yes. Oh, I can. white can't take. Yes. Yeah, white can't mm -hmm. take on g2. So, it's how am losing. I drawing? Oh, there's a checkmate. <laughs> yeah. No, I, the I checkmate is clear. It. Check. Wow. Here and mate on g4. That's, <laughs> That's very simple. Nice. And if you go back to h1, then mate uh, by, uh, we, we would say mate by repositioning. Mm -hmm. So you reposition the bishop with a gain oh of no. tempo. Oh no, Bella missed it. Oh no. She, wow. Well, in time trouble, uh, how is rook d7 now and queen f2? Oh, pardon me. Rook d7. It's losing for black again. It's losing. Yes. Ah, because now our rook is on the first yes. rank. Yes, the now the rook, rook take. seven takes d2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just rook f1. Oh, queen e1. <laughs> you know what? I, I want to blunder. <laughs> d7. Queen e1 check, and Bella, with this victory, could stay in the mix. Oh, yes. She needs a win or at least a draw to stay in the mix. Uh, we're talking, of course, about playing for the first place. Queen, so rook g2 would have drawn chance. the well, game. We say drawn, but, but we don't know how. <laughs> how, right? I'm, I'm confused. So rook it takes g2. It would be equal if white makes the right move after rook g2. I think white needs to play rook f1 and find some defense. But rook takes g2 would have been a shock. Yes. An absolute shock. Now queen on f2, queen coming to f2, doubtlessly Alexandra expected, uh, expected that mm -hmm. move. And you were telling me rook d7 takes d2, and this is the winning maneuver for yes. white. Because I stop your queen e1 ideas? No, because after rook f1 you still have queen e1. But I don't have to take it. But then, then you can play g3. <laughs> G3, simple chess. Yes. Yeah, then forces the trade of queens, and then it's all about the B-pawn and nothing else to discuss. Wow, wow. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Rook on D7 takes D2, and uh, Alexandra has all the time in the world to find that, and the follow-up, Rook F1, is also... Correct. Cru yes, yes. Uh, they still have 10 moves to go b before the time control. Bella has minute and 50 seconds, and Alexandra down to eight and a half minutes. Th this position reminds me of some expression that your position is, no is, is, is never so good that it can't allow a howler. And this is like you take, take, you think B7, <laughs> right? And, and you're ready to make a queen and... It's a howler. It, 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 this would actually just turn the tables completely, and Bella would be winning. And we do have the rook takes d2 on the board. Wow. Okay, that was it. That was the moment of truth. And now she needs to find rook f1. 
I mean, probably Rook G1 is also good enough. Rook G1 is also good enough. But I mean, if you see the idea, why would you put the Rook on G1 instead of F1? Because if I take on F4 and take on E5... I think I can... I'm trying to I start see. your queening. That's why I thought Rook F1 was so good, just stopping. It, in fact, I, I kind of see it as a position where black has two ideas. Mm -hmm. A queen E1 check, the big, the big threat, and queen takes F4, so rook F1. By the way, uh, did uh, is Anna still playing for victory? Yes. She, she did play king D2. She definitely win the pawn back from okay. C5, and her position has zero risk. Indeed. And she, she loves end games like this, where she's slightly better. She's going to try to squeeze and squeeze for hours. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> you you had me at slightly better. <laughs> and Magnus no risk. Car and no risk. Magnus Carlsen's made a career oh. out of uh, squeezing slightly better endings. So okay, Anna's in good Magnus shape. Magnus squeezes completely equal end games. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, I'm turning returning to the game of Alexandra for a moment because once again. Uh, Crucial moment of Bella, who's been on a four-game win streak, it was to win the game. She's in the mix, and she's got this enormous threat of Queen E1. It's so easy to miss. You, you're thinking, I've defended, I've stopped. Mm -hmm. And there she goes. Alexandra's just too good not to uh, spot that threat. And Rook F1 was always on her agenda. Uh, very nice. And we think that this is winning for Alexandra, which leaves it up to Arena. How is Arena doing? And she does have her pawn on B3. I think the queens came off in her game. Okay. So, so queen came to D6. It's more normal. Down. She uh, gave up a pawn, did Arena, uh, the E pawn, to get her bishop on this beautiful blockading square. And now with B3, maybe the worst has passed? Yes. I think Gune made a mistake by playing Queen H2 and allowing this sequence of exchanges with E4. Well, oh, by the way. She could have played Queen F3 and, and then continue the attack. Yes. I find it interesting that... Uh, Irina took with the H pawn? Yes, uh, absolutely. But E4 on the board, Bishop takes B3, Bishop came back to D3, clock's a factor? Both uh, under five minutes. For how many moves? Sorry. Seven moves. Seven but this moves. is an end game, so it feels safe for both of them. Actually, is maybe Irina's playing for for a win? Because let's say I play rook b4. Okay. And On I. Bishop b5, I want to put rook c2 and bishop e5. Absolutely. No, if you can get uh, your bishop to e5, I'm crying. <laughs> I think I just, I'll just uh, shadow your rook, right? Something of this nature? Or are you like to hmm. find another square for your rook? I guess you have a draw like that. Yeah, it? yeah, exactly, trying to shadow. But, but and by the way, rook before, uh, rook before, what you said uh, by <coughs> Irina on the board, and bishop b5, and here comes that variation with rook c2. I'm sure rook c2, <laughs> Irina played b3 for a reason. <laughs> yes. And that was uh, to be able to play rook c2, and as you... Uh, predict bishop e5. So for for arena, that will only mean a draw, a draw mm -hmm. which means for Anna, she goes... The good news for Anna. A point and a half ahead. She's, yes. she, she stays a point and a half ahead. If Anna wins, it's tournament over, everybody. Uh, she will have won clinch first place, clinched the Grandmaster Norm, won our hearts, Won forty-five thousand dollars <laughs> and all kinds of other goodies. And by the way, this last move convinces me that Anna made a very bold decision, but a right decision. The bishop just went back to g8, and that indicates to me that the Zensaya is not liking the situation. No, I think Anna actually has pretty good chances here. Exactly. She can improve her position, put the king on the optimal square, pawns, the rook, and then go after black's separated pawns. Exactly. Uh, we have uh, more pawn islands. How serious is, are Anna's chances, I want to ask Almira? Um, 
much more now because <laughs> the, it's uh, plus one already. Plus one. And okay. I managed to win the crucial pawn on c5. Right. And the computer likes uh, her position very much. She's so just it's... played king c3, mm -hmm. by the way, to interrupt yes. you. Sorry. King c3, but it doesn't change much because she will try um, to activate her rook. Let's say she can play next rook g6 and rook g7. That would be a dream yes. come true. So, but if you play rook f8 here, let's say. Rook f8. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm. you can immediately play rook e6 and win the pawn on e5. And we see? do have, by the way, a7, mm -hmm. a5 as we we're talking. Um, and I think that Anna is actually right to play on because Jean Saia was completely out of form during, the, during this tournament. Right. And She's, I'm pretty sure she's completely disgusted with her position here. She uh, doesn't think much. She, uh, she plays uh, almost intuitively here. So uh, she, she doesn't want to defend this position. That's actually the, 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 <laughs> the most, point, yeah. yes, the point, actually. Yeah. And by the way, the little by little, but I like this move very much, these petite moves, rook g6, improves the position. Why does it improve the position? A moment ago, we couldn't uh, play the desirable rook h7 mm -hmm. check, but now rook g7 is on tap. Uh, if you try to um, activate your rook, uh, you're just giving me the a5 pawn, and if you try to activate your rook or king, uh, this is actually even worse. Black so, has to watch on every move to not blunder something. Right, and once again, as we started our show, Almera said, what ifs? If Anna wins today and Bella loses and Irina doesn't win her game, Anna wins the tournament today, and, and one guess, round ahead. Guess what? Uh, of those three things, all possible. Well, one, two, three, all seem to be happening, not just possible, but even happening. Rook g6. Bella's definitely losing. Irina has a draw and uh, if Anna converts this, that's it. That's it. Wow, I like this move, <coughs> Rook g6, a lot and um, I'm sure, like you say, the cold-blooded engine uh, finds ways of defending, but if you just put your human touch on it for a moment, how does a human even go about trying to defend this position? Because I see Lots of ways for white to play for a win, and it's not so easy for black uh, to defend. Maybe America. at some point you would have to sacrifice a pawn and exchange the knight against the bishop. I mean, the runk ending is uh, your way to to get out. Right. And so maybe bishop f7 here. Let's okay. try. Yes. Bishop f. Seven. seven, yes, because I... <laughs> yeah, just a, a pause for a moment there, because you're inviting rook g7? Of course, that's uh, that's the idea, but I'm trying to uh, to hold uh, by king d6. 94 mm -hmm. check. Let's say 94 check, then I... King uh, well, d5? Or king d5, maybe, Oh, my yes. gosh. But nice. knight f6, then king e6. I mm -hmm. see, I see. So Something like this. It's you don't lose a, a piece uh, this way, okay. But it's not always easy to make this move, bishop f7. But, for example, what else? Well, that's the problem. I, it's that what else. The what else actually has been answered. After rook g6, the what else was bishop to d5. But now you can play rook g7 with a check, and the computer gives already plus, plus two, wow. a bit more. So be, because I'm pretty sure you cannot make this move king b6, let's say knight d7 check, then king a6, and maybe e4. Well, e5 is hanging for sure, so mm -hmm. that's a, a nice gobble. Um, but by the way, Bla no, bla uh, sorry, I was thinking of b4. It's like these checkmate patterns, right? B4, mm -hmm. A, B, king takes B4. Uh, how are we defending the checkmating pattern? No, but at B4 you shouldn't I'm take. I think you can play rook A7. Oh, <coughs> rook A7. Wow, okay. Once again, I would think check. that this is winning. Rook takes A7. Mm -hmm. You would take on B4, I assume? Because if you take on a7, I want to take the pawn. Yes, mm -hmm. I, no, I think king a7, and because that 
these pawns are doubled, maybe you still have some chances to draw the game, but king is seven, yes. What? Takes... Chances? I, I think it was just dead, 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 Amira. This, the, the, this configuration of the mm -hmm. knight and the pawn means you can't touch me. <laughs> you know, you, you, you'll have to play king to d6, and by that time, I'll go psh, around and around and I'll grab e5. Mm -hmm. uh, but bishop d5 on the board, uh, clock times again, sorry. Uh, uh, Anna's down to two minutes, and jean has five and a half minutes. Five and a half to two minutes for but how But they only moves? have two moves to make. Okay, so nothing, nothing, nothing. But I think Anna is looking at this position and telling herself, don't blow it, don't blow it. I've <laughs> got this, I've got this. And why doesn't she have it? She, I think she does have it. Practically speaking, I, I would think this is over. For black. Wow. Uh, well, she's on the verge. But if we of switch to Alexandra's yes. game, there was a moment where it looked like Bella Queen. was saving the game again if she played King H8. She played King F8. Which oh, is hold on, hold on. We left it just here. Rook F1, Queen E2, Bishop D3, Queen E1. I thought we were getting in a G3. Mm -hmm. I think it was the G3 move that killed it. She didn't play it. B7, rook B8, queen A2, king, you're saying king F8 was bad? Yes, she had king H8. King H8. And what's the diff, for example, if I go all the way down? If you go queen A8, yes. I have queen F1. And bishop F1. And D1 queen. Okay, and then I make a girl. <laughs> oh, I take a rook, sorry. And then and you then go back. And I go bishop D8. And oh no. <laughs> And your only move is king g1 and the perpetual check. That is crazy. What a variation. But with king f8, that doesn't work. Now you can because play. Because the king would be here and I would yeah. have queen d6 yeah. check. Oh my goodness. So king f8, terrible move, and queen a8, and she did it with two minutes on her clock. Mm -hmm. Okay, so queen a8, what did Bella have in mind? Uh, she probably thought either of those moves were losing. So, yeah, okay, then in that. Now it's definitely now a Now it's definitely a loss. Well, Bella's loss is Anna Zatonsky's gain as um, one of the three things that she <laughs> needed to have happen happen. And now let's just turn our attention quickly to Arena <coughs> because I think we are seeing what we were talking about the shadowing of the rook. No, we didn't. She, no, she Kunai didn't. played rook e1, so there is Sorry, no bishop there's e5. Sorry, there's no bishop e5. Maybe Kunai is trying to achieve more than a draw. So, for example, after rook here? No, I guess now I have to go rook c1. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Accepted. And after rook here? Oh, actually, there's rook d3. Rook, ah. Going after the b3. That, thank you. That clears some cobwebs because, yes, this is a, a much better way of defending uh, the b2 pawn. And, okay, so bishop c6 on the board. Clocks, one minute to One minute each, to one minute. Four, how many moves? Or four more moves. <laughs> well, this is a, a key moment, I, I want to say. Uh, I still feel like it's very easy to blunder the game away. Mm -hmm. I mean, very yes. easy, right? Let, let's look at Alexandra's game. She's winning, but it's just a funny position because we might see four queens on the board. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. How did the... Okay, we left it here. Queen, queen. A8. Queen, <laughs> take a rook with check, check, check. Uh, yeah. And we've got queen g1. Mm -hmm. That's our, our key move. So something like king h5, which is on the board, we could make a queen. Yeah, how many times do you see four queens <laughs> on the board? That's, that's not a common that's occurrence. It. No, how fun it would be, though, if we could play with four queens. You know, Twice as much to calculate. <laughs> yeah. Victor Korchnoi made the observation that uh, two queens on the board aren't so powerful. Mm -hmm. And his argument was is that they control so many squares that they double one another. So sometimes, mm -hmm. for example, I have a queen and two rooks, 
and I'm at that the, the, the two rooks are even mm -hmm. better than the second queen. I, that the second queen isn't as powerful as the first queen. Interesting perspective as, well, we here you have it, queens four queens. <laughs> it is the queens of chess tournament, right? <laughs> I mean, it's only fitting. It took us eight rounds to have four <laughs> queens on the board, but uh, definitely queens of chess. Let's just, let's just take a picture right here. <laughs> Somebody do a, a screen capture. <laughs> uh, in Anna's game, she did play b4, and she's going for those checkmate patterns that you were talking about. Absolutely. And, and they just reached move 40, so she's going to take king b4, and then... After rook a7, king takes b4, rook a7. What I, I wanted to say was rook takes a7, and I'm going to push the pawn to a5. I can go knight d7 here. Win oh, the sorry. Uh, exactly. Can you take on a7? Oh. Uh, in Anna Zlatansky's game, uh, we're anticipating Anna playing king takes b4s, where yeah, I see on the <laughs> live view uh, there, we had uh, the king takes b4 is on the board, and she's threatening mate in one. And uh, I saw that the table base, after rook a7, a trade of rooks, because again, you, know, you, you have to defend mate. So the trade of rooks and the pawn goes to... Nine, I can start with knight d7 and win the pawn. Because on e4 I have knight f6. R right, and I'm sitting there saying I have no interest in the pawn. Oh. I just, I, I, want, to, I want the configuration where your king is absolutely stuck. So I put the king here and then <coughs> Uh, I'm going to play e4. And then and you're going to bring the king over and win with the king. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and by the way, I can play e4 maybe at the very start. So rook takes a7, king takes a7, e4, drive the bishop, I don't care, just away, right? And then I get this. Uh, is this, is this a table base uh, or is it... Unknown. <laughs> Unknown. Okay, it's not table base. But it sure looks, to my eyes, good enough. This looks like... Uh, There's one problem. Please. Black has an idea. Once your king is far enough, I can go bishop g6 and bishop takes e4. Okay, so uh, you wait, if, if you essentially. If you play king d2 for some reason. Yeah, so... Or yes, as soon once as you go I, to g4. This is, what I, this is what you're saying, right. I can take on e4. Gotcha. And then... Yeah. You're, you're, you're in time. So I don't, I don't <coughs> win it with the ABCs. Mm -hmm. So it means that I don't have to play E4 then. I'll play here, uh, wait, here, wait, and let me play it without E4. I want to bring my king all the way around the board. Yes, I think you should keep your pawn on e2 or e3. So and we have a resignation as, wow, the streak has been stopped. Four in a row, yes, no she, draws for Bella. Yes, she had such a good m opportunity today to play rook g2, but Alexandra uh, defeated her, and now good news for Anna. By the way, we talked about the roller coaster ride that Arena Crush has been on. I think uh, Alexandra <laughs> has been on even a greater roller co coaster, mm -hmm. right? Because she defeated Humpy, who yes. withdrew from the tournament uh, due to illness. There went a point. Lots of decisive games going on in Alexandra's uh, tournament as well. So uh, our congratulations to Alexandra. And <clears throat> Anna's delighted. <laughs> Everything's going Anna's way so far. Right. Arena's not... Wait, let's look at Arena's game. We have one Arena. pair of rooks have been exchanged. And there is a missing B2 pawn on the board. Hold on, who's winning? Who's better and why? It's probably Just a second. Uh, so when we left it, we did see this move coming from afar. Rook, but we thought rook D3, rook, rook D3 was the right approach. Time trouble making fools of us. Rook came, rook e1, oh, mm -hmm. nice move. bishop e5. Gune may have missed this. I think certainly <laughs> Gune missed uh, the move, bishop e5. That pawn on b3, 
does a great job at uh, giving us a back rank mate. So she had to, uh, and well, Arena, why isn't Arena winning now? How? Uh, take a pawn. Take a pawn on d6? Yeah. Bishop, bishop d5, and I will be taking your pawn as well. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> Just a second. I, I was hoping it three. would be play on one goal. <laughs> Maybe uh, you have a5. Okay, just so, well, I, I'm, I'm so excited that I won the pawn on b2. <laughs> I think I, I got myself too excited there. Rook c, no, rook c6, rook e5, what am I thinking? That can't be right. So I have to play bishop takes d6, right. and you'll play bishop to d5. Mm. Darn it. Bishop a3 is interesting. Mm hmm. Well, bishop a3 was the only, but you, a5, I'll get rook a, rook c5, but you do have this move rook f1, mm -hmm. and that might be just enough to draw the game. I, it, it, it appears that the players have made time control. Yes, I think everyone okay. has reached time control. Whew. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll calm it down just a little bit. What about Harika's game? So earlier we didn't get a chance to talk about it. Uh, Nana was completely winning. She had an extra pawn, a great position. I saw with the engine during the break, it was minus four at some point. Minus four. But now it she's became... trying to win the rook ending with an extra pawn, but I'm not sure it's winning. Okay. So I think Erika <laughs> has saved her game. Ah, king to d4. So it'll be three against one. Well, I do have this massive threat of check. <laughs> and taking, if I take the f5 pawn, I feel like I am, I'm okay. Uh, somehow I'm okay. Sorry, you mm -hmm. were about to say, Nasi, that uh, this might be drawing now. Yes, uh, Harika has played the end game really well. Bluff needs to play f4. And then there's king takes d5. Exactly, a great active rook, and suddenly counter, counterplay. Yeah. Where the this is definitely not what Nana needed to do uh, for counterplay to allow the counterplay there with the pawn. So Harika uh, fighting her way back. Anna Zatonsky, uh, just your knee jerk. Uh, we've been looking at this pawn, uh, position mm -hmm. with the pawn on e two. We could also put the pawn on e3, so it's on a dark square and la-da-da-da. But if I get the pawn to a5, you think Anna's winning? Yes, I think so. Just nice. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's some setup where, where Black can defend that ending. Right, and what we're talking about, of course, is rook takes, king takes, this exact position where we just get <laughs> this king kind of stuck, this knight and pawn combination keeps Black's king in a box, yeah? Like it's kind of a, mm -hmm. an invisible sphere. And when Black is just moving the king perpetually, White moves the mm -hmm. king around. Uh, it could be uh, something very special uh, for Anna, but Almera, you're with a guest in the studio. Uh, thank you, Yasser. Alexandra is in the studio with us. Welcome, Alexandra. Congratulations. Well, your tournament is very hard to watch for me, especially. It's a, it's a real roller coaster. Yes, it is. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, your game, we will not an analyze all the games here, but let's have a look at this position. Uh, your move, Bishop B4, is uh, quite a rare move, but I think by transposition you can get to those positions. Well, uh, probably. I didn't know that this uh, line uh, would happen because there are so many uh, lines in the um, this open uh, Rui Lopez and uh, she didn't have any games. So I just saw that there was a game actually in St. Louis between uh, Shankland and Sivian, I think, with this bishop f4, king h1, and okay, uh, I thought that it's relatively fresh idea. Of course, it should be about equal, but uh, unfortunately, I mean, that's nowadays theory, so. So your opponent surprised you, but you surprised her. Well, she didn't surprise well. because I was expected. Uh, I was expecting the open Rui Lopez, but I didn't know which line yes. because there are several pretty <laughs> drawish lines, and you're kind of trying to uh, come up with an idea in every single one of them. So this one was not 
Okay, that was just one of the possibilities, and uh, yeah, so queen c8, I didn't look at home. I Maybe didn't. small inaccuracy, what did you expect in this position? Well, I don't know, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that uh, in this uh, game between Shankle and Sivan, king h8, I think, was played. Mm -hmm. There was another ge game with queen b6, mm -hmm. uh, which is also quite inaccurate because of bishop g5 and then f4 and g4. g4. Mm -hmm. But queen c8, I mean, at least it, it guard, it's guarding the square g4. And even though g4 is still possible uh, after bishop e7, but I thought, um, I mean, you guys are, um, I'm not in this kind of, um, like, um, uh, right now, mm -hmm. my conditions are not the best one to go for such complications. So we decided to play four. By the way, we switched the computer off because mm -hmm. we decided yeah, to analyze kind of. this game because it was very highly complicated from a human perspective. I wanted to know what Alexandra thinks here. So after queen c8, you took bishop, bishop b7 and you went for the typical idea. Yes, because she was, it's clear that she's going to play d4 and I decided to like prepare the counterplay on the a file after that. Mm -hmm. And uh, here it's at every moment uh, there is some kind of choice which is which makes difficult for black to play. Rook a7, for example, rook d7 mm -hmm. was possible and I was like hesitating whether to take just on d7 and take on d4 and okay, it still should be a draw but I'm kind of easier to play for me. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another possibility but okay. But d takes c3, yeah, I was thinking for a very long time. I was choosing between queen b1 and queen f3. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see anything because it, the idea is that after rook d7 there is bishop f5, or mm -hmm. at least. Uh, but of course, rook d7 is a mistake, and I didn't see anything after queen to e6, mm -hmm. queen f3, yes. queen e6, and uh, well, then depending on what I do, c4, bishop c5. That's why I played queen b1, and she surprised me with bishop h4. I didn't expect bishop h4 after queen b1. Yes, mm -hmm. yes bishop h4, I didn't calculate at all because I was thinking only about. Queen e6 mm -hmm. instead. Uh, yes, b takes c3, rook d2. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that if I take on f5, uh, she takes with the queen, mm -hmm. yes. And I take, she takes, I take, I mean, and then there is rook f4, mm -hmm. and rook e8 doesn't help. That's why after um, <coughs> rook d2 in this line, rook just there, it's, it's a draw. Mm -hmm. So after queen e6, b takes c3, rook d2. Mm -hmm. I was considering h3, move. h3. Mm -hmm. preparing all these ideas with uh, queen b5, rook e7, and bishop f5. Well, still should be a draw, but bishop h4, somehow it surprised yes. me. And then she played before. I don't know whether she went for this pawn sacrifice or she simply blundered because after c takes before, c mm -hmm. takes before. Okay, queen takes before is possible, but I think even stronger is bishop b3. Mm -hmm. Well, at least I was going to play bishop b3, king h8, rook c1, and then queen b8, rook c to c7. I didn't see anything for black here. I mean, well, it looks very convincing. Yeah, yes. well, back rank is mm -hmm. very weak and it's always scary, but uh, rook g7 is coming. Mm -hmm. So she played c4 and I thought, okay, I have an extra pawn, my position should be good. And I like, spent a lot of time here and okay. uh, I, I went, yeah, b5, although I'm not sure, because there were other moves like queen c1, queen a1. I mean, many moves that I was considering just to protect the square on uh, d2. Mm -hmm. Even instead of b5, I liked at some point rook d1 a lot, but then I, bishop of two she plays, and somehow I didn't uh, know what to do. Yeah, thing. I need mm -hmm. to go away, I don't know. But after rook d2... It's hard to resist a b5. Yes, I mean, b5. you feel that it should be winning. Of course she has counterplay, rook d1, c3, and I thought that I should be winning. And I have a lot of time, and I thought, okay, I will try to... Uh, figure it out. But then after queen c5, of course, I missed it completely. And then this idea queen f2, queen e1. And well, I decided to play it safe, but apparently I missed something, right? Uh, okay, but queen a2 was another option mm -hmm. that I was considering and I liked a lot. King h8, rook a8. Ah, rook a8. Yes, so mm -hmm. the same idea, like trying to... But then bishop d8 she plays. Mm -hmm. And I was calculating here, like something like even b7. Um, queen f2, rook g1. I mean, just not to blunder anything, you mm -hmm. know? And, I mean, I liked it too. 
Um, I don't know what is evaluation, uh, and but no, it's let it, let it, But okay, but I decided that queen d rook d seven is mm -hmm. is safer. But apparently, yes, I'm yes here, yes here, we at least I can tell you because in this position mm -hmm. we saw that after rook d seven, uh, black had this incredible. Uh, possibility to save the game, or at least to stay in the game after rook g2, because you cannot that take the That would be very rook, yes. unfortunate. That, I mean, <laughs> that would be very unpleasant to see on the board, of course. Yes. Yeah, so, but and Bella, of course, I shouldn't miss such possibilities for my Bella opponent. Was in time pressure here. Well, she liked her plan with queen e1, but I don't think it's so dangerous because okay, I I captured mm -hmm. c take. Here I was somehow choosing. I couldn't. Couldn't choose what is stronger, Queen B3, King H8, G3, mm -hmm. and uh, play in this position. Um, well, because she needs to retreat her bishop to E7, for example. And then I play B7, Rook B8, something like this. Yes, but uh, she cannot. Yes, yes, this. Queen E2, Queen G4. Yes, that yes. was I was missing, mm -hmm. and that's when I saw it. I thought, okay, no, it's not, it's not the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, because I was uh, at first considering it. And that's why I played rook f1. Mm -hmm. I mean, but in this position, <laughs> you're always afraid to blunder or something, queen e2, because you always wonder whether you have to include this check or not uh, on a2, on b3, uh, whether you need to play b7, and you try to um, like evaluate all those um, complications. But OK, I went. And you don't want to anymore. <laughs> I don't. I mean, after yesterday's game, when I just completely, you know, uh, uh, gave away a huge advantage. You always feel like you, you can do the same in the next game. So rook b8, yes, here. But I didn't see what she can do. Uh, no, no, this is completely mm -hmm. winning. Uh, okay, it's scary. Yes. Four queens on the board. You're always afraid of, you know, blundering something. But okay, I, yeah, it's quite safe. It was queen g1, and. Uh, well, it was quite a thriller, Alexander. Yes, Thank you very much for, for all of us. <laughs> well, tomorrow is uh, the last round of the tournament. That's a good news. And yeah. well, what are your feelings uh, so far? Well, unfortunately, I've uh, given away too many points. I mean, this tournament, I knew that, OK, uh, two tournaments in a row is quite uh, physically demanding already, but I got I mean, sick, and I needed, you know, to to play with this cold, and it so of course didn't help. And uh, but again, I think I'm playing here uh, better than I played in Cyprus, and the quality of the game uh, of the games are sometimes are very good. Of course, this whole situation was uh, taking away my whole. And like the whole point, it didn't help. I mean, it uh, took away some energy, not even physical energy, but emotional ner energy, and it, it matters. Uh, but again, uh, as long as I win, uh, at least, uh, I mean, even after losing, but it's, it's already good. But because in Nicosia, for example, out of 11 rounds, I won only one. And here, it's been already <laughs> quite a few. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. And uh, indeed, our congratulations. We thought it was a thriller, uh, yes, definitely. And uh, well, Alexandra's games have been great. I have enjoyed watching uh, very much. Uh, breaking news, however, is that uh, Anna has played the move E2, E3. And I must say, let me say right away, that I don't see the problem with this move. But uh, VAR is telling us. No, e3 was not the right move. Did you yes, understand so uh, why? The only way to win was to play knight d7 and take that pawn as soon as possible. Do it the right lines away. That we're looking at with pawn on e3 and pawn on a5 and the king run. Really? Engine says it's, it's a draw. Really? Yeah. Uh, could you, okay, well, let's see why. e3, king, a4, king, a5. Let's mm -hmm. just make some moves for black, right? You don't mind. Sure. And uh, we'll just. I'm going to. I'm going to bring the bishop back and forth. Uh, make a pretense that I know what I'm doing and I don't. And I'm just going to bring my king all the way around, right? <laughs> so at a certain moment, I'm going to threaten to take this pawn. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we get to the position where the engine still thinks it's even at this moment. So there's a way to. Hold this. At some point, 
And there we have a kind of a bishop back and forth by Zansaya. So, yes, sorry. Excuse me, go ahead. So instead of allowing you to go F to F5, yes. I would play bishop G6 in this position. So okay. bishop to the other side. So we're going to go here instead. Mm -hmm. I'll go king here, and bishop you go G6. bishop G6. King G5. I'll go king here. Bishop H7. And when you go king F6, I play E4. Okay. Which is fine, right? But you can't take that pawn because I have king A6 and the pawn ending is... I strong. agree. I'm not going to take not even that pawn, pawn ending, sorry, knight A4. but I'm going to go here and I'm going to take this pawn. Okay, king, so let's say bishop G6. I stand. Bishop to G6, you're standing. And bishop E8. Wow, you're telling me that this, I can't zip No, I can't you? even give you that pawn. You so can give me the pawn. G6. <laughs> okay. How do I, you improve? I already did, my dear. I <laughs> want to, I'm so proud of myself. Just a second. Let me, let, let me pat myself on the back. And you're telling me I can't win this position? Wow. Wow. I'm, uh, I must find, uh, I must say I find it a little stunning. Yes, only way to progress from here is to win the e4 pawn. But right. as soon as you win e4, you lose the a5 pawn. Right. And then we know that's a draw. Exactly. So I, so I can't get you in a situation where, let's say, my knight is on c6 and your king is absolutely, absolutely stuck. And I, I can't chase your bishop away from this pawn? Mm. Wow. <coughs> okay, that's, that's deep. That is really... Uh, stunning for me because I I would have thought mm -hmm. that this would have been a, a win. You know, I think a long time ago, if this game was played before the engines, people with black pieces here would just resign. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> or, or or adjourn and yeah. then find uh, what's going on. Uh, but so you're saying from the very start, it was important to play knight d7 check and knight takes e5 as soon as possible. Um, because I think the question. Was actually already on a7. Yeah, we, well, so the question yeah, was, for example, we, after rook a7, if, I was, if it had been in my mind mm -hmm. that I need to win the, d pawn, uh, the e5 pawn, I might have started with rook d7. But I'm not required to take here. I can go, let's say, bishop g2. Uh, a4? I think. You're about to take. <laughs> You're about to take. Hmm. Maybe you could play e4 if you want. I don't know if you want to play e4 or not here. Yeah, the making a pawn move in an endgame is always yeah, so yeah, risky. Yeah, yeah, very, very uh, tough. But okay, let me just refresh my board because this current position, I thought Anna was cruising to victory. Uh, let me do it. Okay, so. The, we've just seen bishop a2. I assume we're going to see bishop d5. Now that I've kind of got a little bit of an understanding about the position, previously when I play e4, you're going to sacrifice your bishop. At the right time. Yes. Exactly. And so uh, the idea is that you're going to put your bishop on the g6 diagonal. So whenever I get close to the pawn, uh, you're going to play... Once you go king f6, yeah. I'll go e4. So once I, so I have to make a, a move, e4, wow. So this, your, your, your bishop is trapped. It's funny, yeah, I if I could have played, if I could play... I wonder if it's better to have the bishop in front of the pawn on c2 instead of passive h7, I'm not sure. Okay, so you could have had that any time yeah. you wanted, by the way. You could have had your bishop in front of the pawn. Mm -hmm. And e4. And e4. This might be wow. better because bishop on h7 is almost trapped. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Almera, I mean, you have studied your end games uh, like a good student <laughs> your whole life. Do you find this endgame as shocking as I do? Because I got to tell you, I always thought that the dominant king and knight overwhelmed the, the passive bishop. Uh, well, I agree with you, yes, sir. But 
uh, once again, the computers, they have changed uh, our prison, uh, the, the way we look at the positions, mm -hmm. because we know that there are so many <laughs> defensive resources available. But I wanted to understand the reason uh, behind uh, why E3 changes the relation completely. Uh, the computer says that, first of all, after 97, uh, Anna missed a win, because it was a completely winning position, because you cannot play E4 here, because you don't can't have the bishop on d5 here, so you have to have it on the h7, g6, because after knight f6, you win the pawn immediately. So mm -hmm. first of all, Anna missed a clear win in okay. this position. So here, after e3, I wanted to understand what does it change if we play, so uh, let's say if we play bishop, bishop a2, a2 two, one, yes, yeah. and knight d7. Right. As you can see, the computer hesitates, but he goes for a very interesting defense. I didn't even think about it. So king a6. Give me the pawn. Yes, give him the pawn. And now c5. <laughs> okay, this is not going to happen. <laughs> of course, this is not going to happen. But this will help us understand what are the positions that we are aiming for. Right. So let's say king a5 here. And, and then C4 if you play check. knight c4, then you will go king a4. E4. And we need, yes, we need to understand this position. So e4, bishop b1. Let's go. Then I'm going bishop. to stop you, yes, from uh, queening. And I will play bishop f5. So as soon as your knight is moving, I will take the pawn on e3. So can we actually win this one? So let's say knight e3, right. bishop to where? Bishop b6. Yes, I think I need to. Uh, to keep it here, and king d6, so where to king bishop g8. I do understand that this looks incredibly dangerous, but I think, yes, that actually black can draw this. There is wow. no way, yes, for you to uh, kick my bishop from this diagonal or to close on the diagonal. If the bishop would be here, let's say, why we are keeping the bishop on, on g8, let's say, yes. if I would go on a2, then knight d5, of course, is winning. And so then uh, bishop g8 e6. is actually essential. So when I saw <coughs> this this line, the sequence of move, at moves, at least I, I now... I can understand why the computer evaluates this mm -hmm. position as uh, well as drawish. So, but of course, uh, the human perspective is completely different. So let's have a look. Uh, Jansai actually played, played e4. E4. This is the position on the board. Yep. Okay. So, but now the computer changes the relation completely. But what happens knight now C5 after is knight c5? That's on the board. Is she's uh, winning the pawn again? So yes. So if you play. Bishop d5 here. Let's I think black is in tooks on here, mm -hmm. maybe king a5. Okay, yes, king ah. a5, yes, and then if you move your bishop, bishop well, we g8, take the you will take the pawn. Okay, so I think that, uh, well, e4 is a terrible mistake, but can you protect the pawn from b1? Once yes. again, how, how will you progress from this position? If you will play king a5, then maybe bishop then c2. Bishop mm -hmm. c2. So let's see if that we changes. King c3, or... king d4. Mm -hmm. King b3, king b6, mm -hmm. king d4, king, king d4. d4. But then if we go Ooh. for the same line, we know that we need to go for king a5, king a4 here. But mm -hmm. I have knight takes e4 and knight c3? Mm -hmm. Or... I don't know, let's say bishop c2. Knight c3, mm -hmm. you don't get your king. Knight to C3, the desired a4 square. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like king b6, you have to bring now your king closer, but I agree with you completely. I think that uh, a lot of players would have resigned with black already. <laughs> so uh, Jansai is still defending this position and she played the, probably the only move, bishop b1, to stay in the game. Wow. And Anna goes for a4. Okay, let's check. a4, so bishop c2. If she a5. goes for a5 right now, mm -hmm. let's say we wait with the bishop. And then mm -hmm. king comes over. And then maybe the king, king c3, simply you don't have the square anymore, so you will have to play bishop a2 and knight e4 and win in the game. We're <laughs> back to uh, a win. Well, we played the game of what ifs, and the ifs are all coming uh, to fruition for Anna Zatonsky as she appears to be winning a very, very difficult and tricky ending. 
Irina Crush, drawing. Irina is drawing. Bella already lost. And Bella has already lost. And just to uh, remind everyone, if Anna wins this, whether Irina draws or not, she will make a Grandmaster Norm. That's true. Absolutely. And she clinches she... the tournament victory as well. Exactly. All right. Well, uh, let's just take a short break uh, as we as uh, the penultimate round uh, comes to a close. By the way, we did have a, a sorry to Harika's fans, of mm -hmm. course, that uh, we haven't been picking up on her game as uh, well. Nana's still a pawn up, uh, but we think closer to a draw than a win uh, for um, uh, in going on. Okay, just by the way, uh, how close is Anna to winning? We just had A5 check. A5 check. Well, let's just pause. Let's pause our break for a moment. A5 check. Well, we got to go back with the king. Let's assume king back to A7, and we, we're coming to pick up the E4 mm -hmm. pawn, yeah? <clears throat> well, hold on. I, wh wh tell me how I'm winning this. King C3. It's like King, king A8. A8. Oh, you have King B2 ideas, maybe. Does that work? You're winning a, a king yes. and pawn endgame. Ah. The split pawns. You're not in the Before, square. That's very nice, yes. Oh, the bishop is actually trapped on the B1 square. So maybe it was oh. better to have it on H7. <laughs> <laughs> we're discovering things about this ending because uh, we're it, it, kind of role reversal of the bishop being trapped on, instead of being trapped <laughs> on H7, it got trapped on B1. B1. So a5 check, we're anticipating king a7. And now, well, in that case, it means that we can play king b3. Yes, if it, if we're going to hunt, too. yeah, if we're going to hunt down the <coughs> bishop and trap it, then we can do it with king b3 and king b2, so there's no escape with mm -hmm. bishop a2. Even the escape, I, I agree, I might, might be losing. So very good decision by Anna to not repeat moves earlier. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. I was arguing her case, and her case was, uh, I, I, I can't be losing this position, and I can maybe win. But I, I will say, Jansaya has been playing really fast. In this endgame, it's hard to figure out how should Black hold the draw, but she was just playing intuitively and walked into this lost endgame now. Yeah, I, I, I think it had a lot to do with the fact that she's been unsuccessful mm -hmm. in the tournament. She probably felt, okay, you know, this, almost anything I can do draws, and that was not uh, the case. It's never the case. Never the case. So we're expecting king a7, king b3. And king c7 doesn't make any difference because we can still play king b3 and there's no king d6 simply because of a6. Exactly, and that's a, that's a coronation just to put that on the board there. So if we, and king a7 is on the board by the way, but king c7, and if you thought, well, I'll go and capture your knight, I have, different, I have uh, new ideas, yeah. uh, and you're not even in time to get to a8 anymore as it's, a girl. So king a7 is on the board and we're expecting this move king b3 ensnaring the bishop and the idea is uh, the threat of king b2 will induce bishop d3 will take and e4 and black's king is not able and she's done it king to b3 to stop the e6 pawn and she king b3 the idea. she sees the idea because this wins quickly. If she went for the e4 pawn, that's still another 50 moves to the <laughs> Right, exactly. That was what I was thinking, that we might be here for another 50 moves. But uh, this is not 50 moves. This is a, a past e pawn. So king b3 on the board, and regardless of whether the king moves or the bishop comes to d3, the threat is king b2, uh, forcing the bishop to d3, take it just snap it off and then win this king and pawn endgame with uh, the passers. <coughs> Whew, what a game. And what an instructive endgame. And, and once again. again, I mean, uh, for Anna Zatansky, 
a tournament victory is clinched. Grandmaster Norm earned earned forty five thousand dollars. Cairns <laughs> Cup, uh, Cairns <laughs> Cup champion. That you can't take that away. That's that your your name's engraved on the trophy. And I mean, who has done that? One round before the finish, right? In such strong tournaments, that almost never happens. Exactly, and I mean, we were thinking the finish tomorrow could well have decided everything. And Arena, what well, we know the history between these two great mm -hmm. champions, uh, Anna and uh, Arena traded between them. They have a dozen <laughs> championships. They have, exactly. So a yeah. yeah, so it's sort of like Anna says, you know what? Let, 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 let's Let me make, finish this today. Yeah, let, let, yeah, let's make tomorrow not that important mm -hmm. yeah, a, a day. And what uh, our congratulations, what can we say? Fantastico. Because uh, I think uh, Jensaya is just now fully aware mm -hmm. that bishop d3, knight takes d3 is an issue. Yeah, maybe she missed that and she also thought that she was going to give up e4 pawn and then maybe take the a-pawn and still draw. Use it as a decoy, yes. Didn't realize her bishop was just trapped on b1. Wow. Um, not that it not that it matters, at least from the tournament perspective, but uh, Arena as the better of the draw. I mean, uh, rook takes g5. I mean, it would matter if Irina wins this. Yes. Then she would be just point behind Anna, right? I thought a point and a half, but I could be wrong. I thought Bella was the one that was closer. No, no, it would be point. Bella was half point. Oh, behind. so it could still be a playoff. If Irina wins today, ah. then she would play for a win tomorrow. Gotcha. But let's look at the position. I don't think she's no, going to win this. No, I don't think this. so either. Yeah, this is really... Uh, it's 99% I think so. <laughs> I think so, too. I do. But it's all about the Anna Zatonsky show. <laughs> wow. Wow, this is uh... And by the way, this will be your first win with the white pieces. <laughs> <laughs> She's been doing it with black the whole time. Well, she, she couldn't win the tournament without one win with the white pieces. Exactly, right? exactly. I think she knows that it's She's got very it. close to her. I wonder if she even looked at other players' results today, or it would stress her out too much. Right, so. she seemed fastened to her own uh, uh, board, uh, what uh, our predecessors called good sits fly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even. Uh, yeah, however, share. after she wins this, then she's gonna check and see that Bella lost her game. And, Irina's and, drawing hers, and. How sweet it is, <laughs> in the words of Jackie Gleason. I can't even imagine how many rating points Anna is gaining. You know what? <laughs> That's just, you know, cream on the cake, icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, r rating points. And um, for Jean Sayo, I mean, probably one of the worst tournaments of her career. I was about to say she hasn't won a game. Uh, which is really shocking mm -hmm. uh, because in this tournament where you see, you see so many decisive games, uh, you can't always just be the victim, right? Mm -hmm. So something uh, definitely has gone wrong for uh, Zinsaya in this uh, event. Same to, same for Arena's uh, opponent, Gane, Gane, right? She actually did win the first round. Uh, we forgot about Bella's. With Bella's, that's Present right. that she gave to Gane. Exactly, the, that was the uh, knight g4. Yes, early in the opening, she plundered a piece. Right. But since then, Gane hasn't scored. Well, very tough field. Definitely. And Anna taking a sip of victory. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. is, because I know she double, triple checks everything, but right. she's so confident that she's winning. She got off the board. Right. And we're and going here to we go. see the exchange now. Let's see it. I takes d3. What did you say about double and triple checking? <laughs> That's exactly what she's yeah. doing.
probably even king c3 is winning, but obviously not as fast as knight takes d3. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, wild horses aren't going to stop me from <laughs> playing knight takes d3 and e4 uh, for Anna. And By the way, position. e4 is the only winning move, because if white spends one extra tempo playing king c3, then it's not a win anymore. It's a draw. Really? Okay. Because king a6 and king will be in the square. In, in the square, not the triangle. <laughs> Knight takes d3, e4, Anna. She is calculating the line she calculated before for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <coughs> do you say to yourself, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Knight takes d3, e4. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, people don't realize that how stressful it is when you know you're winning. Mm -hmm. Your heart's exploding. Right. It, it, what I'd be doing would be calming myself down right. so I don't drop all the pieces. Because <laughs> <laughs> she knows she eager. wins this and it's over. In your eager excitement to play knight yeah. takes d3. There's such thing as too excited. Right. Knight takes d3, and once again, she's, yeah, she's done, done it. Done it. And we she just has have to, to see follow it up with e4. E4 on the board, yes. Uh, because the point is, king c3 wasting a tempo allows king a6 and king takes a5. But e4. She played immediately. Immediately. <laughs> yeah. She's calculated all the lines now and. Yeah. Will Jean Zayek play a few more moves? Mm -hmm. In his book, Grandmaster Preparation, Lev Poligayevsky talks about a, an adjournment uh, he had with Bent Larson. And the adjournment required Bent Larson to play something like 14 incredibly She resigned, and I know when they. Look at that smile. <laughs> oh. Wow. She's almost ready to burst into tears, I think, <laughs> of uh, happiness as. I e5. I, I don't think she has realized yet that the other and games won her way as well. Right. And that she's a few moves away from winning the championship because Irina's game's going to be a draw. Right. <laughs> wow. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> Our congratulations, Anna. What a amazing, the, amazing yeah, job. Amazing. Uh, coming in as the last seed by rating and having a tournament performance outstanding, plus four, Grandmaster Norm with one round to spare. And probably gaining 30 rating points. <laughs> <laughs> I think on the cave. Look <laughs> at her. At wow, wow. Great. Almera, share the moment uh, as Anna Zatonsky has just wowed us all. Yes, but it's like I've been silent the whole time because I've been so touched by the magnitude of this moment. I am so happy for Anna. First of all, she's a very close friend, but she told us um, that also how difficult it was to, to win such tournaments and especially being a mom. And uh, this is uh, a miracle and a very deserved victory. I think she, uh, she's such a great player. But sometimes simply, you, well, you don't play your best. And here, everything was aligned. The stars was aligned. She right. played such a great tournament. She had her share of luck, of course, but you need it because um, you can't win those tournaments where, by yourself sometimes. So everything mm -hmm. uh, well, just went perfectly. And we talked a little bit this morning. Uh, so um, I'm waiting for her to come to our studio to share her thoughts. So, well, she shared that um, her source, sources of inspirations were Pia Kramling, uh, Ketivan Arachamia, and Monika Sochka, but she is our hero right mm -hmm. now, and she's the first American to win this tournament. She doesn't know it yet, but so she clinched her grandmaster norm. Uh, so this is a historical moment, historic moment. Wonderful, and there we see arbiter Chris Bird uh, congratulating her. Uh, Arena's uh, position, because once again, uh, if Arena were to win, then she and would be win only tomorrow, one point behind. Exactly, yes. exactly. And G4 check <laughs> on the board. Uh, how is it uh, so easily drawn? 
Well, if uh, if Kune knows this end game, then yes. it's easily drawn. I see. King, let's say King G two. Just stay and King F six. And I'm just standing, and when you push the pawn on the white square, I sacrifice the bishop. But I'm going to okay. So let's say you wait. Yes, mm -hmm. you just uh, you just uh, right. wait for me, and I have to actually end up playing king to g5 if I want exactly. to play um, <coughs> advance my pawns, right? Mm -hmm. And now you go back. Yes. yes, and when you try to come around again, I give you a check and make you go back. When you try, sorry, say. Yeah, well, if the king tries to come around, around? bishop c8. No. No? <laughs> sorry. I was thinking of king f5, so that's why I was. Oh, looking. okay, sorry, king f5, yes, so that's I'll what check you meant. you and you go back. I see, exactly. Gotcha. But I think the easiest draw is to have the bishop on e2, right? In front of the pawns. Right. So that way, black king can never leave g4 unattended. So we'll put our bishop back, right? Let's say king g5, bishop b5, f4, and bishop e2 is the easiest way to draw. And we'll just keep. Uh, so anytime f3 comes, we sacrifice the bishop. Anytime your king goes drifting too far away from the. Uh, mm -hmm. G4 pawn, we snap it off. King G2 and Bishop E2 is uh, the setup we want. Current position, let me just uh, refresh my board. And let's check on the Nana's game because here players will make a lot of moves before they agree to a draw. <laughs> I think so too. Enrique's <laughs> game. Excuse well. me. <laughs> Two versus one. I, th I was about to say, this move, king g4, looks like a, a really uh, good move to simply cement. If you go f3, I'll come back, mm -hmm. put my rook on f1, and grab this pawn. Then I played king e7, and now white can just take on g5. For sure. Allow f3, and then drop with rook a2. Exactly. And my king is close enough to come right back for <laughs> the pawn. Exactly. And uh, we spoke uh, a lot about what the Grandmaster Norm is all about. And here's a graphic to explain it all. Yeah, so it says if she wins, she'll receive her first Grandmaster Norm. Guess what? Norm. She won. She won. <laughs> and yeah, she's got the Grandmaster Norm in her hand because what she needs is a plus three result. Yes. She's already got plus four. Mm -hmm. So if she loses tomorrow, it doesn't matter. She's got the Grandmaster, but to get the Grandmaster title, she'll need three norms, and this is her first norm to, uh, <coughs> what did you well, call it? Title supremacy. <laughs> supreme uh, title. Supreme title, pardon me, uh, Almira. I've heard it's hardest to get the first norm. After that, it's easy. Yeah, yes, exactly. It's a, the first million's easy, <laughs> hard. The second hard, million, yes. yeah, the second million's easy. <laughs> it gets easy. a lot easier after. Right, that. and uh, sorry, I I kind of got uh, lost there. Uh, it was looking at uh, Nana's game. King takes g4, rook back, king back, rook back, king back, and we 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 just we we get back in time in front of the pawn, and we do pick it up. So we do think that Harika will draw this game after king takes g5. <clears throat> One concerning thing in Irina's game is that Brunei yes. is thinking. Because <laughs> if she just plays bishop back, drops her bishop to uh, the e2 square or the d1 square, it's good enough and just maintain and, and she's, she's done doing it. it. Yes, certainly. And uh, Irina knew it. I think that mm -hmm. uh, far away look spoke for it. You know, like ah, I know this is a draw, and she's going to find bishop e3 and bishop d1, and she did, and we're expecting a draw, and that will mean that Anna will win the tournament. Yes, uh, she she's clinched uh, uh, first place there. Our winner's on her way to the interview. You know, I just I just found that uh, interesting. This idea that we played this game of what ifs with ourselves. 
but really it was like the requirement of three things happening, and every single one happened. I mean, it just it just worked out perfect. <laughs> I mean, it's I like thought chances of all those things happening were no, extremely small. Yeah, exactly. I thought well, you know we just mentioned it. You yeah, know, just in for case. the theoretical yeah. possibility that such a thing could actually happen, <laughs> and it was a requirement that this game be a draw. Anna was going to win, and Bella had to lose. And two out of three, and uh, we're about to see three out of three as we get our uh, tournament victor mic'd up for, wow, wow, in victory interview. Wow. And we're ready. Almira, over to you. Uh, thank you. Yes, sir. Anna is in the studio with us. Anna, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. With the victory. Uh, we are so proud. I am yeah, so thank proud. Thank you so much. I was like very like nervous uh, today and I didn't expect this openings and uh, yeah, at the beginning probably would be happy with draw, but... <laughs> Okay, uh, let's uh, go through the game. Uh, just yeah, this night H3 already, for, at least it's a no novelty. Okay, uh, the entire idea. I didn't know move C5 right away and you only bishop B7 and bishop A6. Maybe I forgot something. There is such move C5. Yes, yeah, so I played knight H3. Yes, yes. yes. So the idea is uh, that uh, if my knight is staying on F3, it's really like doing nothing. So idea may have been if she wouldn't play H6, maybe like some ideas F3 or... Yeah, sometimes you can play f3, f3 e3, e3 f3. yes and mm -hmm. h6 i'm not sure if it's the right decision to take on f6 or not well we analyzed it during the game it was it was fine um, yes it yeah was then fine. then i realized okay why it should be like worse that uh, like uh your structure slightly slightly worse my pieces uh, okay i have weakness on c4 and b3 square potentially weak so i play knight f4 here Knight f4, knight c6. I was surprised that she played very quickly. I think here you have to take your time and really realize what kind of setup you want to get. Yes, actually, you are absolutely right because knight uh, c6 is already a slight inaccuracy. Uh -huh. yes. well, mm -hmm. well, I can switch the computer, of course, a little. Uh -huh. Knight c6, knight h5, rook d8. Okay. Uh, after, okay, uh, rook d8 to sacrifice. Uh, this was also I was thinking about mm -hmm. rook d8 sacrificing. Well, then simply goes for some active play. Yeah, yeah. but it's a pawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here, and, and okay, speaking honestly, after castle, I, I missed move f6. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's good or not, but yeah, f6. And I saw in some line this idea to play an h3, g4, but maybe h3, g4, it's like too slowly. So I decided to play like actively right away. This is not, uh, g4 is a, is it's the first line or what is no, it's H3? Actually, no, it's, uh, it's I was one thinking of the to play H3. Moves, yes, wow. G4, as you can see. Or, or Rook G1, G1 yeah, with the same idea. Okay, Rook G1, I could play Rook G1, yeah. So uh, I think that uh, your position was very good. Okay, here, here I don't know uh, I don't know why F, F take G4. I think G3 is probably dubious move. Why uh, she could play probably instead of G3, Rook B8, the move I calculated during the game and I was worried about mm -hmm. later on. And Anna, yeah, I don't know if you realize it yet, but you are about to, well, you How won the you? tournament. Oh, wow, they it. drew? They oh. drew, that's it. So. <laughs> when, when I was leaving, I was thinking here, I was not smiling. <laughs> I was thinking that if it's draw, because like uh, Mamad Zadaev had feeling like slightly misplaced and he, she had to find a couple uh, exact moves. Wow. <laughs> so you made Very that. happy. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I cannot believe that. So this is probably your best achievement? Uh, yes, in my chess career, definitely. Like the best in many years and the best achievement. And Actually, I was thinking that in any other sport, you're allowed to express your emotions. But when you won your game, you know, we saw a small, well, a smile and then... No, I was like, I just, I just tired, <laughs> very tired, yeah. And I'm still in the game. So wow. when, when are we going to dance? <laughs> dance, play tennis, play table tennis, everything. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, like uh, Elmira, and thank you, everyone, especially like all the generation who supported here me, <laughs> who gave me motivation and uh, trying to prove that age age is just a number, <laughs> maybe not, but I'm very happy. And before this event, I was mentioning my role models, and most of them are like older than me. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at a oh. few critical moments here. I wanted to ask you because here you are clearly better. But uh, there actually, was... I, 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 during the game, yes. I, I didn't know like for sure that oh. I'm better. Mm -hmm. Because uh -huh. then, actually, what happened in the game that uh, the computer thought that this Night was, of was not a good one. Yes, but I, I could not find like, the best continuation. What what should I do? Maybe your idea to uh, take take, on take and. Uh, mm -hmm. And what? Next? Well, then you can take. Take. You can take, and it's maybe just give up the spawn on C4. No, you should not actually. Yes, B3. just to play B3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about. Don't, I don't know why I didn't play it. Actually, even in the game. Uh, uh, that was a very important motive because if you allow your your opponent, well, if uh, mm -hmm. to take, for example, let's say after um, knight f4, rook, rook b8, the mm -hmm. move I calculate, I told you, yes. And then if you take, I didn't know what to do here. Yes, e3, but after e3, I didn't like rook g2, knight g2. Ah, oh, no, no, it's mm -hmm. not here. Sorry, it's no. not here. Just no, no, it was in defense. Like anyway, it was a very uh, important yeah. defensive resource to have the rook on s s g4 and c4. Yes, point. yes. Mm -hmm. this, this also, so on rook b8, I don't know, maybe I should take on take so on c6. If, oh, no, not take on g4, defense. take mm -hmm. on c6 and yes. play something here. H4, H4, that, that's a little bit. Yes. Not in the spirit of position. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. H4 so, is it? Mm -hmm. Knight d3, okay, with the same. Oh, Knight d4, four, H4, wow. yes. But yes, now yes, I couldn't find like all the best moves, and, and I'm feeling that I'm missing something during mm -hmm. the game. Yeah, but anyway, you were always uh, yeah, just keeping, three also, keeping yeah. the situation mm -hmm. under control. I think it yeah. was always very important. So now and here rook d8, of course, rook d8 is, was my first temptation. But after oh, e5, mm -hmm. rook d8, yes, uh, oops, rook d8, uh, rook d8, mm -hmm. e5, mm -hmm. knight somewhere, knight and rook g8, rook g8, mm -hmm. and probably I'm still uh, slightly better. Oh, but. There's oh, something. I mean, knight, oh, knight if, okay, okay. Oh, I didn't, this I didn't it's see. It's a very nice idea. <laughs> yeah, okay, this I didn't see in mm -hmm. my calculations. Yeah. Okay, but let's get back to the game, because uh, at some point we were not sure if this ending was winning. Yeah, but the, the, this, uh, rook, G, rook g8, maybe, okay, rook g8, also rook h8. Okay, this is not winning, but it's like, very, I was very happy, because nothing to blunder. I have a draw, I have perpetual, I repeated this position here. Mm -hmm. I had about three minutes, but in such position, you don't need much, right? Okay, but after rook h4, I think nine, uh, bishop b3 was better, right? Mm -hmm. yes, bishop b3 was better, I saw it, yeah. But okay, I need to try, at least I have perpetual now, right? But uh, tell me here, when you played rook h4, uh, well, did you have to convince yourself that you have yes, to play? Uh, yes, uh, okay, I, I, I wanted to, uh, I, I would be very happy draw be, uh, with the draw because it was a very tense game, a lot of complications, but here I realized, okay, if I'm not playing for win here, what's, like, no risk to lose at all. I can give perpetual check anytime I want and uh, maybe She's not having a good tournament and... Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. And this is... Uh, jean didn't defend stubbornly here, yeah. so she gave you I everything think, here. I think, like, uh, here it was also, instead of B4, mm -hmm. there is... Was it something better than B4 or not? Uh, maybe Knight D7 also. Ah, Knight D7 I saw, this. but mm -hmm. maybe... Yes, I saw this, but I... Uh, after B4, she's not obligated to take or what? Well, there was some unhuman variations. Oh, no, no, before, before, yes. before there is another variation not to... Rook e7. What and is then, the difference? Well, the, then you're... Okay, you take, take. Play this position and... and oh, come on, this is not serious, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, and then we came to this take, uh, very, take, very take. And here was end game. Yeah. No, no, sorry, yes, that's the game. No, but okay, e3 is like the move I calculate. Actually, I calculated also knight, uh, knight d7 yes. and e4. No, 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 when with rooks on the board. Ah, but actually here, did you calculate knight d7? Yes, of course, so knight d7, e4. And knight f6. Knight f6. Uh, you win the pawn immediately. I won a pawn immediately. Yes, yes mm -hmm. maybe, but what's wrong with e3? I, I think e3 is such a nice move. I don't know. Yeah, Nazi and Yasser has analyzed uh, your, your. Yeah, maybe. Okay, right. can, can, uh, could she move uh, bishop on diagonal? But I think after uh, she cannot play knight g, bishop g8 because knight. Mm -hmm. Knight d7 and f6. It's not actually win. Knight d7. King a6. There is some crazy. Ah, I see. This is actually. Yes, yes, yes. This is not so clear. Wow. 
<laughs> okay, okay, this, uh, I know even if computer says it's draw, it's probably not yes, so easy. Of course, but that's like after E3, our hearts stopped beating because we were, <laughs> we were thinking that the position was completely winning, yeah. but then... Uh, no, I didn't, th I, I didn't think it was winning. Yeah, I thought it was much better with great uh, chances and I will play this game uh, like another th at least 30, 50 moves. Yes, but now there is a clear pass to victory after yeah. e4, and uh, you demonstrated. Uh, yes, yes, and board. I saw this in uh, end game, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. end game was very happy to, and calculated three times, like <laughs> to make sure I'm not blundering. Uh, congratulations, Anna, Thank once you. again. Yes, sir. Nice. Did we have a question? Uh, congratulations! Wonderful. Thank you. Thank Anna. you. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Yeah. I have Come one back, question. Come back, play chess next U.S. Championship. Right. I will do commentary, and you will play. <laughs> <laughs> We have a deal. <laughs> yes, uh, Nazi will also play. <laughs> huge congratulations, Anna. One question. Do you know that you also made the Grandmaster norm? Uh, okay, I knew that, uh, like uh, Elmira already told me yesterday, but are you sure? Because as far by old rules, I know there is no GM norm in eight rounds. It must be only a world uh, team championship or European club cup, but... Only because of the players withdrawal. Ah, this, ah, mm. oh, this is very nice, yeah. Yes, uh, more because congratulations. Because this I didn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, that's why GM I norm. see. Wow, very happy. Mm -hmm. I already mentioned Ketivana Rahamia, who became a GM around age of 40. So she's like one of my role models, and I want to say hello to her. And uh, to thank you everyone who was rooting for me. I want to thank you, uh, Olga Sagalchik. I visited her in New York. It was such a wonderful atmosphere. Gennady Sagalchik as well. And Rusa Galetiani, all my old uh, uh, childhood friends with whom I played uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> First and year's championship. Your yeah. poor husband. Why? <laughs> I think like in this tournament he's not poor. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, well, this was... A... Okay, I, I, I already thank you many times. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's never enough to say I yeah. love you. Uh, anyway, this was an absolutely outstanding performance, Anna. Congratulations yeah, thank you. once again. Our congratulations to be sure, as Anna Zatonsky is our 2023 Cairns Cup champion with one round to spare. Yes, the tournament will go on tomorrow. It feels like it's over, but it's yeah, not. It's not over until it's over. And Anna's taking a handsome prize fund. Absolutely. $45,000. Yes. There's a victor smile if there was ever one, as Anna <laughs> Zatonsky uh, takes clear first. Soul first. Inspirational, really, the way she played this tournament. Truly. Truly. And uh, the other two games that were still running finished in a draw. Exactly. So all the games are over. And this is our standings after round eight. Sansaya will get the bye tomorrow. She has completed her tournament. She's played all eight games again. Uh, it was going to be a ten-player round robin. It became a nine-player round robin when uh, Humpi withdrew. And Anna Zatonsky wins the tournament with five and a half points out of seven. She still will be playing tomorrow, but no one can catch her. Exactly. And she will be play, playing Arena, who will be playing for second prize, of course. <laughs> uh, there she there is. There she is. Happy. Happy, happy. And here are our pairings for the ninth and final round uh, tomorrow. As the Astro said, buy round for Jean Sayer. And Irina Crush will be playing Anna Zatonsky. Nana Zagnidza will be playing Gunei Mamadzada. Hotanashvili against Ronavali. And Pets against Kostinu. As you can see, a big, big, big fight for second uh, prize. Uh, again, a very generous prize fund. So those players who are fighting for second and third are certainly going to be uh, prepped. And and one more thing, we will not have tie breaks. So tournament will no, end tomorrow. No tie breaks at all for this event. Uh, final thoughts on this penultimate uh, round and the crowning of a champion, Almera. Uh, yes, I'm still trying to gather my own thoughts because uh, this is a, an absolutely stunning victory. One round to spare. Anna Zatonsky is our champion. And well, I'm looking forward to more GM norms. Uh, so uh, this is going to uh, be an enormous source of inspiration for me and for all the chess players around the world. But the show must go on. So we still have another round tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to, um, well, to see who is going to be on the podium. So are we, so are we. 
Wow, it felt great. It felt great. It、yes. was a really, really wonderful day. Thank you all for joining us and sharing your day with us for this penultimate round, where we crowned a champion. And we'll see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.